Hello and welcome. It is round nine of the women's candidates and things are getting serious here. Remember, six rounds left. I'm International Master Ivan Kahowska and I'm going to be your host. And for the third time running, I am commentating alongside Mr. Calculation over everything, the one and only Fide Master James County the Third. Now, what an exciting day it was yesterday, right? Oh, it was very exciting. Of course, we had one player go three and zero, oh, and then we had another player do the complete opposite. In fact, there was lots of ups and downs. There were lots of uh, crazy games yesterday. Things that we thought would happen didn't happen, etc. I mean, just emotions all through the roof. And it's still more games left, yo. Definitely. And one significant thing yesterday was that the tournament leader, Tan Zhong Yi, she lost to Lei Tingjie. And there you can see there's been a shakeup in the standings. Alexander Gorashkina, Lei Tingjie, and Tan Zhong Yi are now in a three way tie for first. And half a point behind them, it is Katerina Lagno. The tournament is wide open, Canty, wow. right? Oh, of course, fives at the top there. And the one that I'd be the most, you know, feared in the standings right now is Lei Ting J. She got the white pieces this time today. She's fresh off with three O's. She just beat Tan there. She is in her element, right? She's in her bag right now. Now, of course, there is five more games to go, five more rounds. Anything can happen really in the standings there. But Lei Ting J is definitely starting to heat up a little bit as it seems. Definitely. Will she make it four in a row? Let's check out today's pairings. Because remember, this is the big reset. This is when the players play each other again, but with colors reversed. So Humpy Kanaru played uh, Katarina Lagno in round two. That game was a draw. And now Humpy gets that rematch with the white pieces. Veishali, she lost to Tan Zhong Yi. Veishali is at the bottom of the table, losing three games in a row. Now she faces one of the tournament leaders, Tan Zhong Yi. And of the other two matches, Kanti, which one do you have a special eye on? Yeah, definitely, of course, the late Tingjie game is, of course, we're just trying to see her do 4 and 0 if it's possible. It's definitely possible. But man, she's heating up as the candidates. And then the other game here is definitely the Vishali game versus Tan. They both lost. Vishali lost three in a row. Unfortunately, she couldn't hold against Humpy there. Definitely could have hold, uh, could have held, but time, of course, that time issue she had gave her a problem and she blundered and lost the game. It's in unfortunate. So can she bounce back? Also, same with Tan, losing to late Tingjie after uh, winning before. So definitely uh, having um, um, some problems there. So I want to see both of those matches. I'm excited. What about you, Yogi? Yeah, I'm excited about all of them because I can tell you one thing. This tournament has been anything but predictable. And when it comes to the win probability, well, yesterday we saw that Tan Zhong Yi, the engine, the computers had worked out that she had a 50% win probability. Well, take a look at that. After yesterday's unexpected loss with the white pieces, she is there in purple and her chances have plummeted and it's now Alexandra Goryashkina who has the highest win probability. Does this surprise you, Kanti? Absolutely. I'm always ready to just flip this thing upside down, throw it out the window or like maybe use it for ammunition to amp my player up. If I'm a second, you know, watching these, I'm like, hey, check this out. What do you think about this? And you're like, I'm mad. Exactly. Go out there and play your game. Good luck. Right. Because, you know, it says it was saying that uh, no one has a chance anymore. And Tan, oh, she lost the game. So now she has like no chances. Like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> well, also remember that you at home, you have a special opportunity to win prizes by voting on who win before every round by going to each game on the Feed 8 Women's Candidates events pages. Find the social tab and pick your winner. Go.chess.com slash candidates votes. Games are starting soon, so be quick to win big. Wow, predictions here. This is such an important round. Like you mentioned, we're going to have our close eyes on Tan Zhong Yi to see whether she can make a comeback. And here you do see Humpy Canary, who won her first game against Fei Shali. And uh, this is an 
all important game. We do see Leitinger with the white pieces against Nurgil Salimova. Remember, in their last encounter, it was a draw between them. But Leitinger, she's won three games in a row. Can she make it four? Can she become the outright leader? Oh my God, so many questions to be answered here in round nine. And we do see her open up with the move E4. E4 for the score. I think Salon Manova, she's played E5. I've also seen a Carol Khan from her too as well. So let's see what else will, maybe she'll play a Sicilia. Maybe she'll go back to E5. Maybe she'll play C6. We'll see. But E4 on the board, we're already going to have something most likely exciting. Yes, and uh, yeah, you're quite right. There was a Karakan. It was against Tan Zhongyi. She was in a slight trouble but there. I was going to say Karakan again, but it's not a Karakan. It is wow. D6. The pier, perk, pits. Right. I don't know how to say it. You know what's funny, right? In fact, and it's always the people that are, are like, you know, um, a very, very, very low rated. Because if I say 1200, then they'll be like, oh, I'm 1200. I feel personally attacked. That's how chat talks. Or if it's 500, oh, it hurts, you know. So very, very, very low rated players will say things like that. Like, oh, it's how could you not know the name? It's Pierce, right? But of course, we all say Perk and it is pronounced Pierce yes. with the weird name P E R T Z. Do you know something, County? I was told that the average rating of a person on chess.com is 800. 800 average. 800. Now, 1200, when you think about that, is actually very good. Nice chat. If you're 800, you know, clap it up. If not, hey, you know, keep working. Keep working. We'll get yeah. you there. If you're exactly. 800 and above, shout out to you. Well, Sorry. surprise already on this because uh, Pitts has been played on the board. And that was unexpected. So, so far, Salimova, she deployed the Petrov. She varied again. She played the Cozio against uh, Katerina Lagno. She get, she changed to the Karakan and now something completely surprising. And this is really interesting because out of the two of them, Leighton J has also been quite eager to spring the opening surprises. We even saw openings like the Evans Gambit from her. Yeah. So <laughs> Salimova trying to get the game in her own territory. That's kind of funny. Yeah, I actually like the, the Peerts here or the Burke, in fact. So I do like the part um, sometimes, it depends on certain lines. So I have never had a problem OTB. I, I've faced it actually many times. Never lost a game on the, against it. But it's uh, it, playing with it, you can get some trouble quite fast with sensor controls. And, like, of course, with G6, Bishop G7, you can literally run an H pawn. Every time you see that kind of development with G6 and Bishop G7, it's very tempting to start running an H pawn. So that can get really frisky and very scary, and black can go wrong quite quickly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, white has many aggressive choices here. White can go for knight c3. I was going to say white can also go for plans. I mean, at the minute, white's focus is on protecting the e4 pawn. But Leighton J, she could go f4. She could go for bishop to e3 with the idea of queen to d2. This is very popular in the UK scene. The 150 attack, so called, because we have a different grading system, rating system. Uh -huh. And uh, the whole point was that... Uh, Anybody, even a 150, That's what <laughs> which that is means. approximately around like, about 1700, 1800, can uh, win this. Ah, 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 Philidor, actually. Oh. So That's very gross. solid setup there from Salimova. Now, I did see Richard Rapport refined the Philidor. I saw some Blitz games where he came up with a system he didn't take on D4 so early and instead went bishop to e7, knight to d7, and uh, castles. And then, you know, you, you kind of survive on the back row. And then when you're ready, you're going to be taking on c4 and slowly unraveling the pieces. I have seen well, that, in fact. If you're, if you're um, surprised, how would you react? Would you react kind of like knight to f3, or would you be kind of taking on e5 and going to, into an endgame? I would never, in fact, if I can keep queens on, 99.999999% of the time, I'm keeping them on. Because I do like to attack. I'm a very, very aggressive player. So I like to stay, do stuff, for instance, exactly. Knight of three. My goal is actually casting queen side as quickly as humanly possible and launching everything on a king side. And we're mating in 17, right? That's usually how it goes. 
So knight of three, bishop b three, queen d two, castle queen side, ace three, g four, maiden seven. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You, you... <laughs> I need to I need to break that one down. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> we've done that. We've done this many times on this on this scenario here. Yeah. But yeah, we definitely want to just go for mate. Very easy moves. Play h three, okay. bishop e three, queen d two, castle queen side. Queen d two. Yeah. You want to? But can you do that against the filler dot? I don't think you, you can. definitely can. You can. It's oh, it's a line. It is. It's a lot of lines with it, especially if they do e d four. Well, then the bishop comes out to f four. But if you know yes. e d four, then we go bishop e three, and then still try to go the same way h three. Yeah, queen Th side. that was actually something that was done um, against Richard Reports by Jan Christoph Duda. Richard took very early on uh, d4, but mm -hmm. this allowed this whole setup of bishop to f4, which was really, really powerful. But he didn't castle queen side, he castle king side. But yeah, was, you, cannot, uh, you could. Yeah. But uh, I can tell you, in the hands of Richard Report, the Philidor looked like a dangerous weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Any opening this man plays. In fact, one time I looked at I was just checking some of his games. He had a game, he played e3, move one. So I'm like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. I, yeah, it's fine. And then whatever black played, I don't remember. And then white second move, it I couldn't believe. It. And he won the game too. Played another GM, I think it was OTB, but it was E three. And then his second move was G four. I couldn't believe it. I was yeah, like, yeah. This is not and, real. And I'm glad that you mentioned G four, right? Because the first move and the only move that I've really played is Bishop to be C four. Bishop mm -hmm. C four, and then you go A four to kind of control any pawn advances on the queen side, and you just castle king side. But I'm looking here at the database and I'm seeing that the second most popular move in this position G4. And, uh, is G4. Yeah, it's a ridiculous. I've never seen that move before. Yeah, I actually like Rook G1, G4, but G4 is a move. It's just aggressive. You play G4 and you sack a pawn for initiative the entire time. Yeah. I don't know wow. the lines all the way, so you got to be careful with that. But it is a move. And Blitz and no. Bullet, oh, I mean, I'll probably play immediately. But, you know, here in a classical game, all right, buddy, hold on, slow down. This is the candidates. G4 immediately is a little bit too much. But maybe Rook G1 or H3 is an idea H too as well. Yeah, H3, as uh, you're indicating, H3, it definitely is a move. And uh, late J she likes to play in an active style. So I suspect that she might play one of these moves like H3, Rook to G1 g4 why not because this is where the mind games come into play bishop c4 that is the main line that is probably yeah. what uh, salimova has focused all her efforts on so yeah, how true. can she trick her opponent into i like rook g1 more I don't know why. yeah rook to that's g1. definitely like rook g1 that's my favorite because even if you go h5 but now you've created a hole on g5 so i can stick a knight there and also h3 and g4 are still big moves i can play yeah so now the knight can sit on g5 for the rest of the game just be super annoying yeah h3 yeah. probably um h3 even knight g5 immediately who cares but you know it, this is very very nice and we have a move is that rook g1 yeah it is rook g1 huh, there it is rook I'm, gonna, g1. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a virtual high five because it was like literally ah. we predicted it <laughs> ah. there it is rook g1 and she's done now okay of course there's lots of moves left. There's like, this is nothing. But Rook to G1, definitely a big fan of the move. Now G4 is coming. Uh, of course, obviously, H5 is going to again put that knight on G5. Yeah, so G4 is coming. This is a, <laughs> this is not the most fun for black. I know that it is some type of a, this is like still well-known stuff, but I would always rather be white here as you just know exactly what we're about to do. <laughs> if you're going to play yeah. G4, we're going to play G5. And we're going to try to rip you off of the board, blow you off the board, okay. what they say. Yeah, G4, G5. And the question here is, is Salimova prepared? Because if she reacts like C6, if she does G6, as County is highlighting, you're going to get G4, G5, and that's a massive pushback. And then there's a whole load of dilemma. Like, do you go H6? Like, how are you going to get castled in this type of position? Because as you've indicated, White is castling queenside, and it's going to be just like develop, develop, and mate. That's it. Develop, develop, and mate. Mate in 17, in fact. Literally. Yeah, mate in 17. From this position, mate in 17, 100%. So, wow. yeah, be careful. You be very careful. We are going to be in for a ride in this one. Do you think it's a good choice, though, to go Rick to G1 and play so ambitiously? 100%. It fits her style. Definitely a aggressive, dynamic. Uh, not, not hyper aggressive, but. Aggressive enough, dynamic, looking for sharp things, looking to attack you. 
I like the type of style. I'm the same way as well. I just like to attack you. It's fun chess. It also can lead to lots of, uh, you know, decisive wins quite quickly. Uncom make your opponent uncomfortable. They say against strong players, what do you want to do is you do want to attack them. Strong players hate to be attacked. So Rook G1 with a high idea of G4, G5. Very easy. Yeah. Like it. Yeah, yeah. I don't definitely. know. Look at Talbanova. Why, why is she? Did you see the, I don't know, maybe that was just like a. I, I think she hasn't regroup. prepared this. Yeah. She hasn't I mean, prepared this. She's on her own. She's uh, having to work through the potential complications on her own. Well, is this going to get exciting? So whilst Salimova is considering what to play, is she going to stop this G4 with H5? We should be doing something else. Let's have a look at the bird's eye view and see how the other games have developed. So we should definitely be focusing on the tournament leaders. So we have Ve Shali with the white pieces against Tan Zhongyi. Tan Zhongyi, she lost yesterday. Also, did uh, Ve Shali lose as well? She's Ve Shali losing three games in a row. Maybe we head there? Definitely. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, I'll get there. Oh. I, can't, I can't see. I can't see her on my on my screen. Um, she's she's missing. So hang on. Let me just go event. Da da da. Okay. No. No. She's no. There she is. No. That's not. That's not the game. Uh, okay. Yeah. Nope. That's not it either. Oh. Uh, maybe we go to the other game between. Uh, no. That's not the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got it's some somewhere. tech issues here because I'm trying to find the games. Okay, let's let's uh, hang on, hang on a second. I was clicking in the wrong place. I got it. I got it. Got it. There we go. There. Go. I just had to keep calm, and uh, everything would be solved. I can solve these things. Okay, right. <laughs> so let's head there to the game between Veshali Tan Zhongyi. And yeah, big well, question here. Can so we go back the, to the beginning? Does yeah, this so almost looks like it came from a French defense. No, it came from Sicilian. But you actually are very spot on there because it's the French Sicilian. It's the it's the French C three Sicilian. This is the only line that looked like a French. You're very yeah, right. and then right, right. And then you go E six. Okay, so right. and then it, okay, this is a French. Yeah, no, it's a French. You can yeah. go advanced here. In fact, Evgeny, Evgeny Sveshnikov from his book, May you Rest in Peace. But he wanted to like, he always liked to go E5 because he said the psych part of me, instead of going ED5, he said in his book, the complete C3 Sicilian, which is like $1,000 online because they don't make it print copy anymore. But um, E5 actually is now psychologically sort of a win in white standpoint because you played a Sicilian. Now you're in a French, right? So the difference there, of course, obviously you can play any opening at these levels here, but yeah, you played a Sicilian, now you're in a French. I mean, it definitely could have some advantages there for you from the white standpoint. But he takes d5 is a standard theory move here. A yeah, isolate the pawn. Yeah, isolate it. He takes d5. And uh, now knight to f3. And I'm going to get my opening database up. Knight to f3, normal, most popular move. And a6. I've never Not seen that. I've, I've never seen this ever. Never seen that move. Ace, it's it is it is a move it is a move crazy the main move as you as you kind of indicated is just to develop your knights but a6 potentially to perhaps stop this bishop coming out to b5 with tempo a6 right. bishop to d3 played I can. like it and this is the whole point of a6 there was another issue here that c4 is happening c4 this bishop goes back to c2 this by the way in the french pawn structure is the most ideal place for the bishop Lethal. because it's got a beeline towards the h7 square and tan will just be now just uh sorting out her king side and she does have to be careful against these potential attacking ideas on h7 so castle king side knight to e7 in order to block a potential check and now this is this is the game Okay, so yeah, this looks good. I like white here all the time in these positions. Obviously, the bishop just points to the king. I mean, it's very, it's very simple. My bishop's point at your king. You're most likely going to castle king side, 
So it's going to help me out. But I do like knight e7. I mean, obviously it develops. But they also the second idea is bishop f5 to be able to literally just get rid of that very strong bishop. And then I have an equal game, says uh, says Black here. Also, yeah. the pawns are light square, so we do want to get rid of the light square bishop. So bishop f5 is going to be a thing. I wonder, can I stop that? <laughs> yeah, I can, that I can tell you the main move that White's been trying, which makes a whole lot of sense, is because... Knight h4? No, it's actually to go b3, which to me okay. makes perfect sense. Because if you black allow black to just castle, put the bishop out to f5, go knight to c6, and then b5, well, black has that space advantage on the queen side, right? So white is saying, okay. let me just strike now with b3. If you go b5, well, then now you can destabilize this pawn structure even more, right, with a4. Right. And it's not going to be easy to defend this point. But mm -hmm. and actually, no one is playing b5 is there something tactically wrong with it all right like i was like yeah, b5 is just a normal move to make you know? run, yeah that's interesting i mean a4, a4 bishop d7 tank tank hmm okay yeah it's knight h4 so just not yeah b3 is nice so b5 like okay so ah uh, okay so and b5 an a4. Hmm? A, yeah, a, that's fine. And then the case is wondering about bishop to b7. b7. And you can see that the evaluation bar is like, no, don't do that. I wonder what, ah, it's to do with everything getting traded off. And then b4? And then oh, no. Some issues with with a knight coming to g5. I mean, also look at that bishop on a8. Like, that boy is disgusting. You, it looks the same yeah. if the bishop was on a8 or not on the board at all it would look like the same position because the bishop can't do anything on a diagonal wow so you can't actually maintain your pawn on c4 not right now so that's why after b3 everyone and anyone is going pawn takes pawn and uh, now after a takes b3 let me just get the opening database then knight bc6 and what do we think about this position white goes rookie one quite castles and because of the presence of this bishop on this diagonal you don't need to be worried about bishop takes h7 so say for instance white goes bishop takes h7 check well you're going to get nowhere because once the king drops back this queen comes out to h5 it would be very dangerous if you didn't have bishop to f5 covering the h7 square greek of sacrifice accepted and doesn't work it does yeah. not work unfortunately definitely it's, it's something to bear in mind so i guess so knight bd2 i guess knight f1 with ideas of knight to g3 what do yes, we think it, about this i think it's very uh very lovely. solid for black very, isn't it exactly exactly because black's not worse and white hasn't really developed i mean yeah we have the bishop on c2 it's nice but that can be neutralized with bishop f5 and yeah my pieces are out i mean like at least Obviously, the knights and, and the bishop. I'm castled. I can go queen c7, bishop f5. Like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not worried. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And uh, going back to the game position, do we have any extra moves? Castles, knight e7, and it's still Vaishali to play. Now, now Vaishali, she's in a tough spot, right? Yeah. She's lost three games in a row. Yesterday was a especially heartbreaking because yes she got a bad position she got a losing position out of the opening against humpy canary but she tenaciously defended and at the very last minute she blundered and spoiled the draw it hurts. that is going to be heartbreaking and and it's, do you think that her tournament now is completely op over she cannot make a comeback yeah i mean it depends on this game here like and i, I say that because imagine if she won this game and then the next two it would be like, where did she come from? Like, whoa, Vishali on the tear now. But, I mean, yeah, for her winning the tournament, is definitely, I think, probably over there. Because um, even you have to count on you, her winning two or three games, but also the rest of the field, like, not doing either, yeah. not doing the same, you know. So that's tough. That's very tough to do, in fact, with there. But I think I would just kind of, you know, get out of your own head and actually just play through it and enjoy the game and enjoy these last few rounds. Try to play your best chess here. And see what happens. That's usually what all top players say, especially Karu too, as well. Like you just play, play good chess, and we'll see what happens, chat. We just see what happens. Play good chess, and we'll see what happens, right? So that's what he does, you know. And you want to actually put yourself in that kind of mindset 
just try to play good chess and see what happens. Yes. And uh, talking about good chess, let's go back to the bird's eye view because my eyes are drawn to what is happening there in the bottom right in yellow between Mizichuk and Garyachkina. Let's head there because there is a pawn sacrifice on the board and I'm dying to see what the players have prepared. Check it out. Let's go there. Oh, okay. This was, I think, believe it or not, a Berlin, which immediately, I mean, I think I have a Berlin, like, chess.com emote where, like, it's me sleeping, you know, because literally that's how the Berlin, that's how I feel about it, but <laughs> maybe it puts you to sleep. But I think this one doesn't seem like you'd be sleeping uh, too long. I know there's a yeah. pawn sacrifice line that I've seen Yeah, before. let's let's go from the beginning because you're, oh, I think you're completely right because I remember doing commentary for in the match between uh, Lei Tingjie and uh, Ju Wenjun and it began like this with uh, Lei Tingjie just sacrificing that pawn in the opening. And it looks like it's going to be really symmetrical, right? When we saw the Berlin, we were like, no. No, come on, bro. No, come, come on. on. Come now on. Shake hands now. Yeah, like, we can't we can't be doing this. <laughs> but uh no indeed. Bishop F one, knight takes knight, rook takes knight, and I was like, Okay, this pawn structure is super symmetrical. Mm -hmm. But I remember I was commentating alongside the uh, twelfth women's world champion, uh Alexandra Kostanyuk, and she's like, No, 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 there's a pawn sacrifice, it could get really interesting. And indeed it is after bishop f six, rook e one. Rook e8, and then this is the whole point. You just go knight c3. You allow this pawn on d4 to be taken. So rook takes e1 played, queen takes e1, and bishop takes d4. If you don't want to grab that material, then you can go b6. But everyone and anyone is going bishop takes d4. They're accepting everything, and now the bishop comes out to f4, threatening to take on e6. And I can say that uh, late in J, she put Ju on Ju under pressure in that game. Knight come out to e8, knight to d5, and uh, now d6, bishop to g5. This queen cannot take this bishop because of queen takes knight, and that would be the old back rank checkmate. So you don't want to be falling for that one, and instead you bishop to g5 played, f6, and the whole thing here is that you've got a weakness on the light squares. This bishop is coming out to c4, and you can give up the b2 pawn with good conscience because it's going to be very difficult for black to unravel these pieces. Bishop h4, oh, sorry, bishop to e3 played. This is maybe the little bit of a wrinkle because the most popular move is bishop to h4. But bishop to e3, and now bishop e5, f4, and this is the moment you got to take. This is spicy. Whoa. Yeah, I know. Berlin, dang. This is a Berlin? Yeah, okay. All right. That's the Berlin I'm talking about. This is not. I'm and why does it say you got to take on B2? Because there's nothing else you can do unless you're going to go for Bishop to E6. But let's have a look. Uh, exactly. Let's have a look at Bishop takes B2. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. That's what we all say. No, so wait, wait. Who, who, who is they? Who is they that says this? We, we Brits. Do you not have that uh -huh. expression? We do not have this at all. I'm sorry. What's this expression again? Chat, the let's, proof let's, let's of the pudding is in eating. The proof of the pudding is in eating. You know, we do say proof is in the pudding. We do. We've heard that one. But then the extra, right. I, you never heard that one. Yeah, it's, it's, wait, proof's in the pudding. While you're eating it, okay. Yeah, yeah the proof of the pudding is is yes. No, now you got me confused. Now, <laughs> <laughs> the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Yeah, it's in the eating. Okay, it's in I'm the eating. Say that today yeah. on stream, Chad. We're gonna try that today later or not. Proof later of the pudding tonight. is in the eating. Yeah, yeah. You... Okay, awesome. Exactly. Awesome. Okay, so rook b one, and then bishop a three. Bishop a three. Okay, we're gonna see this. We're gonna see this, and then what? is Anna's idea. Is it to come out with a queen to a5? Is it to come with a queen to c3? Oh, this all on the board, too. Is that, it's on the board? Okay. Yeah, so, rugby one yeah. live, live board. Rugby, rugby one, one, yeah, bishop a3, and then I want to see what uh, Anna's big idea is. She's two pawns down. Yeah, and Goryashkin is taking them, too. She's like, yeah, you're going to have to show me. I just took two of them clean from you. You know, you better figure this out, or I'm up to a two-piece, two pawns. 
And that is not something you want to do, especially, you know, against somebody as strong as Goryushkin is. It's, oof. Hey, listen, you're giving him two pawns here. You need to know your stuff. Let's see what happens. And it, what's funny is it's equal right now. So that means you need to find some very precise moves from white here to not allow black to consolidate because one slip, literally one, you lose the game. Um, or you're just yeah. going to be worse by a okay. lot because you're down two pawns. So what do we do? So if if we try queen to c3. Bishop c5, only move, right? Bishop c5 no? is the only move. And now we snack those. We snack, right? Yeah, takes and takes. Unless and we want to be going four. bishop to c4. Is bishop uh, c4 anything? That's nice, though. I like because it. Because we're, we're giving everything up. We don't care about material. But no, I, I, no, I think I like it. for me, I, I, I would, would be taking on c5. Same. Take I, and can't, then I can't before. can't handle being material down. And, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's decision time again. Do you go bishop c4 or do you go queen to c5? Because I want to recover the material. I'm like anxiously trying to go queen c5. Yeah, I guess you do. Because bishop c4, I saw king h8, and I just couldn't find another move after that. I yeah. It looks great, but yeah, it, it looks great. You know, where what are you doing with your pieces? Like, whereas, whereas, whereas queen takes c5, how is black going to unravel, right? Oh, because, yeah, because if you go queen d6, that's just simply queen takes queen, All right? No, there's not much in it. I'll be after the whole series of forced moves, but knight takes queen is going to be met by knight takes c7, and if you take with the pawn. But again, this is just me because I'm. <laughs> I want to be <laughs> winning back my material <laughs> right now. I like that though. Ninety-seven takes rook b seven. Yeah, you. Yeah, have some I'm not do. sure. I, I'm not sure. Knight takes bishop. Rook takes. I mean. Oh, uh, but then rook this takes was two, rook this seven. was like a little bit of fireworks for this. But even this actually. No, no, no. Hang on a second. This is dangerous. I don't yeah, care I whether the computer says is it equal or not. With a past a pawn going all the way up to a6 and a better minor piece, this is very, very dangerous. Yeah, Black will have to play very precisely to get out of this one. So that's not going to be an easy game for Black. So let's uh, no queen to d6. That feels a bit tame. But then what What to do? If you go, what are we going to see? What happened? I saw a move. Queen a5. I saw this queen one too, a5. but. I guess it's the same move, like it's just the same thing. Yeah, is, is it the same thing? Because after bishop c5, if you go bishop takes bishop, there is no b6. Yeah, there's like bishop, maybe bishop b6, something. Yeah, right, knight takes maybe b6. b6. Or maybe knight, knight, knight b6 first. Yeah, I don't, that's crazy. Like, which one's better, actually, bishop or knight? That's a great question. Um, they both look great. Hmm, maybe knight takes because it's a bigger tempo, I guess. It's yeah, the then there's A, a B. And then, and then take, takes and rook B, A. Yeah, but then he ta they take and then... Oh, this way, rook D, oh, you can't go... Yeah, but even then, a. even then, you're right, you can go bishop A6. Oh, bishop A6. Oh, there's a check. Oh, there's a check. Yeah. And then king H1. What is this? Nonsense. No, no, no then, <laughs> then this is this. This is the whole point. Bishop takes bishop. Ooh, Whoops. And mate. Knight. And I think you'll find that is checkmate, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Check and mate. Wow. Yeah, that's a sick line. I had a sick queen. Eight five was sharp. Dang, Anna. Just came with this bread. Yeah, but that, that was with B six. So B six doesn't work. We've we've established that, but I guess it could be tempting. Definitely. So, so you said then you go DC, and right. then the question is, does is white threatening anything else? Is there some like bishop coming out to c4 with tempo? Well, now it's a little like different because now we could do queen takes c5 after king h8, but the bishop's on c4. That's the only difference, which I don't think yeah. it made a big difference. But maybe the knight can come out to d6. Oh, no, wait. King h8, queen c5 now hits king queen f8 mate. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's queen it. Eight. All right. Queen takes, yeah. Now you have to go like queen d6, which is what you looked at before. Yeah, now, yeah, now you have to do this. And then but here, this is... there's rook d1 first. Sorry, rook e1. No, but queen takes c5 is check. Oh, man. It's trying to be crafty. Yeah. Okay, so we got to trade. Uh, yeah, we, I, think we, I think we do have to trade. And then pawn takes knight. Rook e1 strong. 
Very strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rookie one is devastating. The rook Look comes over pieces. to e seven. You can't actually. Move how you, actually? How are you going to defend this? Uh, bishop d seven. Bishop d seven. Rookie seven. <laughs> right. Rookie seven. Bishop c six. Wow. And somehow black's holding. Somehow, believe it or not, knight Yeah, I'm not okay, sure whatever. black is going to be holding this one. You can just. You know, this is well worth a pawn. Right. It's complete domination, right? No, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, we just managed to get the bishop to f7. Then we're. I just wonder whether this is this is an idea. No, the, so the evaluation bar goes down. But hmm. yeah, this is definitely worth a lot of compensation here. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Right. This is some nice preparation from. Anna Mizichuk, queen to a5, targeting this bishop and also just forcing this bishop back to c5. Is there any other move? That's a great b6? question. I mean, no, no, b6. No, uh, no bishop is on green. So you're v. Yeah, yeah. So have. you can't do uh, unless unless we have this. No, uh, but yeah, I don't believe in that. Well, the evaluation bar move. has a move. It literally didn't move at all. Like it didn't it even did, shake. No, it didn't it move didn't, at no, all. So, Wow. Okay, so the big idea is that after queen takes bishop, bishop takes knight. So I love um, being crafty. Oh, bishop c4 doesn't work, though. It doesn't really hit anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bishop c4. Oh, yeah, that's so, probably a move. But then, but then why not play rook takes b7 unless there's something? Oh, oh do you see that? Evaluation bar is not, not approving of that. Okay, but there's also knight takes, knight takes f6. Do you want to play knight takes f6? What other moves are there? Oh, that is knight f6 is possible. Knight c7, I guess, if, if we're going that route then. But yeah, they, they both probably, oh, I guess that one doesn't work. I don't know why. No. Maybe. Because, I guess the bishop, bishop goes away. back. And yeah. it's pinned. And crafty. this queen is pinned. So, yeah, that's a bit crafty. But almost, almost. Okay. Queen e5. She's in a think tank here. Yeah, I'm kind of curious now, like, why not rook takes b7, which is like a very natural move. Right, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out too. Bishop what is c5. It? That wins? What? That is crazy. No, it's not not a massive advantage, apparently, but it's like, <laughs> luck is I doing just... okay. Oh, there's in-between moves. If bishop c5, then there's bishop d5. You're also breaking up yes. the connection already of the queen and knight. So that is a really, that is insanely strong move. It's just... How is that even possible? Okay, so that means I have to go bishop c4 then. So at bishop c5 yes. and bishop c4 and then... So in this uh, position, the best move for white is to go bishop c4. You're right. Oh, right now, bishop c4. Oh, wow. Well, can't take the pawn. And let me just check what the best move is. The best move in this position is bishop e6. As mm, we found out, bishop e6. And it's quite funny because automatically I was just playing bishop c5. Right. But then Garashkina paused, and I was like, why is she pausing? Okay, there must be another move, bishop to e6. That's the alternative, and that is the better one to choose. Well, she's probably going to do it, though. Is she still thinking? Yeah, I think she's going to do it. She paused. She's hesitating. That suggests to me that she's not working out what's happened after bishop c5. Instead, she's working out whether bishop e6 is a possibility. So let's go to the bird's eye view. We're going to leave Gary Ashkina for a while. And let's check in on the game between uh, Hump Humpy against uh, Katerina Lagno. So I'm just going to pull that one up. And there we see it. This, yeah, incidentally, is the first time that uh, Katerina has faced d4 so we get we just do a quick backtrack and it looks like it is from a nimzo are you a nimzo player Kanti? i have never lost otb with a nimzo so i i am actually using more nimzo and queens these days because it's just <laughs> it's more solid i've never lost otb so how is nice. that possible i've lost at every single opening there is. <laughs> i've actually i was doing some open i was just kind of looking at my repertoire and changing some things and looking around and i was like wow this one even though I haven't won all the games, I have a lot of draws, but I also have a lot of wins. And like, you know, yeah, I didn't lose. I was like, oh, this is probably something I need to lean into a little more. Yes. 
because I'm not like, you know, it's one with white, draw with black, or at least just don't try not to lose, right? So then I can maybe switch some things up later, but I was always Kings Indian and Grinfeld player, but you know, it's uh, harder. But this just... isn't a Nimzo. This is a Ragozin. So Ah, uh, yeah, Ragozin. I've tried Nimzo's it. This is a Ragozin. Oh, so Bishop to B4 and A3. Hang on a second. That one's pretty rare. I don't think I've seen A3 before. Have you? Yeah. A3, you know, I'm trying to think, look at it from the flipped board side. Yeah, that's why I thought this was a Nimzo, it's, it's, looking at the bird's eye view. It's a it's rare, rare one, one, right? Yeah, so, yeah. okay, so I'm more familiar with bishop coming out to g5. I prepared and queen a4. Five. I've also yeah. done queen a4. Yeah, I've, I've seen also those. played e3. I've played other, a whole load of other moves. Whoops, e3 was... But a3, well, this is one that I'm going to closely be looking at for reference because <laughs> bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and uh, now here, what did uh, she played c5 and a4? A4 novelty. Well, it's not novelty, but only been played once before on the database, and that is That's very a very move. rare move, right? That's because wrong. everyone else is playing e3, yeah. e3 or taking on d5, and Humpy. Well, look at that. She's playing a4, and now knight to e4. She went into the tank. Look at her. She was well, now she came out of the tank. There's now and they made a move. But she was in a think tank and then she said, you know what, E3 anyway. I'm sacking the pawn on national television. Wow. She said, whatever. <laughs> E3, go ahead, take it. Take it. And I say the proof of the pudding is wow. in the eating. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a well, Is she gonna eat that I'm pawn? I'm taking or not? on C3. Thank yes. you very much. I will take it as president of the Pawn Grabbers Association. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You're going to have to prove it to me. Yes. Like, what is the plan? I take C3. Queen C2? Wow. Uh, that's a great question. I'm still trying to figure I'm gonna that out. I'm going to do a smash and grab. Two, yeah. I'm going to come C2. back. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay, C D. Maybe. Uh, which one? Which one? Which one do I take? Let's do DC. DC. There's a, there's a lot of pawns in the middle of the board, right? There's a lot going on right now. Thanks. Is there a word for it? Because I, I learned the other day that when four knights in the middle, that's called a knight cube. And I was like, wow. Oh, yeah, you got pawn cube and knight cube. Pawn cube came from uh, Eric Rose and, oh, no, my queen. And then you have uh, the the knight cube. Yeah, that's just the the knight cube, yeah. That was, and uh, pawn freeze. Never heard that. Pawn freeze, right, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, DC5, yeah, DC5. Okay, so, 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 so. Then I'm looking at, is, is this type of stuff scary? Yeah, I was actually just looking at that. I was like, this is really annoying because I think after check, there's bishop d2, and then there might be queen takes c5. So I think I have to go the other way then. Yeah. And meaning c takes d5, not dc. So let's okay. go back here and look at it the other way. Take it. Correct. And, and then... now, yeah, so now you have the iso pawn. So I'm, I'm more cool with this, but I did sack a pawn. So this is just, I don't like this. I don't know about this. dc5, queen a5 check. Bishop d2, queen c5, queen c5, rook c1. Oh my goodness, I might be winning. That's a classy huh? line. No, okay, wait, wait, so, wait. Sorry, uh, I was looking at queen a5 check first. Or uh, c, sorry, dc. Take pawn. dc. Correct. Queen a5, bishop d2, queen c5, queen c5, knight c5, rook c1, b6. Maybe knight yeah. d7. Knight d7, right? Maybe the other. And then bishop b4 and b6. Oh, yeah, knight d7. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, but bishop b, b5, that's nice. Yeah, I don't see that one. Knight yeah, b3, this rook is, c7. This is really scary, scary stuff. I mean, you can even yeah, attack this. Yeah, white looking good. White looking yeah. real good. Okay, so e3, as played by Humpy. Knight takes c3. That's what I would do. Queen c2. I also wonder whether you can just focus on development, leave that tension there on the board. Oh, you can. You actually can. Bishop d3, queen a5, king f1, and just like, it's getting about to get a spicy game, boy. It's going to be a very spicy game. King queen f1. Queen a5, and then uh, uh, what to do here? I'll never know. Uh, like, do we go king e2? Uh, no, because knight comes knight c3. Hmm? That's for the memes. For the memes. King e2 for the memes. And king f1. Well, well, I've seen it done before in the London <laughs> system. You know, you, you walk your king up, and the whole yeah. thing is that you, and then you get out of there. Then you get up out of there. And you also do it in the Karakhan as well, at some lines. You put your king out on oh, the right. 
yeah, you, yeah. you put your rook out and then so i so it wasn't quite for the bong cloud memes for the memes for the memes king e2 mm -hmm. yeah hikaru would do it immediately oh i did it for the memes chat i did, did it for the memes did it for content I did it for content chat for content yeah content. we got king, king f1 right king f1 is the move yes king f1 is is possible but uh definitely quite a wild ride is being promised in this game between Humpy, Canaru and Katarina Lagno. Remember, there is not that much in the competition anymore. It's a three-way tie for first place. And there we also see Katarina Lagno half a point behind the leaders. My God, anything can happen. We're just at the opening stage and I think it's the perfect time for us to go on a short break. So don't go anywhere. More action to come. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. Peter. Peter. Let's check. Let's check. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't hear you say anything. I thought Padana played extremely well, very, very solidly. Didn't make mis didn't make mistakes and made good positional moves all the time. Uh, the last time I was wiped out by a woman was by Nona Geprin Dashvili in 1966. She beat me. She beat you. Two, wow. two wins and one draw. Nice. Yeah, I'm retiring.
Welcome back and what an exciting start already to round nine. We've had opening surprises, opening gambits and sheer aggression. And one of those players playing in an aggressive manner, it is Leighton J. She's just won three games in a row. And with that final victory, she is there at the top of the standings alongside Alexandra Garashkina and Tan Zhong Yi. Can she make it four in a row and break away from the pack? What do you think, Kanti? Definitely, it gives you um, motivation. It also gives you confidence, right? So these two things can go very, very far and can be you know, something very diabolical when you have motivation and you have the confidence. Then, you know, you already have the skill there. So it could just be a, a uh, monstrous performance. Good things will happen. Now, of course, you do have to stay locked in, stay in the zone. Easier said than done. But it is very, very, very possible for Leighton J. Yes. And I'd love your thoughts on what's happened in this particular opening. Because when we left it, we left it. Let's just go back to Rook to G1. This was the moment. And we got very excited because we were predicting G4 happening. And the way that uh, Salimova responded is with C6. G4. Oh, 100%. And after, yeah. Stopping G5, but Lei, she is relentless. H4, and now we have taking that pawn on d4 now according to the database we're still in the realms of theory but i want to know is black already suffering big time because there is a big problem with space here already i mean this game is uh, reminiscent of some of my own it feels like i'm watching late t james canty in fact because this is just the one of uh the, one of the sharpest positions that i love to play i actually have had these positions in some of the chessable in my chessable course, in fact, of the Philidor version, because there's a version where you go d4, knight f6, knight c3, d6. Oh, okay, let me, okay, okay so let me go like back this. to the, let me just uh, go back to the beginning to beginning, show yeah. everyone. d4, Sorry. knight f6, or d6, that could work, knight c3. Yeah, knight c3. Knight f6. And then, in the course, I give uh, knight f3, actually. Ah, okay. Knight f3, and then knight d7. And then the reason why I do this move order, because after rook g1, there's a cool trap, rook g1. And then after e5, I actually, believe it or not, okay, make sure he's not listening. Okay, cool. I'll be bored Nick once with this line with white. So um, I remember it, it's fun. So he played e5, you go g4 here. After g4, there's e4, right? So you almost already have him. Knight f to d2. This is the trap I got. I called bored Nick in this trap. And then d5, pawn d5, defend the pawn. G5, you hit the knight, you win a pawn immediately, right? So it's really oh. cool. Knight moves, you take the pawn on d5. All right, so it's a very cool trap that can happen. But instead, you just go e4, like back in the, uh, go back up a few. Actually, after, instead of them going uh, g4, h6. So g4, h6, uh, e5, g4, h6, h4, c6, e4. And we have like a literally a transposition well, this into is their literally game. The, yeah. Literally and their so, game. All right. Literally, exactly. yeah. Correct. And correct. e takes so d4 cool. played. All right, and now I, I think I give knight takes because knight takes is better. And then after knight e5, I don't remember yeah. what we play, but I think G we go G5, bishop e2. Bishop e2. I think we just go bishop e2 with the idea of bishop d, like f4 is coming, bishop e, bishop e3, queen d2, castle, queen side. And the knight jumps into f5 too. So you get a really strong position for white. It's easy to play. It's very fun. This is looks really scary. This is, this is frankly terrifying with the white pieces. And uh, when you're looking at the clock times, you you feel that Lei at least has some ideas as to, well, actually, I'm going to say like this. It's very easy for white to play, right? You push mm -hmm. back. F4, bishop e3, queen d2, castle queen side. Where is Salimova castling? Oh, yeah, Unclear. they don't, you know what? Like, yeah, they don't you, castle you, in this you, line. They, they probably, she's probably <laughs> going to have to live with her king in the center right yeah, there on right. e8. You're right. And how is this bishop going to get into the game? Where's the breakout move? Is d5 happening right here, right now? It might be the only chance you get because f4 looked really scary. Definitely is a scary move. And I remember looking at this. This was a fun variation to play around with white just felt better in all the lines practically speaking because you're pushing forward i got three pawns on the fourth rank three of them like this is really this could be vicious i got g5 h5 i got f4 coming it's a very good position i think sorry uh, i, I, I just saw that there was she actually went uh, not e takes d4 knight takes d4 which looked really good queen mm -hmm. takes d4 
Queen takes no. d4, I guess probably with the same kind of ideas. Maybe the bishop can come out to f4 and then cast the queen side. Pressure yeah, against d6. Problem I didn't like was uh, stuff like queen b6 or pawn sacks with d5 and bishop c5. I just don't want the queen tension. Or, of course, even here, I might be still be able to play bishop f4. But, like, now you give them chances. Yeah, d5 with the option. Exactly. Now we get getting sharp. Bishop c5 is strange stuff that can happen with this queen mm -hmm. on d4. So I always like the knight takes to really kind of keep control of the game and not yeah. give black opportunities that I, they give them counterplay. So I mean, she has queen b6 or maybe d5 could be a move for black. Yeah. Now I see what you're saying because with a uh, great space comes great responsibility. Wow. Remember that catchphrase. The banker, the superhero. I knew she no. was a superhero. That's crazy. <laughs> that, wow. It wasn't my catchphrase. I, 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 I'm nicking it from one of my co-commentators, David. Oh, David, David Howell. David Howell. The, yeah, Mr. My guy, David. Mr. Grindmaster, one of, the, uh, one of the most fantastic commentators. But, you know, he's always saying, with great space comes great responsibility because you leave behind weak squares. So this is one of the downsides. <laughs> was that an English accent? That was. Uh, <laughs> great, space great responsibility. Yeah, you, 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 you got to get responsibility. You can swallow it in. Responsibility. T Responsibility. T that's like, yeah. T that's one of my favorite things when the Americans mm. try to do Brits, British accents. <laughs> and they go, they go, Chimene. Chimene. <laughs> no, all right. No. Or, or what? Chim all right. Yeah, yeah. They, they get, right. yeah. They, they get the vowels wrong because it's like, yeah. yeah. We, we swallow a lot of words. <laughs> that's in, so funny in, here, in you UK. guys. Yeah, he actually, yeah, that, I always make fun of David because he talks about that Hoover thing, where, but we just call it vacuum. He's like, yeah, we're going to Hoover all the pieces off the board. And I'm like, what the Hoover? I had to change because I was going Hoover as well. The Hoover, yeah. the Hoover variation, the Hoover came out. And uh, <laughs> it's just, and then everyone was like looking at me like, like you did, like, like, yeah. what does that Hoover. mean? Like, what? Hoover? Hoover. That's the last name, I think, right? And like, Hoover. Yes. I'm like, oh, vacuum. Oh, that's vacuum. what you mean. Yeah. Oh, that's what you mean, David. Got it. Queen to, queen, so queen to b6, I think that's the way that Salimova is going to react. Queen b6, and I'm get the database is telling me, might not be the best move, what? but g5. Oh, my goodness me. And the, the database is actually incorrect because you can see the evaluation bar going all the way in Black's favor. Mm -hmm. And it's saying that g5, the most popular move, only three people have played it, is a mistake. It's so instead, yeah, it's just leaving way too many weak squares behind right. so the best move for white is what then if queen to b6 happens queen d1 queen d3. <laughs> well no. i didn't like queen d3 because dice c5 in the immediate tempo g4 is hanging so like queen, you know, queen a, a, no. Or, no queen c4 maybe it's a strange move but what does it even do i mean yeah. can, can i go all in and go bishop e3 I was actually going bishop f4 same idea that you had before i like that move because it's just his d6 but bishop e3 is good too um oh. other way bishop f4 oh so, yeah yeah sorry yeah that was okay. <laughs> the other <laughs> bishop way i was looking at queen b2 though like can you can they not i'm sure we, like they just can't take this right or what because i was assuming problem. that it was a bit too hot to handle that i would it just definitely go to is. b2 okay queen, and a3, queen came a3 and now let's let's get uh marching on so we can go rook to b3 that's one move we can go bishop out to c4 what mm. else to do we can go rook to g3 Woo. no Ooh. that was uh that was, that was a bit too much that's spicy i like that yeah but okay, the, but there's some stress here, right? Because the, this is how I've seen a lot of grandmasters beat lower rated players. They grab a hot pawn and then they go queen c5 and they don't care that the queen's being pushed around. Right. No, They're I mean, just... think about the poison pawn variation of the Sicilian, the razor sharp thing that even the NBL revived a little bit in a way. And also uh, Bobby used to play all the time. So having that, that thing, take the pawn and just dip, like get out of there. Stay, stick and yeah. move and keep going, keep going, trying to win yeah. the game. Okay, so Queen takes D4. According to Canty, you heard it here first. Not the most accurate try. Much better to go Knight takes D4. And he gave us a masterclass from his uh, Job of Art London course as well. You can get that on Chessable. Thank you very much. You can get that on Chessable, yeah. Right now. Absolutely. Queen to B6 is what we're expecting. And here, I'm just going to check. Queen to B6, Bishop F4. You know your stuff. 
Yeah. And then queen takes b2 is not the best move because of rook b1. Well, it's okay. A3. Rook b1, queen a3, and here you got to go g5. Oh, that's spicy. But then, okay. then, then, but here you're literally continuing. Oh, you're doing this. Oh, oh. bad okay. night on h5. Wow, they've been watching you, Vanka. That's crazy. Yeah, that's look crazy. at that. Stockfish. Wow. <laughs> Taking they, inspiration yeah. from Yogi. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I'm that's not quite insane. sure. Bishop e3, and then you just play it like that. There is no compensation, like no immediate uh -huh. return mm. for the, from this. It's just to kind of say that this king is weak mm -hmm. it's not easy to develop so it's this type of position but then again that's actually really difficult to unless you know that white has pressure psychologically although i'm going to say a book but caveat is actually not difficult for leighton j leighton j loves to sacrifice pawns for just play she's not yeah, one of these okay. people who needs to have something concrete as a response so queen takes d4 Queen to b6. You got to follow my golden rule of chess. H5 is a possibility, but you're playing with fire. You, you might get caught with your hands in the cookie jar if you do this type of stuff because you feel like g6 is coming. Yeah, that, that knight is out there. Bishop h3, there's knight e5. Well, you have bishop f4 too, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, bishop, bishop e2, nice. bishop, bishop f4. And I, I feel that this knight is on a limb and white has g6 whenever they want to and pressure against d6 so i love the idea of queen to b6 it fits in with my philosophy and and i saw a move being played knight c5 knight oh, c5. no 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 yeah, i was gonna I'll say i was actually gonna leave this game and go back to the bird's eye view but now i am thinking knight knight c5 that actually is a new move and the question here is, what happens after g5? I was just going to say that. I just go g5, g6. I think blacks already practically might be in some trouble. g5, take, take. You move the knight, I go g6. If you take it, uh, then obviously it looks bad. If you don't, then I go bishop c4. But, but wait, wait, wait. So, okay, let's let's work through this one. So g5. Right. Because I of this is, again... I like something HG. that you got to hg it might be automatic but you got to run through the alternatives You're right That's bishop true. e5 there's knight to g5 there's even e5 so we've got to be really systematic here yeah. so hg was like what i was thinking but maybe knight yeah. to e6 is going to be the response to that That's what happens right. after knight to hg5 knight g5 maybe you can get away with rook h4 uh, believe it or not but Rook yeah, H4. but then uh, hang on. Whoops, 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 whoops. That was rook h4. Is that then then bishop c4? You can meet that with d5. Uh, 94 though. Ooh, no, you like uh, d5. Even better. Yeah, no, d5 is really strong. D5. Like, d5 and take on e4. Okay, and, so can't even move anything. That's crazy. D5. Yeah. So knight to g knight to g5 is a no go. And what yeah. about bishop takes? Mm, Valoration bar hasn't has moved. Goes. And it develops. And it's 96. That's kind of oh. annoying again. Queen e3, maybe just chill. Just queen e3, chill. Right. And then castle queen side. I feel knight g5, take, take. take what, what about if you go queen to d2? I just kind of want to castle queen side. And I don't know. I, I want to like cool. make life difficult for you. Put some pressure on the d pawn. Yeah, black's yeah. still suffering. Maybe you go bishop e7 just to develop. And then. Castles. Castles. Queen B6. I'm just, I'm literally just getting pieces off the back rank because I don't know what to do. So I need to develop my pieces. But look at the eval bar. I'm making natural moves. I'm getting pieces off the back rank. I guess bishop F6 here. And then you have to take with the G pawn. No, I might take with the bishop. Yeah, that helps. Uh, that yeah, helps the me bishop, a lot. The bishop, yeah. No, I, I think I will wait. All right. I want to develop. I just, I just... Because you're struggling for ideas exactly. in life. Joking. In life. Yeah. Right. The chess yeah. imitates life. No, yeah. I'm just, I mean, I think everyone is, everyone anyway. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Queen B6. Bishop, Bishop C4. C4. I mean, why not? It develops, right? It, doesn't it develops, do easy, please. Do, it yeah. Develops. yeah. 
Then bishop d7. I'm just developing pieces. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, really totally. just doing development. And that's bad. Maybe e5 wins or something. Yeah, e5 is stupid strong. I wins e5, on the spot. Yeah. E5 yeah, is no good. You can't take the bishop f6. So, dang. Yeah. Man, that's... Could we have gone e5 before? No. Oh, uh, well, it's not the same. You're right, it's though. Not... We could, but it just doesn't hit the same. Oh, God. <laughs> Looking at the evaluation, part, I, I love how cold blooded it is. Like, <laughs> like yeah, do it. you know do it. nothing. You know, it's everything. Because I was just looking at this empty square and thinking, well, there's not going to be any. But actually, now you think about it, you can't, you can't move the knight because there's pressure against here. And after D take, knight takes e five. You're almost like in Zugzwang. You have to play like a five or like queen c seven and. Yeah. Are you just defending? And I would go bishop c4 now, rook a, rook g e1. What in the, on earth? Like everything's developed. It's as bad. That's yeah. really bad. You don't yeah. want to stay far away from that. This is scary stuff, isn't it? I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Totally. Totally right, but but incidentally, so we're analyzing without the computer. So I'm just gonna just check: is there a killer blow here in this position? Ricky won. F4. Oh, Ricky won now. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, and and it just like oh. says, "What are you doing? This is yeah, just yeah. amazing." And I need to get your course. Oh, definitely, definitely. You, you, I, got, you, I need to get your course because if you're recommending this. <laughs> this is right up my alley. I need to just need yes, to yes. shake things up because You're crushing people. Yeah, You're checkmate in seventeen moves. You sold. There me. it is. I, I'm I am, in. Yeah. And Seven you can just see like queen takes d four. Queen takes d four, yep. and Salimova mm -hmm. has perhaps put a foot wrong because after knight to c five, g five is the correct move. Okay, I just the engine is still running, and after h takes g five. Bishop takes g5 is the best move. Oh, wow. That's nice. Which it is funny because we kind of we kind of taught, you know, capture towards the center right. instinctively. And here, oh my goodness me. This saves the day. What? Whoa. Yeah. What you have to be kidding me. Oh, there's a nasty line. Knight takes queen e7, bishop d3, d5. Unbelievable. The engine just ruins everything. That is ridiculous. You're fast, though. That I was, I was still like an old lady trying to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, serious calculation goodness. goals here. Coe, Coe, baby. You know what it is. Chat, come on. You know calculation over everything every night. Do your puzzles. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No, yeah. but here, we need seven. Bishop d three, d five, and he just wants the piece back, or she does. But it's insane mm -hmm. how they just find this stuff, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. That's but wicked. okay, so so Leighton J has to be. That's why she has to go. Bishop takes g five. Incredible! Wow, because incredible of this reference. lovely, absolutely fantastic resource. And then here, you just drop the queen back. You castle kingside. You enjoy life with all that space. E five is in the air. Bishop can come out to c four. This is a great opening for White, but only if she backs it up with g five. And then bishop takes g5. Do you think it'll happen? Uh, yes, I think it will because she's already played rook g1, g4, and h4. She's not about to just, okay, let me put my bishop on d2. Okay, let me play bishop e2 now. Like, she's not going to do that. She's going to be very aggressive. So she's probably thinking g5. She just want to know all the you know, subtleties to it. Do I play hg and then play g6, which was automatic? Do I play bishop f4 right now? So, but g5, I feel she's going to find. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are definitely keeping a close eye on this one, but let's go back to the bird's eye view because today everyone has come to the game in a fighting mood. And I, I don't know where to turn to because I feel like we're being spoiled for choice. Maybe we can have a look at the game between uh, Muzicic and Garyashkina. Because there I see that white is temporarily taking something on e6. And I kind of want to see whether this is going to be fizzling out. Oops, I've got the wrong, I've got the wrong board. Sorry <laughs> about that. I was too into the game. I, I, okay, here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. I, 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 there we are. 
<laughs> this, is, this is what happens when you let me loose on the <laughs> board. <laughs> Yovi, 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 Yovi's loose. Wild, yes. Yovi. Okay, so, so let's backtrack a little bit because we Yovi. left it with the queen. Ah, ah right, right here. Queen five. So we left it with this. She found this is the moment. Screen. Queen a5 and the best move for Gary Ashkina was to go bishop to e6. She finds it. Very we nice. guess that much from her pause. And then the bishop right. comes out to c4. Mm -hmm. C6. And what Great. happened after C6? Uh, pay, oh, trade of queens, knight of six. Yeah. That's how we got it. You have seven, bishop e6, king of six, bishop g8. Nice. Wow. Dang. But uh, let's just count the pawns. Let me, because uh, as far as I can see, black is still two pawns up. Right. Yeah. But okay, she's going to win one, knight f6. Yeah, one back. She played king f7. No, but king f7 is beautiful. Nifty. That's nifty. That's so you know? That's nifty. Goryashkina, she'd be swinging, bro. That's a nifty And yeah, the whole point is that after knight takes knight, Boom. you can just simply capture the bishop. And this knight is trapped in enemy's land. So you don't want to be doing that. So she has to go bishop takes e6. Knight takes, sorry, king takes knight. And now the bishop comes out to g8, wants to snack on this pawn on h7. And this pawn on b7 is still on prees. What do we think? I like white. That Berlin sack was nice because now I'm getting the pawn back. I'm getting the pawn back. And I have the bishop here in an open position, right? So, okay, yes, I mean, I, it's obviously level, you know, so I see engine-wise. But the king's on f6, meaning it's active, but it also is out in the open, vulnerable to checks. Black's peace coordination is lacking. White has two bishops, easier to coordinate. I'm also maybe going to take on b7. So if I'm black, I'm probably going to play maybe b6 or b4, maybe b6, just to like not allow yeah, rip b7 yeah. to happen. Yeah, yeah b6. b6. Okay, you can have the little h pawn over there. So bishop takes. Yeah, yeah, but that seems irrelevant, right? You know, and then I now we play this out, but maybe white is a hair better. I think Engine even likes black hair better, but that's because of the pawn structure is more solid over there. You got the queen side majority, is what they call it, which is better than the king side. So yeah, chances, oh, bishop c5. But that was that what I was thinking, point. just to because the bishop pair makes me nervous. Yeah, and I have to maybe go king f2 just to get my king active too. And then, ah. But then bishop takes know. bishop. Takes, takes, and g6. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, g6, 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 g6. No, 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 g6. That boy getting trapped somehow. Maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, but. And then the bishop comes out. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 Wow. Shut the door. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Oh. Wow. Better watch it. Because, but, but then okay. I'm just looking at the clock time and I'm seeing that Anna is just blitzing this out. She definitely is. I actually, so yeah. this is preparation. Well, how much, but, wait, when do they, how much time do we get? Do they start with hour and they start with an hour and a half? I'm about to say, cause she got an hour 28. Minutes. I was like, I just wanted to be sure. I was like, I, I don't think it's more than an hour 30, but it seems like the way that she's moving, it was. So she gets she, two minutes for the whole game? Yes. Well, they do get that 30 second increment per move. So That's it's true. not quite two minutes for the whole game, but she Yay. came pretty quickly. Okay. So it does not seem to indicate that she's well within her preparation. But what is the big, I'm, I'm struggling to see the big idea, like after B6. What is yeah, the, what right. is You are absolutely right. That is uh, maybe Bishop D4 check to throw it in there. Probably yeah. started there. And then King, oh yeah, I got some some Tactinos brewing here, it feels like. Okay. And if yeah. the King uh, goes. Yeah, you got to be careful where you even move the King. Off. Maybe King. Okay, oh, I, 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 yeah, ah. look at the eval bar. But now, okay, rookie one on, on instinct, automatic. Check and think about what to do next. And then King comes back. And, and now then, you take. Now I take, yeah. Now I take. But then the Bishop like, comes back to C5. Same way and it, whoa, look at look how these moves are actually making the evaluation bar just go up and up in white's favor i don't understand how why, why is, i'm not sure why but me either maybe c i don't know i don't know actually. take or play c3 c3 restricts the pieces still i think csc3 oh, no <laughs> it's it went down so let, let's go back let's let's take that one okay take take bishop d3 i guess we just go back to the house and play an game like that's it Take, yeah. take. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, you're right. Completely right. It's, uh, Anna's just arguing that it's going to be three versus one. 
Bishop versus it's a two pawn well. advantage on the king side. This is something that she can deal with. So right. it's really like using those ideas that you get in pawn structure in the uh, bishop. What's it call it? The exchange variation in the Lopez. Mm -hmm. You have that extra pawn on the king side. The queen side is irrelevant. Yeah, you have the better minor piece. Ah, okay. So this is actually this is a little bit serious. Then what happens? And how precise does so bishop d4 so not not taking on bishop to d4 check yeah you got to run was, king back and this is b6 if um can black do anything else yeah there's is uh hmm. is that b5 maybe, is that a b5 right no yeah b5 but I, I was also thinking okay b5 i could take on a7 at some point mm -hmm. now do we take a7 or a7 yeah i don't like those pawns over there so maybe i'll take but then my bishop gets trapped somehow so can you do the know. same business can you go bishop d4 i'll check first and then get, take. The, get, the, get the whole shebang check. here bishop takes bishop c5 and then c5 c5 i, I don't know whether this is any good but c5 looks good bishop f2 i gotta go bishop, home yeah bishop f2 and then you're arguing again, bishop pair, three pawns versus one. This, These two pawns can slow down these ones quite effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, deep preparation there tight. from Anna. Yeah, that's nice. Bishop to g8 and yeah, interesting. And here, I just had a look at the computer and the computer is saying best move is bishop c5 immediately wow yeah. yeah no that's that's crazy that's oh i understand now though that's crazy bro when you see it you bishop immediately c5, and then but i rejected this immediately because of rook takes b7 but look yeah. at the evaluation bar no, just yeah. go it. and it says knight to d6 yeah 90. and she spotted it too she played bishop c5 she's going for the complications Takes, she's going takes. bishop c5 she oh. played it bro she played it she played out of her mind boy she is playing out of her mind that's why she had to have a leaderboard yeah. though as well. and it's quite funny because Garyashkina is the participant who has been hasn't been in trouble in any of her games yeah she's wow. been a spot of hot water now and then but never been lost and there we do see that bishop c5 and anna responding immediately but we are going to take a quick break and remember something exciting is happening in the chess world because chess.com is so excited to support the launch of chess up Two, a revolutionary smart chess board that will change how you learn and play the game with technology such as touch sensitive pieces, which will trigger all legal moves to light up on the board when you pick up a piece and optional AI assistance chess up to meets you at your skill level and supports training and growth chess up to even allows you to play chess.com bots on the board if you're ready to learn more about chess up to and save 100 dollars when you pre-order on kickstarter head to go.chess.com slash chess up to or use exclam chess up in chat and on that note we are going to take a short break What are your favorite countries to play chess in? For chess, for me, any country is fine. <laughs> you don't mind that much? Yeah, I don't mind. But uh, as a person, I like Luxembourg very much. Spain, Spain. Because ah, I have the cool. best Those... memories there. So. Uh, no, not that. But <laughs> <laughs> what is that? My... <laughs> they throw them into the swimming pool. <laughs> ah. After uh, general, like, I have Punishment good results. <laughs> Okay. You have any oh, favorite countries uh, yeah, to play? Yeah, Greece. Uh, is you like Greece? Yeah, okay. I won my World Youth, oh, made my second GM. No? Like I've that good mm. result, I also love the place. Good. And Prague, what's your favorite yeah, country to play? Like I said, room, like country doesn't matter. Just the playing menus <laughs> matters. <laughs> yeah. With the, the hotel with and the, the venue. Okay, yeah, with the correct room temperature. <laughs> what is your best game? And the most memorable one and uh, the weakest one. Best game is not easy because I'm always torn between the Iranian game and Vikings A and my game is Lotier. Weakest, 
it's hard to beat losing in six moves, right? So my game with Zapata in Beal, my game with Caruana in Vikansai 2020 is definitely one of the most uh, awful ones. How exactly and did then it some go? Other, hmm? How exactly did it go? I'm not going to relive it with you now. Oh, sorry. You can look it up. <laughs> uh, it's a painful <laughs> Otherwise, I can act out your draw with Prag. <laughs> <laughs> you get up, you go. <laughs> <laughs> All on video, boy. <laughs> no, this will be like... It's a classic. He gets a very confident jacket and all he's putting in. He goes and then he turns around and comes back. <laughs> <laughs> because this guy is not moving. <laughs> so yeah, no, I... Okay, before making the move, I was checking the score sheet. I just missed that there was this move that... Uh, okay, let's not talk about that. <laughs> you know, in this, uh, in this video, they will be doing... What was that game, like, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what was the position? Eh? <laughs> okay, so we'll do a team thing. Uh, each one of you will impersonate someone, some chess player that you can think of. Who starts? You start. Yeah. You start. It's okay. Actually, I can start if you want. No, wait, I'll start. I just got Two minutes ago, they were fighting. They, the <laughs> they made me draw lots okay. around and now they're. <laughs> I can start. Yes, I'm there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very it's good. It's not going to like this, but okay, so this is easier. Oh, back and it appears to be fire on the board for round nine. We've seen opening preparation, we've seen born sacrifices, so much excitement. Once again, this tournament is shaping up to be unpredictable. Take a look at the bird's eye view and have a look at those games. Kanti, where is your eye drawn to? Yeah, that definitely the one that pawn on h4. When I see yes. pawn on h4, I'm like, oh yeah, we gotta go over there. We just gotta, we see gotta go there. there, right? And it's yes, between Vey Charlie, tail end of the tournament. She's lost three games in a row. Yesterday's game was especially heartbreaking for her. And she is facing off against one of the tournament leaders, Tan Shong Yi. And Tan yesterday lost a painful game against Lei Ting 
play just played fantastic chess but on the other hand let's have a look at whether tan can be able to bounce back from defeat and h4 as you highlighted on the board which makes me very very excited because it's the, the new way of playing chess h4 h5 get a pawn on h6 go for either a checkmating attack or in-game advantage it's a, a very effective knight bc6 and now bishop to a3 what do we think about bishop a3 that was a surprising one to me same i think uh, it's more about trying to get control over the dark squares maybe she wants a scenario at some point where you get the pawn at h6 and queen f6 happens where you get the mating net there but i think uh, the bishop on d6 is just kind of it's not doing anything so i could kind of keep my bishop on c1 but i guess he just really wanted to get rid of that bishop um so we also have to look and see if there was an alternative in fact that like what would that, that look like or what would that be and that's a great question because the knight has no good squares besides a3 and d2 but what am i doing on d2 ricky one maybe like you just need a plan and i think she was looking for a plan bishop a3 though makes sense yeah bishop bishop a3 I was kind of curious, like, why she didn't go all in. Like, why not I go H, H5? H5 but and uh, you can see the evaluation, but aha, uh -huh, because of 94. Oh, 94. Oh, that's the idea. Wow. So that's why she can't go all in, because of this discovered attack against this bishop. But then after bishop to A3, aha, uh -huh, so. Yeah, this doesn't work anymore. No, it doesn't doesn't work anymore because if you go bishop takes a3, not only have you weakened the dark squares, as Kanti was pointing out, Queen Nakanao potentially come to f6, but there is no tactics against d4. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe h4 isn't isn't with the intention of going gung ho on the king side, but you know, just to take that space. And the real thing is actually to put pressure against d5. Although it does look pretty scary, right? Knight h7, h5 at the right moment. So Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. correct. It's always there. The thing is, it's always there. So because it is, you know, you have to always stay alert and be very alert of when it can happen. H5 or sacrifices on h7. And if and if uh, Black is like, I'm not afraid of no ghost, and goes bishop to here. That's a solid move. That's a good move. Actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure something might be falling in the kingdom of the center. <laughs> take, ah, <laughs> uh, take, take queen d5. Yeah, queen d5. Okay. And knight h4? Is yeah, so, okay, so well, let's have a look. Bishop takes bishop, knight takes. Take, takes. Queen takes, and then you have bishop. to throw in this. Check first. Or bishop yes. a3. Yeah. You have to go bishop, yeah, because, and now, Knight takes, I guess. Knight and takes. Knight four. takes h4. And here you can see the evaluation bars like, nope. This is not working on any level. And the reason why. Maybe you just go. G, g6. Knight c4. Knight c Do you just play it as gentle as that? Queen. Oh, hmm. Queen e4, knight f5. That's yeah, too much. What we do if... have g3. Yeah, g3, exactly. Knight but then the knight just, just dropped back to f5. I was kind of trying to get something like, you know, like they do king g2, rook h1. It's so close. Fun down the h line. Yeah. But it, even the fancy. computer is just laughing at us and saying, uh, laughing at me and saying, nope. <laughs> Try nope, again. not exactly. Okay. Hmm. And well, yeah, and I take h four. Okay, so do I have anything better? I see four. No, I don't really like this. G three, G three, King G two. I do like, but the engine hated that. Like, no, they, they didn't like really hated all. that. But maybe, maybe it's okay. just. Arguing queen e4, you centralize the queen. Right. Well, that, there's knight not liking that one either. And knight c4, then. Then they have just bring a new piece into the attack. I don't even have a. Invite attack yet. everyone to the. Yeah, exactly. This knight is on a limb. 
The queen is perfectly safe. No problems. And after queen f4? Uh, g3 doesn't work because of queen g5. Yeah, queen... Oh my goodness. Yeah, queen, queen g5. Queen takes yeah. g5, yeah, nasty. Lovely. Boom, boom, knight f3. Ooh, knight takes e queen. Loses some material. It does lose material, so hang on. So let me, because here the, the bar was like so, okay, it just says rook f1. Yeah, that's rook f1 and then knight c4. You and just play normal chess, better game, you know, pieces look a little better, I guess. Yeah, that, that's knight his eight, argument, four. right? So, okay, so going back to the position, let's let's rewind. So that we weren't quite deep, and this was just going bishop to f5. But what other moves are there? For black. It's a great question. Bishop H two check. Is that anything? No, it's not necessary. Yeah, yeah, but I've seen this type of stuff. I've done it myself. You just do this in order to kind of put your bishop, put on, the the bishop on f four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just force the king into the corner. It's offside, and then you put your bishop on f four. There's no h h five. Oh, I think you you hit them. The move on the head. Okay, so hang on. Oh, What's she playing? A, she plays something. King G7? King what G7. is it? King G7. No, Stepping up to cover. I think this is a good good move. Stepping yeah, up to cover the F6 square is very logical. <laughs> now you look at it. Right, you're like, ah, oh, what are you doing? No, it just covers the dark square. So yeah, Exactly. Um, right, it's very I might good. go Bishop B2, Ivanka. I am just that kind of guy. Listen, hey, you just put your king there. I didn't want to trade anyway. And just says, what are you doing? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, there's knight to, knight to D4. Oh, oh that's business. stupid move. Yeah, well, dang. Anyway, yeah. Actually, it, it's seven. really annoying, though. Yeah. Okay, then if you go H5. Eva hey, Bar said, uh, yes. Uh, he, uh, they one day, do it. Ooh, one day six. there will come some things like H6 <laughs> in your. <laughs> oh, this is a six. nasty sequence too. I see this, uh, Yvanka. Let's show. Um, let's just do yeah. like A5. I just want to show this. Just cool make it a big sequence. Yeah, like, or even like Bishop to D2 or something. Yeah, like that. no, oh, even... no, that one that one messes it up because we need the Bishop D7. There. Does it mess nope. up? No, it doesn't. Oh, oh wow! Because you can go H6. Better here, apparently. You get H6. Okay, king takes. And then you go bishop takes. Oh, I was going queen f6. Oh, you just take taking queen f7. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you, did you have something more flashy? Uh, but it was with the the bishop has to be on the back rank, actually. So, I, I mean, it's kind of. Okay, 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 okay. Like maybe it has to be okay, like. Okay, so, so I just play like a5. Right. And, and then, then h6, king takes. And then knight f7, king g7, knight d6. Rook f3, and then knight e8. And then knight takes, and then you take the other. Place. This is gross. This is this nasty. is this is this is nice. This is nice. Love it, man. H <laughs> five gotta tough. be played with this type of tactics involved. Like H five is just the only move you play here. Yeah, yeah. H five, and also you got ideas of going H six. So how to handle that one? So I guess so after H five. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So no, 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 no. This is me. King G seven. King g7, h5, I'll get the. And maybe you just get bishop f. Let's go bishop f5, right? Is there a g4? Hold on. Do we just go all in and just say forget about life? No, nah, that's too much. Maybe we take yeah, the g4. Then... But the, then we got that same funny business again, right? Take on d5. Oh, d5, yeah. d5 straight shattered. Yes, you can't go yeah. bishop f5. So what about your other move, bishop d7? No, Bishop D7 was losing. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, dang. Shoot, do I have a move? Like, what move do I play instead of H5? I mean, I don't have a move. So, H, okay, H6. Like, it, the yeah, Bishop takes now Bishop. We're just, now we're trying everything. And so okay. Maybe instead King of Bishop D7. Seven, well, this H6. Is H6. 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 Like, I mean, at this point, I just need to kick the Knight away because that's my troubles. Yeah, H6. Okay. And it seems like it's okay. Okay. It's okay. So, but dang. And I guess it is because my stupid knight has to go away. What? Wow. No, 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 never, never, never go back. 
<laughs> okay. You Never go back. Like, can knife. we, can we it okay. snack it? Oh, I was Maybe. hoping you help me. <laughs> <laughs> I still have not found it, and that is a okay. problem. <laughs> okay, so uh, I was thinking this. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, I okay. I know it looks the most ridiculous well. move ever, what but this, the whole point was to come here. Face. And then just come in with the queen to have sex. Ah, nifty. I have knight of five. No, I don't. Oh, shoot. That is nifty. Maybe I go root g8 and hope to survive. Because I have king okay, okay, can you can you use this idea in a better way? So I was thinking like this. Knight to e no, no. What about bishop? Okay, bishop c1? I mean, dang. Yeah, no. I think, yeah, none of these work. None of these work. So I guess we just have to literally move the knight. Okay. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's very disappointing. Oh, no. yeah, Is there so... nothing? No no good sacrifice. I can't find anything. The... Knight... What about no, knight you, you have to go knight h3. What about knight h7? Let's throw it there and see what happens if the engine moves. Knight h7 no, they, might be something. Yeah, yeah, because that looks dangerous as well. The king takes. It does. I mean, look how dangerous that looks, right? Pawn takes yeah, pawn. Yeah, right. King you king take. Or even queen, queen of six. Queen of six. Right? You know, I have no threat though. This looks good. Hmm. No. Yeah. All right, knight x three. It's a bummer. Yeah, but yeah, you have to go knight h three. But the game continues, right? King's You've weak. softened up the king side, yeah. but still, this bishop on c two is making me uncomfortable because of this constant tra trick of uh, knight takes d four. But yeah, hmm. okay, let's uh, go back to the game position. There's not been any moves from Vaishali after king to g seven, but this is very very dangerous. And here, looking at what the engine is suggesting. The engine is saying, don't go all in like we were trying to do with h5. It's tempting, but ultimately you do get beaten back by h6. But it just says go rookie one. Rookie one, you can go bishop takes bishop first in order just to get the queen away from the c-line. And then you can go on with your plan of just developing your pieces. It's a very balanced game, but the pressure is ta on Tan Zhong Yi. Can she defend in the right manner? And remember, in this type of position, you make a mistake and Ricky won. Veshali, very classy player. She understands exactly what she needs to do. That's it. Put the work on the file there. Of course, all you do is just develop your pieces. Good things happen when you develop pieces. Rook got to e1 on f1. It just wasn't doing much. Obviously, it canceled the king, but now the rook on e1 is an active rook. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, go back to the bird's eye view. Once again, we will keep a close eye on all the games that are in progression. And can I put you on the spot, Kanti, and ask you, where do you want to go? Oh, we definitely got to go back to late King's A and Salmonova's game. Um, as, yeah, see, so you just move, he takes these. There's oh. a pawn on D6. You got to be kidding okay. me. How did this happen? We, we have to backtrack a little bit. So we left it. With this position, knight c5, we were looking at g5. That looked really good for white, but she goes e5. Yes, yeah, she goes Knight to e6. Queen, Queen d3. to d3. And now knight to d7. Mm, and that was not the move, apparently. But it makes sense. I mean, well, why, why not? Okay, so e takes d6. Knight c5. Knight c5. And queen e2. Queen e2, Wait. and... And now it's on uh, Salmanova's move. So, yeah, after captures, yeah, you just... once The one thing you pointed out, too, as well, is, yo, where are you putting your king? You are not going kingside to me. If you get kingside, it's maiden 10, like, immediately, maiden 10 or less. But if you do castle queenside, it's going to take a while. You got to move the bishop. So, so that means you may have to take what queen takes. Queen takes d6. We don't have any tempi, so let's see how fast you can castle. I go bishop d2, bishop d7, castles, castles. I have bishop h6. Um, but maybe you go yeah. queen seven first, then queen, queen seven, seven run away. Yeah, I guess black is able. Black is somehow getting wait, wait, 95. Wait, wait. Yeah, 90, oh, 95. Beautiful. 95. Beautiful. So no bishop d6, bishop. f4. Oh, but it is there's also you got knight bishop as well. Like oh, you do. Yeah, I mean, you do. What else, what else do you have? 
Mm, F4. Knight C4. F4. I like F4, F4, but Bishop, bishop F4. should be five. What about Bishop F4? Ooh, that's some spice. No, 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 no yeah, takes Bishop. It. <laughs> right, but it was it just doesn't work with the queen. Uh, the queen lining up like it could have worked, but no, it doesn't. Almost, yeah. All right, that's some spice there for sure. But okay, we. Knight C4. Okay, Knight C4 stops him again from casting. So maybe we go Knight C4. Yeah, Knight C4. And then there's Bishop F4, though. Hmm. This is a wild game. Wow. Uh, yeah. Somehow getting away. You are getting away. Yeah. Wow. Almost. Almost. I don't know. I feel like we're, there's something so here. Close. It's right. so, so close. If F4, you just go and Bishop takes Knight, right? Okay. Exactly. So we actually have some moves. So we could be seeing something like this. Queen E2, Bishop takes D6. Bishop D6. Okay. Bishop E3. Bishop E3. Oh, castle queen side. And this is why down queen the D line. Exactly right. Well, that's why I chose queen takes because queen takes gives white. You have to take more time to castle. And now black. I mean, hey, listen. Okay, you got the bishop out, but I'm about to castle queen side. Get the rook to the file. I'm great as white here. I'm mm -hmm. awesome. I feel awesome. Yeah. And okay, I don't know how I don't know how to handle this. Say if I curl up in a little ball. Yeah, queen c7 maybe just get out the way because it's just coming. get out of my yeah. own way yeah and then you go castle, castle queen queen side. Side. yep and then maybe there might be bishop d7 because you're trying to get castle too yeah and here it was their kill shot uh, i don't see it yeah. those are so annoying is there a b4 yeah i was thinking that too there might be some b4 but that might be a, oh the evaluation bar did not move did not move it did not move uh now i don't know oh a3 just chill and if you castle i might take on a7 believe it or not bishop takes a7 boom that's still oh, a go. queen takes bishop yes, right. queen takes knight. Queen takes knight. if you go b6 yeah. and if you go b5 within well, the bishop gets out i just stole a pawn here a little nifty and knight a4 yeah, is yeah. Now. yeah. and uh, if you go like this queen takes knight <laughs> oh my you goodness. can call on me for the cheap tricks. <laughs> Please take by anyway. I've oh, left man. my card. There you go, Bishop. Dang, Bishop. that's gonna hurt. And then, and then take, yeah. takes, take on D six, take everything. Just take yeah, on. yeah. This is just uh, disastrous. Collecting pawns for dinner. So yikes! This is a great position. So let's. Uh, Okay, so this was actually really convincing. We we bishop takes d6 and we were at bishop e3. That's been played by Le Tingje and now queen c7. This is what we were looking at. Castle, Castle queenside. queenside, bishop d7, and we punted before. <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> that way, definitely, because that's a punt. It comes out of nowhere, like literally. <laughs> What the heck is that? B four exactly, and <laughs> and we got away with it because the knight went back to a six. There's no other square, and then we were like, yeah, we don't care that the king, uh, you know, the king is voluntarily being exposed. Exactly, I care about none of that. Yeah, and yeah. castle queen side that was just simply bishop takes a seven, so you can't do that. And castling king side, mate, oh, uh, mate ten immediately, immediately mate, mate and ten, ten right, mate. And this looks like it's not it's like force made in 10 gotta be g5 g5 right right g5 to start it and if you go h5 maybe i go knight d4 yeah knight d4 knight f5 they didn't like that, that looks good. good the queen coming to h5 i like it oh love it and i and now uh, look 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 no only now is the evaluation bar oh yeah up with you. like, oh wait you're right sorry candy i forgot you were a jedi okay thank you, you. b4 yeah, that'd be sorry, formal. sorry. I, I, I'm just in awe of this move. Be B4, yeah. A3, lock the knight out of the game. But I mean, this is yeah. something that we could see. But how yeah. how reasonable is it to go B4? Well, after the well, one thing I learned, this actually I got this from the book Art of Attack. Never forgot it. And I got this book. I was already a master when I read it. But Art of Attack, this was like back in 2015. Mm -hmm. 2014 when I won $20,000 at the Millionaire Chess Open, first one. And I remember I read two, three books, or well, four of them. Two of them was opening books. Oh, chess openings for white and black explained. So 10% really just working on that. But then Forcing Chess Moves was one, which was good. Charles Hurtan, I read that book like five times. And then it was uh, Art of Attack 
which was nice. And it was Attack on the Uncastled King. That was my favorite chapter. That one and also the Castle King, too, where you have the double bishop sacrifice. But this one was really nice because it was basically saying, which I love Tao, because Tao was like one of the greatest ever. My grandfather, Tao, was one of the greatest on this attacking type stuff. But he was like, you know, sack first thing later, but also keep the king in the center almost at all costs. Right. So or at least try to stop them, uh, get an initiative as fast as you can if they're going to castle. So this is why B4 and A3 and all these moves make sense quickly, because I'm just trying to do everything I can do before you castle. So I'm trying to keep yeah. up the pace very fast before you get castled and, or, and I lose everything. And it's just yeah, fast. it's a beautiful move. And when you kind of like scratch under the surface, you realize that these pawns on B4 and A3 just can't be challenged. C5 gives up the D5 square. And this becomes really, really shaky. Also, B5, every move will have a consequence. And you can't castle. I, I just love B4. Now, let's go to the game position because I no, we haven't seen any moves. Yeah, she knows coming. Castle Queenside yeah. is coming. Castle Queenside is coming. B4. Like, you know, if B4 happens, then I think we should be there ready to do the sound effects. Yeah, <laughs> Boom. Boom. Exactly. I got, I got the air horn. I have all these yeah. buttons on my stream deck over here that I play on my stream every day, but... Yeah, we can't. Those fortunately don't work here on this channel here, guys, because I would be pushing air horns and sirens because uh, that's how it's kind of how you keep it exciting. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know that you could do that. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Like if you introduce yeah. that over the board, right? You play what? <laughs> you a... and then... Whoa, that's yeah. great. That, that would be good. You know, once I played a coffee house chess and the whole point of coffee oh, house chess is that you're allowed to... Um, Talk trash and stuff. Yeah, you're allowed. To, you're allowed to talk trash. You're yeah, allowed to that. talk to. You suggest moves to your opponent. Uh, it was really funny because I've always criticized chess as being a little bit too introverted. I was like, you know, we've got to find ways to make it more social. And yeah. yet, when I played coffee house chess, I was like, I want silence. <laughs> <laughs> I want silence. I don't want concentrate. None of that. I, I could not handle it when people were talking to me, suggesting moves like wow. trash talking me. And, you know, at first I was like, yeah, 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 come, yeah, come and have a go. You think you're hard enough? And then, right. then I was like, no, no, give me silence, please. Like, I need the clock running. Ah, uh, trying to focus. No, what's funny is I grew up in chess uh, in Detroit, Michigan, where the chess club was like this. Our chess club was actually uh, guys playing speed speed chess all day and all night, and also playing old music, old head, OG music that was just like you know at the cookouts and having a, a good time and singing and playing chess for hours and blitz and talking trash and all kind of stuff. So it was fun. I grew up in that element, so. It's easy yeah. to, to do it to turn it on and off but when i'm locked in i don't talk any trash i'm just locked in like when you when you need yeah. to lock in or i can't talk yeah, yeah. it's fun well, bishop the way, e7 on the board bishop e3 bishop oh, oh. e7 and she's yep. taking the time out to stop white from castling queenside yeah, so. because as we saw it was dangerous stuff so yeah. good practical decision there mm -hmm. from sally mova that but was really strong though. really strong no, I, I mean, I'm not even considering Bishop D2. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's anything very... to get the king castled. I, I you know, I'm it. not going to laugh at that. It. This is a great move. Well, you do what I do it too. Ooh, okay. Bishop, yeah. D7, Bishop D7, Bishop D2, Bishop D7. Because if you have to go rook to D1, I mean, yeah, rook to D1 mm. looks. But, you yeah, know, you, you're you playing with your king in the center. And that's yeah. going to give black some hope as well. So I like Bishop to D2. I, I like that move a lot. Let's back it up. You go, I go. Back it up. Castle, castle queen side, and onwards. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now have, uh, we can actually probably still get that same line by transposition that we looked at before mm -hmm. with uh, moves bishop d7 from black here, and then castle queen side, and then queen c7, knight e5, and bishop d6. And then we reach that same position we looked at before. So now. I can go f4 or like knight c4 is what I was looking at too, but this could very well happen. F4. F4 apparently is the way forward. Yeah, but okay, so what happens on bishop e5? Take, take castle queen side, I guess we castle just Castle queen side, right? and apparently here you just say bishop pair. Yeah. It's, it's so bad. funny, you yeah. know, because we've, we probably would be very content with that if it hadn't been for the fact that we feel like this, what should be getting something more. Yeah, 100%. Especially from the opening choice from Black was was slightly passive as Philidor kind of is yeah. depends on which Philidor you play but 
it was uh you know you you're looking to crush your opponent or try to get something better than just hey i'm better i have two bishops here versus you know you having a solid position so it's, that's how you do it even scandinavians too as well which are played over the board as well sometimes occasional so um you want to be trying to punish it if you can but if you can't and you get something for it and this looks like this is one of the best things that white could get yeah. not bad Push, i really been pushing for two results i agree the initiative is definitely in Leighton J's hands and Salim over every move all counts. So let's go back to the bird's eye view and have a look at what's happening in the other games. And maybe we should, I mean, I'm also drawn to the game between uh, Muzicic and Gareshkina, but I do is feel that checked? hold on. We need the, to go over the bishop there. is out there on H7. How does she but, we need to go over there? Okay, oh, we need to go there. Uh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> there, I've got pulled the wrong one up. Okay, there it is. It's trapped. Okay, so hang on. Let me just get up the current game continuation and let's just go to the end because okay. this is the position that we have. And so the the first question is, isn't the rook just coming to e7? I was thinking that too. I guess it's probably equal because black is white gets like seven pawns it's not even seven pawns on the board rook e7 rook h8 and then maybe i do yeah because i was thinking that but maybe i do bishop g6 or something and then king takes and then rook takes b7 and then like i get all these pawns like you have two wow that was not good maybe uh, F4. wait 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 we're gonna throw an f5 first oh yeah f5 oh you get the piece back oh my goodness this yeah 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 i want to I, I don't want to give up a knight Whoa. i'm not that kind of player <laughs> yeah this is not that kind of party okay let me see <laughs> this is uh this is wicked man but okay well, what happens if you just take 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 early day in the office well, take, 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 actually take. well i don't know is, is this is this really an easy draw oh okay i think if i'm able to get c2 then yes if i can get a2 and c2 yeah, and yeah. you can have the c pawn and you got that one extra h pawn rook pawn okay so, yeah so maybe just dive down right rook h3. rook h3 yeah rook h3 you take a7 i go rook c3 you go rook c6 or rook c7 i take c c c uh two you take c6 i take a2 yeah take, and we, take, say, and we get it. correct and draw. yeah and that's it yeah so king g7 it has to get rook e7 i don't see anything else for it yeah yeah, yeah. This is kind of you have thing. to get rook e7 rook h8 beautiful idea of just going bishop g6 as found by Kanti and then f5 very nice and very if nice. the rook comes here i guess we go f5 no oh. no no Maybe. no because you just take the bishop so oh shoot i didn't consider this actually at all um hmm. okay how do you get out of wow. this one <laughs> exactly uh yeah that is a great question maybe i guess you I'm don't maybe up. Hmm? I'm giving the bishop up. Shoot, rook takes. I got to take two pawns, don't I? Or is there h four or three pawns? Yeah, it takes. But maybe I get a third. Wow, that's not it. No, that's not it. This is hard. This is hard. Apparently, it's equal if you find what move h four. Let's try. Nope. That is not it. Yeah, this one's gonna be difficult. Okay, may maybe, maybe, maybe I get it. Maybe you just come up with your king. You, you got to focus on the big fish in life. Wow. The engine is telling us. <laughs> you got to get your king on G3. Life advice here, guys. Got to focus on the big fish in life, guys. You know what I'm saying? Got to focus on the big fish in life, guys. Yeah, this is, uh, this is what you get when, uh, when I <laughs> can't see. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Focus on the big fish, chat. Always focus on the big fish. I had to pour myself a cup of tea. Ah, of course. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Cheers, Cheers yeah. Cheers. Yeah, making King G2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, King G2 is uh, actually much more difficult. This is a weird end game, for sure. Yeah, totally. King F5, King F3. And if the knight comes, I mean, who's who's better here, actually? No, yeah, definitely. I'm well, this okay, is right. scary right. stuff, right? Oh, okay, no, well, we, we have we have a move, rookie seven, and the players are like just knocking out moves. Move thirty, rookie seven. 
Yeah, Ricky's So let's run through that line again. Rook to f8, protecting the knight. Yeah, and this is bishop takes g6. Critical. King takes. King takes. You step up with the king. And now, what to do? Okay, so. So say you do absolutely nothing. Say you just. You no, know, because if you move the rook, f5 Come is back. coming. Come back in the game. But maybe, maybe this is what you have to do. Maybe you just go la 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 take la la. It was part everything. of the plan after all, and I'm going to come rook to d2. And check, check and take a few pawns, yeah. Yeah, and then we trade, 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 and all draw. Because if you try to hang on to your knight, how, how to hang on to this knight? Knight so d6. So say you go, eh? Knight, you're knight uh, to d6. Oh, rook d6. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. But it probably is still a draw, right? Because... <laughs> Same idea, king of five, take, 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 take. Yeah, take, take everything, and... <laughs> yeah. But, um... If you, if you try to hang on with this, if you go knight to e d8, I'm guessing you just step up with the king. And this knight is caged. I like king g4 too, yeah. King g4 is coming. You're going to have some trouble. By the way, we have king, uh, sorry, rook f8 on the board. Rook f8. Okay, rook f8. And, well, Anna needs to find bishop takes g6. I'm just going to check whether this is the only move it appears to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bishop takes g6 is the only move for equality only move for equality that's yeah tough, man. yeah that's a good spot because you know you're but it is an easy spot but then after bishop king takes again i'm checking and rook e6 is a possibility but rook takes b7 which is what we were looking at is a serious mistake because after knight to d6 this pawn on f4 will be hanging and then, yeah, it's just difficult to see because, like, if white could get both here, those pawns, you go like, here, you know, oh, and man. you hold on to the c5 pawn, and, and one hurt. pawn is enough. That is gonna hurt, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Anna, she's used very little time on the clock, so I'm expecting so her to time. just play bishop takes g6. So much time on the clock. Mm. Great time management from uh, yeah. Anna. Whereas, look at the clock time for Garash Garashkina. She's got a uh, just over twenty three minutes. Yeah, that she definitely out prepped her, but also she reached a position where it's really Goryachkina who's actually playing for two results because it's really hard for her to lose this, and she is on the good side of the draw here. Especially being about to take a piece from Anna here, who needs to be extremely accurate with the time she has now. She needs to find Bishop G6, followed by King G2. Rook E6 actually is a harder move, I think, because as a human, you just, I mean, the Rook is not even active anymore on E6. But after Bishop G6, King G2, possible move to find, but it's very tempting to take on B7. So we have to that see would be a mistake. Therein lies the suspense, right? Right. Has to play very it? accurately. She has to understand. And I'm pretty sure she has because she's played so quickly. This feels like it's part of her preparation. And now she's just trying to recall everything. But I think we should leave this game for a while and head to the bird's eye view and have a look at what's happening in the other games. Oh. And Okay, so Lei, Lei Tinjie, she did not play bishop to d2, which was something that we were considering. But uh, she's played another move, and now the queen has come out to d6. So still fireworks on the board in that game. But shall we revisit the game between uh, Humpy against uh, Katerina Lagno? Because oh. remember, Katerina Lagno, she is just half a point behind the leaders. So if she manages to win... Then she will be up there fighting for first place. And remember, this is a tournament where only the winner counts and they get the ultimate prize of challenging Ju Wen Jun, Women's World Champion, for a match. Very, very strong play here. We had some weird center stuff going on, a lot of tension. Now a knight on B4, hitting the queen, Humpy's move. Where do we go? Queen B1. 
Queen to be one. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So did uh, Humpy win back her pawn? Yes, she won back the pawn. 3-6, 3-6. Got the pawn back and the bishop here. Mm -hmm. It is looking good for Humpy. Very good stuff. Queen so okay, what happens if well the c5 pawn is up for grabs, but the knight is hanging on b4, so correct <laughs> priorities. <laughs> so let's <laughs> nice maybe a5 or nice c6. Okay, okay so a5. Maybe... I like I like a5. A5 cement that knight on b4. Hmm. Now what do I do? I mean I don't have a. I wanted to go bishop b2. Okay, let's go there. But I mean, but it just the pawn. Like she just takes knight takes c five, and I was like, I don't even know what to do next. Uh, I, I keep forgetting about this pawn on c five because I was like looking at bishop to g four. But yeah, you're right. Let's grab that pawn. So maybe I go queen b two and then queen d four. My idea was okay. really to just stay out of the way of my bishop. So I instead of queen to b one, but queen to b two. Correct, queen b two. Hit the knight, then when knight move or a5, then I have queen d4. I like bishop b2. Oh, queen Could... b4, knight c2. Yikes. Yeah, you got to be careful here. Could you do this? But I, I, don't, I don't feel that this is the most aggressive try from white, by the way. Yeah. This is, this is just white simply pulling the handbrake on. On everything. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe yeah. I'm being a bit too simplistic because if the knight comes here, we do have okay. we do have play against d5. A lot of play. Rook d1, queen d4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The pawn is falling. Close, close. Exactly. So maybe. Yeah, it's just if White's just doing this type of stuff, this feels. Mm, okay, bishop g4, maybe 95, stuff like that. Yeah, 95, just jumping in. Mm -hmm. 95, and actually, believe it or not, I'm going to go bishop e1. Because I am a fan of preserving the bishops, but okay, nice e5 again. So I, I can take I can take this one first. Oh, wow. No, you <laughs> I can get there before you. you. Thank you for okay. revealing your plan. Oh. So, uh, I, I will, oh. Then I will step the bishop back and... Dang. My plans. Probably equal, right? Yeah, rook d1, rook c1, knight f3, knight d4. That's the plan. Yeah. Centralize the rooks, knight on d4. Yeah. But this pawn is also weak. Very even game. So, critical moment here for Humpy. Her queen is attacked. Does she? What about happens if she steps up to b3? That's a good question. I guess one I didn't consider. Oh, yeah, maybe we go this route. For some reason, I just didn't see queen b3. Yeah, a5, so now it all works for me. This is what I wanted. And then bishop b2. Oh, but then there's knight e6. There's always a move, bro. <laughs> oh, you want to go here? Oh, no, 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 no. But oh, you can go this? No. The oh, queen is hanging. The queen is hanging. Queen! My queen! Oh, no, my queen! <laughs> queen b3, though. But then knight e6, like, which is annoying. Yeah, queen here, knight e6. Okay, but wait one second. The got? theme for today has been sack material and then just play okay you're right so let's just do that let's just do that let's, let's not play. panic I I down the pawn exactly okay. all right so we have an what idea happens? of what we got what happens if we just go here it just threatens uh knight takes e6 so i might have to be i might have to play f6 if you have six then Knight f five? No, maybe, 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 maybe. Let me just build. Ooh. Invite everyone to the party. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Black has a pawn, but you don't feel that at all. You don't feel that pawn deficit at all. No, because it's, it's this one, the b seven pawn, and that's really a bit worthless. It's backwards, so it doesn't matter. So, mm. yeah. Okay, let me just check with the engine. So knight to b four, because we were looking at queen to b three. Queen to b1. Your instincts are spot on, by the way. Queen to b1. Wow. So Best what's move. the plan, though? After a5? After a5. I, so a5, a5 we yeah. were. And then it just says, and this is where we both had good instincts. Bishop a3. Uh, Ta-da. And that's it. And that's it. That's, wow. This is it. 
as take, 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 take. Simple. And we play against the ISO pawn. We yep. play against the IQP on d5. And uh, white has a small advantage here. Yeah, natural. Yeah. Okay. Well, Humpy, queen to b1. And it's interesting, actually, why queen to b1. And So queen to b2 is because you, you're not getting your bishop to a3. Exactly. And queen to b3 is still okay. But when bishop a3 happens, knight takes c5. And that's the mm. problem. So therefore, yeah, yeah. queen to b1. Yeah. Get your queen out of dodge. And then you destabilize this knight on b4. And looking like if she if Humpy does that, she will have a small advantage. So shall we go back to the bird's eye view? Oh, because... wait, hold on. Wait, what happened? There's a what crazy happened? situation happened at uh, <gasps> Anna's game. She took the pawns, but she uh... didn't do six, but it's still equal, which is strange. Like, what happened? Well, yeah, we are definitely going to be checking out that game but in the time for the time being we are going to go on a small break and when we come back we will be analyzing in full the game between Muzicic and Goreshkina because it looks like it might be an end game but it's certainly very very sharp so don't go anywhere The older of the Muzichuk sisters has reached heights in chess that few ever do. She was the fourth out of just six women in chess history to reach her FIDE rating of 2600. And in 2017, she played in the final of the World Championship. She was foiled by another of this year's candidates, Tan Zhongyi. Now, Muzichuk is trying to return there, but first she has to get through a tough candidate's field. This after having qualified with a third place finish at the World Cup. Unlike in 2017, she won her last match against Tan Zhang Yi, who made the candidates another way. Of course, there are six other opponents besides her foil Tan. A consistent performance from rounds 1 to 14 is what's required at the candidates. Muzichuk is as consistent as they come. Is it enough? This is chess. Chess is an experience. The excitement. The joy. The devastation. The undeniable drive to play again and again. Chess is an experience that's meant to be shared. What if you could experience chess in a completely new way? On a real chessboard with the power of AI at your fingertips. This is Chess Up 2. Take everything you love about playing on chess.com and experience it on a real chessboard. Play a blitz match against a random online opponent. Conquer the bot you've been stuck on for months. Or challenge a friend halfway across the world. Chess Up 2 is always ready and always connected with built-in Wi-Fi. Never miss a move with full piece recognition. And review all your games right on chess.com. Chess Up 2 is more than a chess board. It's a chess trainer. If you're new to chess, Chess Up will teach you. If you already know how to play, Chess Up will teach you how to really play. With patented AI assistance, you can balance a match between players of any skill level. 
or hone your skills against one of the built-in AI coaches. The makers of ChessUp 2 are the same team behind the original ChessUp. The best-selling smart chess board in the world. So whether you're a beginner who wants to learn and improve while you play, or a chess pro who wants to go deeper into the world of chess, experience ChessUp 2 and level up your game. and things are heating up in round nine we could potentially see a situation where get this canty the three leaders might win their games that's crazy how incredible is that and uh, talking about one of the co-leaders let's dive straight down to the game between Veishali and Tang Zhong Yi because Veishali with her last move has just blundered and Tan Zhong Yi is being merciless. So during the break, Veishali played the move after h5, she played c4. Now c4 mm -hmm. looks like it's okay because knight takes d4 is going to be met with either the bishop dropping back to b2, pinning right. this knight against the king. But unfortunately, let me just put that up on the board and there you can see bishop to b2 or the queen will come over to c3 and there will be tactics against this king. But mm -hmm. what Tan Zhong Yi has calculated is that you can just go f6. If this knight retreats, say it just goes back to h3, knight takes d4, there are no tactics, there are no pins along this long diagonal, which means that Tan Zhong Yi is just one a pawn. She's attacking the queen, she's attacking the bishop, and there is no attack for white. So wait, what do I do then? Okay, like I might I have to move the knight, right? But 96 isn't better. Maybe it is. Knight takes, 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 knight takes d4. No. Okay, so you want to go 96 check? That doesn't work. Take, take, knight No, because you take, four. take, and now you take on a3. Knight oh. takes a3. Ooh. And knight takes d4, and as oh. you mentioned, triple fork. Dang. Family fork. So let's go back and look at this position before we turn the engine on. We got to see, you know, because Eval Bar says, like, yeah, you're not crushed yet. You're not losing, losing, but you are worse. So, yeah. I mean, that boy looks Maybe like you have to throw in bishop takes bishop. Okay. And then. Just the queen takes. Knight is now... This is gross. This is disgusting. Knight I don't have anything. Pawn. This is the and best. And the queen. Wow. Look at that, though. A ball runner did not move much. What? This is crazy, Yvanka. What are you talking about? This yeah, is this insane. is the thing. This is this is a completely wild oh, position. Okay, but crushed. I don't understand why this is just not winning for... For black. Yeah. For black. I 100%. mean, because 100%. if the if the queen comes over to... She's gonna D1 move. or D3 is okay, somewhere. Well, some okay, random place. I don't know. Let's put it on D3. Knight okay. takes bishop. Queen Take, takes. takes. Bishop takes and A3. Now I'm taking that. that. Like, I mean, exactly. I'm just, I don't even want to play this out in front of all these people. Like, no, I'm not playing this <laughs> out. I'm just not going to do this. this is just, uh, <laughs> you're not doing this, right? My knight's yeah, still right. Cool, so, 
you know, this is uh so, but the engine's like there is a resource, and I am baffled. I'm just trying to figure out what it is. Queen E three. Queen to G three. No, that's not, no, that can't, that's not yeah. it. Yeah, that's not it. That is not. That's not it. This uh, is just simply queen takes queen, so you can't do that. Okay, so we have to move the queen. We do know that. So maybe it is queen e three, and then we okay, just queen e three. Then five. knight takes bishop. Well, queen e seven was the idea, but it doesn't apparently work either. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I think at the end of it, you again just go rook f seven, yeah. attacking the, the rook on a one. Okay, so what? I mean, I'm out of I'm out of ideas, and this is bad because this is. You know, a bad position to be. If I don't have the ideas, what do we play? You think? What do, what, what, is yeah, what is the silicon say? Like, what does our engine, all powerful, tell us to play? Aha! Uh -huh. Could it be no? Could it be the queen coming up to f four? Oh, that's it. That is the move. Yeah, is... and then that way, when that's the queen comes, then we can go rook takes the knight check. Rook f seven. One. And now this knight comes onto f4. Yeah, okay. And wow. then knight takes rook a2. And and you you get things three. you get things with tempo, right? So you you have yeah. some attacks. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's tough to find. That's okay. Tough to find. But is bishop takes d6 the only move to see? Because again, we do you really want to be encouraging the queen to go to a better square. So if you drop this knight back to h3, knight takes d4. Bad yeah. news. Yeah, bad, well. bad news. And as you mentioned, knight e6, bad news as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to go bishop takes d6. Only move on. Dang. Bishop t queen takes. Hey, hey. Is there a c5 first? Can we throw in pawn c5? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's try that one. Always throw in these intermediate moves. Okay, and now the queen and goes. That's so bad. Look at the invalid. Yeah, you have, to, you have sure. to drop it back to c7, I guess. That seemed that bad. And then knight, I'm knight. Oh, and then knight takes d4. Knight takes yeah. d4. And then okay. if you come to f4, I guess now I can even throw in. Queen takes c5. C5. Yikes. Yeah, knight on e3, bishop on c2, covering e7. Yikes. Yeah, it's terrible. Okay. Yeah. So Vaish Harley's position hanging on a knife edge. Let me just mm -hmm. check with the engine because I haven't been running the engine. So let's go back to the game position. Let me just check to see what alternative she has after f6. Okay. Oh. Oh. What you Bishop got? E six only move. Okay. Only move. Only move. And it's because of knight h three. And the best move is actually not knight takes d four, which is what we were looking at. The best move is simply to go take that knight, queen takes, and then you pocket that pawn on d four. Oh, I mean, okay. I, we still yeah, we just get the pawn. Like yeah, we're winning. Wow. Yeah, c two is hanging. Rookie a b three has some problems too. This is bad for Vishali, man. It's tough to see. Very tough. Very, yeah. Very tough. Yikes. Yeah, well, this goes to show, like, when you just generate an attack from nowhere, you've got to have the pieces to back it up. You can't just go H4 yeah. and not have a follow through. But fair play to Tan Zhong Yi. She found some critical ideas, like, for instance, after h5 you know this possibility of always going knight takes d4 yeah it's there and it's there. i mean her pieces are good i mean she has one move away from completing development which is the two rooks so moving the bishop off the back rank the knight on b1 and the rook on a1 are not helping in the attack that we are trying to do in fact it's just a rearrangement of the pieces and this is a whole different game i mean it feels like right the bishop on a3 has nothing to do with the king side attack that we're looking to try to do nothing at all the bishop on c2 is placed well but hitting a brick wall the knight on b1 is doing nothing so really we have you know what three pieces on that side of the board knight the knight the rook and the a3 bishop not helping with our attack yeah and how much how many moves has been played the players are on move 16 and vishali considering her 17th move but 
also low on time just under 25 minutes with 24 moves to go 25 yep. that's a lot yep. of moves. And this position is sharp she needs to find the most accurate move bishop takes bishop anything else will lose for the reasons that we mentioned the knight dropping back to h3 simple knight takes d4 the knight comes into e6 is exactly the same response you just remove the knight from e6 and then you're just taking on d4 nothing more complicated than that take this bishop then take this pawn the end that's it that's it so she has to find and there's just a stress again she has to find this knight to h3 sorry not knight to h3 she has to find bishop takes bishop queen takes and now knight coming back to h3 but but if Tan Zhong Yi is accurate and just goes bishop takes knight, she's not going to have any problems whatsoever after knight takes d4. This knight will appear on f5. This rook will also swing over to the e line. And you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's going to be all about this poor knight on b1 that's just not in the game. If it were on c3, at least it would be doing something. But yeah. it's not. Yeah, they always say, or in fact, I always tell students, I found this in my own games and just like realizing. You know, okay, and then I started teaching it, and it was, you know, I, I more aware of it is good things happen when you develop pieces, and bad things happen when you don't, right? So yeah. that's usually just a general good rule to follow in all games, even when you don't know the prep, you don't know what's going on. You need to get pieces out of the back rank. It doesn't matter what prep or what is going on. You need to get pieces off of the back rank. To if you totally, to do it, you get you get bad games. Happens. And this was actually a lesson that Veshali learned in her game against Katerina Lagno. It was exactly the same problem piece, the knight on B1. Oh, wow. She didn't get it out until the very, very end. By then, yeah. it was too late. But okay, big moment for Veshali. She needs to find the only way to remain in the game, and that is bishop takes bishop. Let's go back to the bird's eye view, and we will keep you updated on this game because... There are two other leaders in the competition, and I'm quite eager to see how their games are getting on. Now, where things are looking spicy, it's between a Salimova and Leiting J. I'm, I'm seeing that. There's a knight on F4, queen hanging. I know. What is I, going on? I know. I don't know what's happening here. And Might remember, this position is so sharp that it could easily turn around with a mistake. Yeah, we got to check that out. We got to check it out. Yeah. So, so we left it. Let me just backtrack a little bit because I'm kind of curious as to what happened. So, aha. Uh -huh. So we we were predicting in this position that uh, bishop to D, the bishop would just step back to d2 and then white would castle uh, queen's queen side, but she, instead she went g5. Pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn, and now the queen came to d6, and here is where she lating j she just wants to castle queenside but she goes for bishop to d2 preparing castles but salimova throws in knight to f4 what is happening here look at how the initiative changes that's very crazy yeah. how like out of nowhere the initiative starting to change but i think uh, we have a few ideas here we can maybe start with queen to c4 with the idea of attacking the knight on f4 um we have to figure out where this knight goes i was thinking maybe it goes knight to h3 which is a self pin though but it is a tempo and then i go tempo. rook yeah i was thinking just rook h1 oh but there might be some checks and some annoying stuff but and here we are it's a level position castles is coming next for for um white bishop e6 i assume it's the queen and then i guess get out of this yeah, exactly. Yeah, should be six is nice. Should be six, and maybe queen e two or d four, because I might have okay, to bite so the bullet and eight. take a trade. And now castles, castles, and like we have ourselves a game. Oh, I can't castle. Knight of four is winning. Ooh. Boom. Yeah, well, then, then, then letting Jay could be on the back foot if she cannot castle. So I okay, let's, let's go back. Have Let's go back again. So queen c4 looks good. Oh, we have a move. She played queen e5. Okay. Queen e5. Yeah, she played queen e5. So 
So she said, all right, I'm tired of this. Now she's just going for the trade. That's understandable. <laughs> it's like, uh, this doesn't seem like what I wanted. Let's just get the queens off. Okay. And if the queens come off, is this just going to fizzle out? I think exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen. And black this knight is probably better. Black knight g6? Yeah. No, not knight g6. Mm, knight e6. Well, hmm? or, or knight e6 or h5. Maybe even h3. Oh, no, but if you go e6, g6. Uh, I'm not that worried. But actually, only reason why I'm not is because queens are off. But it is an annoying pawn. So if I look at this, yeah, I have to go f6, f6 I guess, If you right? try to play around it, then... Then, then I guess, I guess I just mm. drop that knight back. It is a wedge pawn, though. It's a really annoying pawn. I'm not gonna lie, but I guess I'm okay a for now. Pawn. Yeah, wedge I'm pawn. learning all the expressions from you. Pawn freeze, <laughs> wedge, wedge pawn. pawn. Yeah, a wedge pawn. I learned that from Chesky at being a coach over there for a lot for like two and a half years, something like that. With the mm. program, and we was a, a, a wedge pawn and or an umbrella pawn is what we'll call it too, as well. One pawn helps defend. This white pawn actually helps defend the black king, but also it does attack, but it, it really helps us defend it as well. So kind of an umbrella, but yeah, black's fine. I mean, it's just, this may just fizzle out, as you mentioned before, because it's, it's just hard to create things now. Yeah, Time is lower, though. You never know. Like these, uh, the ladies here are getting low on time, and they do have a lot of time before time control, a lot of moves in. Yeah. And okay. Well, so we're probably going to see an end game in... The game between Leitinje and Nurgil Salomova. Maybe we go back to the bird's eye view and take a look at another game that's been in the end game for a long, long time. And we were actually promised it to dive straight into it, but we're doing it now. Muzichuk against Goryashkina. Let's put that one up. Because what is happening here? Oh, she so was able to get the pawn. So this one's gonna be peaceful. Yeah. But for a while it looked like Let's, can we just backtrack, indulge me if you please, because we thought that this kind of stuff, because we left it with the rook coming to e7 and with we were discussing bishop takes g6 and right. then the king just stepping up to g2. But Anna, after rook f8, just simply took the pawn on b7. And so here we, we saw a line that the computer was suggesting that after king takes h7, in this type of situation, it, king to g8 here, that you could just, was it park your knight on e4? Yeah, knight e6. Cover the c5 square. So, was this? No. No, nah, it was something with the king, the bishop already gone. I don't remember how we got uh, there. Maybe, maybe the knight can come to e8. Knight. Actually, cover c6. I might be able to go h a4, though. A4. Oh, wait. A four. I mean, I'm running with that pawn. Rook takes rook down. Rook c eight, and then I rook push. C8, rook c eight, and then you have to. You have to defend, and I push. You've got to defend it, but okay, I don't have to take it. I can go knight to e six. I can also go rook. Um... Okay, I, I take. Okay, rook takes. And then now, because this is on breeze, I maybe step up with the king. Ah, uh, it's a good move. Teamwork makes a dream work. Teamwork makes late. And, and these pawns are bad. I mean, they're not connected. They are. They are. I might. And I this pawn is completely push, push, defended. Push. Yeah, that's pretty good. I have to push the a pawn. I just got to keep going. I don't have a choice. Yeah, and then then Rick. A eight. And then a6 well actually it's saying the same bad move by me but okay maybe king e7 <laughs> after, ah. after announcing the catchphrase i completely forget it teamwork <laughs> makes dream work. King the, dream to seven. the rook will come to yeah. f4 rook gets behind the pawns that's what you want to do in rook and pawn endings but okay this actually didn't happen though but it was a serious yeah. chance to drop the knight back to d8 and uh, then approach with the king so what happened instead was let's go back to the game. So after rook c7, yeah, rook to a8, which is kind of understandable. But on the other hand, this pawn on c5 is going to be falling. 
there you go munchies and now the big question is is Gary Ashkina going to preserve this g6 pawn or can Anna just trade it off by force that's a great question um wow it's gonna be difficult flight still has to fight because we could probably win a and c if we can keep that pawn though no i don't think you're gonna be able to keep that pawn this would just be a draw because he i have scenarios where i could go f5 at some point and literally just as soon as you move the knight i can play f5 as soon as you move mm -hmm. it so yeah, yeah well okay maybe obviously don't attack the rook but maybe we can just coming. just bring oh, in yeah. the king yeah yeah and i like that get H4, the king to d4 h4 h5 yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah just to kind of take the lovely route up with your king to g4 get in and you always got ideas like rook c7 as well and if the rooks come off i feel like anna will not have a single problem whatsoever 100 so this game looking likely to be a draw because a rook and knight against a rook is just simply going to be a draw. So let's go back to the bird's eye view and have a look at some of those games where there's fireworks on the board. And I'm still dying to keep, or well, dying to know what's happened in the game between Veshali Tan Zhong Yi. That one actually happened with, she traded the bishops and played the c5 move. Yeah, but we looked at this. We did. And and the knight will just simply come back. We did. This, this is the one with knight d4, queen c5. Yeah. And the knight comes back. And this, we look to this, knight takes d4, queen comes up to f4. And here it goes. Thank you very much for the pawn on c5. I yeah, mean, is there, is there something like this before? No, before is going to be met by. I mean, how tricky is this? Yeah, I just take on before, right? Not a rook's then, hand. Then, then, then rook a4 was, then, was the idea. But you just get like, queen c5, right? No, you just take so, the rook. Take the rook. Take, take the <laughs> e1 rook. The other rook. <laughs> Connect the rook. On e1. Yeah, hiding, is right? it, is that, is at the bottom of my screen. Okay, we have a move. We have a move. And I don't see what happened. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, my, that's my business. Okay, so I went to h3. Knight h3. Yeah. It's my fault that that didn't happen. Yeah. Knight nice. h3. And now knight takes d4. Yeah, she played it instantly. Dang, and I see, you can see the, I don't know what face that is that we make as humans, or you just kind of like move, you know, the, the like, mm. Mm. like she, you could just see it immediately after knight takes d4, she made the face obviously there, you see in the body language, it's tough. Uh, it's a loss, it's looking. Oh, like she's queen. did she play queen e3? She did, she played queen e3, and I think this runs into the knight c2, takes, takes, she's playing it immediately. Yeah, she nice plays it, yeah. And then you just go rook f7. Yeah, you just go rook f7 afterwards. Queen takes rook e7. Play. Boom. Oh. So you want to play rook f7 and immediately or take? Probably captures. Yeah. I assume but she doesn't gonna... need to take it because if she just goes rook f7, the rooks are forked. Oh, yeah. Oh, snap. That's the one that. Yeah, that's the one. That's it. Rook F7 played. played. That might be a resignation. That might just, you could just resign. I mean, literally, you, you can just resign. resign. You're right. Charlie is just take, going take. to lose material. One of the rooks will disappear and it's game over. Wow. This was a 21 move game here. Yeah. Very, very um, strong play from Tan. And it's heart heartbreaker. Tough to see for Vishali. Oh, in uh, four out of the last four games here. Yeah, so, this is the effect from. of uh, yesterday's game. Yeah. That long game that she had against Humpy. She just hasn't psychologically recovered from that. And there we see a handshake, <laughs> Tan Zhong Yi. She manages to get that much needed comeback win. And she will move to six points out of nine. This is intense. Tan, yeah, Tan wins a incredible game. It felt like she just was in the driver's seat the whole game. Twenty something moves, something like that. Twenty one moves. Twenty one yeah. moves and some accurate defense there from Tan Zhong Yi when she needed to, and winning on the counter attack. But another heartbreaking loss for Vei Charlie. She just has to get into 
a different mode. She has to do something different. Yeah, you, I mean, what they say a lot of times is you just want to, now at this point, you just want to stop the bleeding. Like, okay, I got 04. Look, can I, I just need a draw to at least feel a little better about the rest of the tournament. It's, it's harder, easier said than done, obviously, but tough tournament. And, you know, now you can just kind of, uh, when this happens, you can just kind of play freely because you have like, all right, cool, I'm out. So whatever, I can just kind of play from here. But you yeah. don't want to be seen like an easy target now either for the other opponents. So like. As well. nope. they they are sharks you know they will be smelling yeah. blood yeah. this is that kind of tournament but it's nonetheless it's still heartbreaking to see from Vaishali. she was doing so well in the run-up to this event she completely played the most amazing grand swiss to win that one with one round to spare she became a grandmaster in just the space of a few months but in the end for the candidates it just didn't work um shall we go to um again the queens are off in the game between Letinje Le and salimova maybe we revisit the game between uh humpy and lagno let's go over there remember katarina lagno she is half point behind the leaders but now tan is on six she's on four and a half points so if Katarina manages to win. She will be in good shape to chase for first place. What do we think of this position? Mm, it's quite level. It's, this one seems like it's going to probably phase out with best plays. What they say and draw with best plays. What they say in the book. So this is what it looks like here because uh, everything's active. Everybody has pieces developed. I got one. I got stuff. You got stuff. Like. That's how it is. Now, okay, maybe I'll take white because of the one extra isolated pawn, which mm -hmm. is something to play more, may play on for, right? And makes sense. I mean, you have two isolated pawns. I have one. You have three pawn islands. I have two. So having that being said, yeah, we play on. I'm going to take white. Yeah. And also there's the presence of opposite color bishops. And there's a general saying in chess is that the person who has initiative will actually get a very, very dangerous attack. So if you have a weakness, so for instance, this bishop can drop back to b2. And it's something that I noticed you, you had your eyes fixated on that Always. seven square. And that is going to be very, very dangerous for Humpy, if she gets that in, into operation and then creating some weaknesses on the dark squares because she is completely unchallenged on that complex. In reverse, if Lagno is able to do something funny, you know, get the bishop out to h3, kind of create some kind of light square weakness, maybe put the bishop on g4, then she will also be in good shape, even though she has an isolated queen's pawn. So it's going to be very much hinging on peace activity and king safety uh, but now big issue what are you going to do about the sea line and humpy is collecting those very small advantages and remember humpy if she wins this one she will move up to four and a half points and she'll be on 50 percent she's also very incredibly positional very strong she likes these type of positions she feels like she's very comfortable or at least Seems like she's very comfortable here. She also is, I think, playing for two results. No risk really taken. I'm playing against two isolated pawns. So it gives me more targets and things to do. Where Katarina, on the other hand, also needs to play super accurate because I have the extra isolated pawn. They're also about to hit move 20, which means, like, look at the time they had. They had 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Around 20 minutes. So that's a, a time trouble in a way because you have to make time control or you're going to start making blunders in time trouble. Yeah. So big decision now for Lagno. Does she just trade rooks or does she support that rook with B6? Mm, B6, that one seems pretty nice. But the problem is, yeah, no, I'm going to take it. If you do B, C, then, okay, you have a pass C, I have a pass A. It's all about initiative there. Yeah, yeah, completely. It's all about initiative. It's all about who's able to use their bishops in the best manner. But I, I don't know, because Rick takes C1 feels quite accommodating, right? It's, okay. it's not the end of the world to concede the C line. But that's another thing that White can put in their basket. Mm, it's good and on When the you C combine that with Bishop B2. And Queen D4. 
Yeah, or queen d4 to begin with, straight up queen to d4. c7 square is within grasp. So somehow I'm drawn to just maintaining the tension and just going b6. And I like rook takes after that because I feel like I this a pawn is very dangerous. It is, but also I have to give credit to your c pawn, which could be equally dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like this line. I have to give credit <laughs> to the <laughs> to Charlie, <laughs> the sea pawn. <laughs> Charlie the sea pawn. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, it's so good. yeah. No, I mean that this one's very unbalanced. B six, and then again, how does how do both sides like secure their king? Do you... uh, I would have to go h3 at some point, but the knight on e4 is a dagger. Like, I can't go king h2 without f2 falling. So I think I actually wouldn't even trade rooks. In fact, I would actually go probably rook. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. h3 is good. Because now I was I wanted to go rook d1 last move, but instead of h3 to put some pressure can I, can on Can I just test? Is, is this an Whoa. idea? And it did, Eva Bar didn't even move. Oh, my I know. Goodness. And then queen f6. Wow. So the big you. idea is that if you oh, move the knight somewhere, let's just put the knight on d4, the queen will come and take on f2. King is forced into the corner. Knight to g3, oh. checkmate. Yikes. So we're having a king g2 after queen f6. So if you get queen to g, yeah, so maybe then this is just. Uh, perpetual, maybe? Perpetual. No, what if I try to win? King f1. Can I come back again? And king e2. King, king e2, yeah. Crafty, still yeah. equal. Wow, this is insane. What? This, this is weird. weird. Like, this is, this is weird. Place. Okay, so hang on. Okay, yeah, so hang right, on. I've got right. to be smart about this. So I, I was checking without thinking. So, so king to g two, and there's no way to kind of get a piece over. And if I go here. We, we saw that. Mm. Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe this is... Draw, like uh, draw. some type of... But no, 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 if I run the king to e2, I didn't know what black was even doing. Well, I don't know, did you know what black was doing either? <laughs> king, king, queen to g6 here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I do have queen h5. Ah, uh, okay, okay, maybe. Uh, maybe. No, but yeah. even then there's nothing because you can just come up with your king to e2. Oh, and g5, queen g4. Yeah. And then the queen will come over to g4. So it doesn't quite work, this bishop takes h3 idea. So, but it's definitely in the air. We have some moves, by the way. b6 did happen, and I love what b6. Tells there, queen d4. I, I like cool. this move. Well. Centralize nice the queen. Move. Yeah, that's very nice. Put some real pressure on black here. So if takes, we take with the rook. I mean, my pieces are just better than yours. And that is the consensus. Mm. Yeah, Do you have you a have choice? To... Exactly. I think you have to take it. I think you have to take. When Rick take. takes. And now. Yeah. Yeah. This is a. Uh, this isn't that easy. No, it's certainly not easy at all. Maybe Rook E six. Can you know. just go like this? No. 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 Oh, Rook okay. comes to C seven. At the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Not as easy, not as easy as the evaluation bar would have us believe. At all. By okay, the way, and we have some moves. I'll say many movements. Ultra fast here is because they do. They are lower on time for time Rook, control. Rook A5 played. Yeah, Rook A5. That was a nice move. I like that. Hits A4, keeps some pressure on it. Didn't have to make any trades. So, okay, I go Bishop B2. Threaten mates. Yeah. Bishop I I, I'm just debating whether to go bishop b2. Yeah, let's go bishop, or whether to go rook c6. Mm, that one is nice. Maybe I go there first. I like that. Well, I hit b6. Yeah. So you go rook c6 first. No. Maybe we'll go bishop b2. I'm going to judge it on the what the evaluation <laughs> part tells me. Bishop b2. And there you see the evaluation doesn't move. So it's like, yes, that Good is move. the way. And then you have to defend against checkmate on g7. So remember, if, say, for instance, this bishop comes out, then 
the queen takes bishop there is a beautiful battery of mate. the bishop and queen against uh, the g7 pawn so that would be checkmate so you have to defend against this i'm not gonna yeah. lie Alpha i don't f6 is uh it's risky but, but it if might you, be the best if you go back i mean hmm I don't it know just, what to do yet, but something's wrong, right? Maybe we're C6 now. Or well, maybe the knight can come into E5. I like that move. Oh, knight C6, yeah. Yeah. Oi. Oi, oi. That's good. That is good. White's just, yeah, I think white's just for choice, obviously. We have the less pawn islands, and we have peace activity, where black needs to be ultra careful. Yeah, definitely. The onus now is on black. Katerina Lagno, who's on four and a half points, she needs to play very careful, carefully to survive this. And well, we are going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere because after the break, we will find out whether Leiting J and Goryeshkina will be able to match Tan Zhong Yi's win. That's the question that we're all asking ourselves, and it will be answered at the end of the day. See you in a few minutes. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, shoot. Another mouse slip. What about this? Oh, well, holy bishops on passant. I think I'm getting carpal tunnel. If only there was a way to play online chess with a real life board. What if I told you, you can with Chess Up 2. That's right. With Chess Up 2, you can now play over the board online. Wow. Simply connect your chess.com account to our state of the art Chess Up 2 and get a game started. Every time you move, our revolutionary board will transmit the data online directly to your opponent. And as soon as they move, squares will light up, signifying which piece is going where. Well, shucks. This Hikaru guy seems pretty good. With chess up two, mm. mouse slips and sore wrists mm. are a thing of the past. My carpal tunnel is gone. Well, this sure is fun. I'm playing online against my new friend, Hikaru. Who needs a family? But I sure do miss clicking on a piece and seeing all of my available moves like they have on chess.com. Well, Danny, you're in luck. This feature is totally available on the Chess Up 2 as well. Wow, well, I'm convinced. But hey, what if I don't just want to play an opponent online? What if I want to use one of Chess.com's other great tools? I thought you'd never ask. With Chess Up 2, you can fully take advantage of the Chess.com integration by playing bots, analyzing your offline games, and even using our optional AI assistance to visualize the quality of moves with color-coded hints. Well, holy chess up, you did it. You made IRL chess cool again. You got it, Danny. And how do you know my name? Play chess today on the board of tomorrow. This April, intergenerational rivalries spill over to the chessboard. Face off against the boomers. Grapple with Gen X and the millennials. Or take on the young guns of Gen Z Gen Alpha and Gen Beta. And then the mighty Martin? Play them all on chess.com.
Welcome back. It's round nine of the women's candidates and we already have a result. We did see Vaishali lose to Tan Zhong Yi earlier on. Tan Zhong Yi just leaping to six points out of nine. She takes outright first place. But the big question is, will Lei Ting Jie and Will Gareshkina, will they catch her up? Maybe we can go to the game between Leiting J and Salimova, and this game was wild in the opening, but now it does seem to have fizzled out. It's now an end game. Level pawns. What do we think? Any yeah, chance just, for Leiting J? Uh, well, it is a uh, lace move now, and my first uh, instinct is ninety four. So I'm going ninety four to see. You know what happens next because that's a very strong move i'm going knight d6 so like uh, what do you do you castle or i mean you could definitely go wrong here from black standpoint if, yeah, if i really just strong. try to live with my king in the center i can see the you've already the moved i was not entirely happy with that decision that i made but mm -hmm. maybe i go that's a great question i actually don't know do i go knight d4 anyway yeah you go, you go knight d4 Mm -hmm. It's not so easy, right? Yeah, I will take on e6 and just try to play this out. Takes bishop c4, rook eight, rook uh, g e1. Yeah, okay. So this pawn on g5 is quite the annoying piece. Absolutely. Mm. And if you jump in with a knight to e5, um, have to just accept. That's a great question. Maybe I go knight c5. And you keep putting the pressure on the position. 100%. Put pressure Okay, we on. have some moves. Hold on. What has she gone for? I, I agree with you. Knight to e4 looked very, very natural. But knight to d4 instead. Same idea, though. So you're probably going to do the other one next to Knight d4. Yeah, to d4. knight to e4, next move. But her big goal is just to harass this bishop on e6. Your wife's definitely for choice. Obviously, Engine can just spot everything, but it's more comfortable to play white. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and if uh, Black Castles says I am Oh, man. Yeah, right? That's probably what the Engine says, too. Like, so yeah. what? A castle. Dang, that's a good move. I guess I take the bishops, because like, I gotta get something for the troubles. And then bishop c4, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of equal. I mean, it's just equal. Yeah, it is equal, right? But uh, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do about bishop takes e6 happening unless you're going to move the rook. Yeah. I don't know how equal it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, From a practical standpoint. Knight can come to e4. It can come stick itself on d6. Yeah. Target f7. And you've got a little bit of a pawn-free situation here with his yeah. pawn holding back. These two. Two pawns. Hmm? Very nice, yeah. very nice. Pawn freeze, very nice. Yeah, pawn freeze. Very nice. And yeah, this looks very good, practically. Up. Very practical for white. Now, not so easy. Not easy yeah. at all. So after bishop c4, maybe the rook can come to this, get active. h4 hits the bishop. Bishop has to move. Maybe we go, uh, that's a good, yeah, yeah, activity is the way. Yeah, you have to take, I think, because B4 is hanging out. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, wait, okay, go back. Let's actually, um, I was just calculating some. Let's go back to B3, Bishop B3. Uh, yeah, okay. And then you want to go after this, you want to go G6. I know you. That's exactly. Yeah, you know me very much. <laughs> okay, well, that's me all day. Huh? Yeah, yeah and, and it's, a, it's a good and... move. It's a good one. You know, I'm I don't on have them. an answer on to them. that one. I am on, on black right now. Okay. Yeah, very nice. But we... Do we have a move? No, no move. Knight to d4. So knight to d4 played by Lei. Yeah. With a simple idea of knight takes bishop. And so if you go... If, okay, if you move your rook over to h4 immediately, mm. this is just too much. Probably the same type of sequence. Knight takes first. The same type. Yeah, maybe you can even go g6. Exactly. Can you go G6? Ooh, G6 first. G6. Ooh. 
spice inside a spice on it uh yeah yeah because the big yeah, idea yeah. is that after f6 how does the eva board not take, move you have you to be kidding me take. that has to be just gross wow apparently that yeah. work is so active because it stops all the entry squares because you know obviously you want to put put pressure on bit with bishop c4 okay but, wow that's crazy and oh, we got to move. We move. Yeah, we saw <laughs> castles. Okay, so this yeah, is yeah. what we were looking at, and we were looking at knight takes bishop, right? Absolutely. Pawn takes. So not pawn. Maybe pawn takes is the best mm. because oh, the knight wow. is stepping back. This one was uncomfortable. Yeah, you're right. And if, pawn if, takes if the rook the came to e8, or oh. the other rook came 94. to e8, the knight was going to come to e e4. Right. Oh, but then maybe the knight comes to e5 and it's mm. equals. Unbelievable. How to, that's crazy how that's equal because I can't get knight e6 to work. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so what was that? That was rook h8. Okay. So maybe it's important to go rook h8. Yep. Keep this rook on d8 in order to challenge mm -hmm. its counterpart. Okay. Yeah. And what about moves such as b5 no a a4 g6 once again yeah g6 yeah g6 g6 no no open it up open up shop if not i mean that pawn is weak though but if you ever move the knight i could go bishop f7 i guess keep it strong mm -hmm. yeah i mean you could try you could try like there's a ways to try here for white which is good because even in that game with um what was that the humpy game yesterday yeah. which is crazy how, um, you know, uh, Vishali was holding, she was holding it. And then it was just, she, it just wasn't there. Humpy was just pushing and playing. And then she, she found a way through. And this is, this yes. could definitely happen in this game as well. Just one slip from black could really have, give white some chances, especially with the imbalance of Bishop versus Knight. Totally. I mean, we all, we already saw that after castles and after moves like Knight takes E6, it, you have to be precise. It has to be this rook that comes over to the center this rook cannot shift away from its challenge against its counterpart on d1 so this one looking like Leighton j will be pressing hard maybe we go back to the bird's eye view and yeah. check up on our other tournament leader which is alexandra goryashkina so when we left it was looking pretty level and we hatched up this idea that the white king should move over to g4 and as if by magic our wish has been obeyed <laughs> king, the g4. king on g4 okay. and now white is just going to go h4 h5 yes and this should be a draw 100 percent. this is just going to be a draw uh h4 h5 is going to happen and the pawn on c3 is going to fall and this is going to be a, a okay. draw so, so I'm going to put you to the test. So let's let's take. Okay. Oh. Well, rook takes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to rook take it. Like whatever. Okay. Rook so you're going to go rook takes rook. Yeah, yeah. It's not me. And then. And then. Isn't this F5. just a draw? And that's it. And then we shake hands immediately. F five. Uh huh. So rook oh, it takes. Oh, looks like you captured it too with the rook. Rook takes c three. So rook takes c three. Yeah. On the board. On the board. And yeah, she's just going to take and play at five, like playing on. I mean, okay, you can, like we saw yesterday with the King Rick versus King Knight last game, which you got to play. Okay, all right, play it out. So my coach, no, no, no. everyone, don't yell you at don't me play anymore. this one out. But the players <laughs> are on. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. They 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 played so quickly that they're already on move forty one. So whilst everyone else right. is on move twenty, these ones ah, forty one, on they can just offer a draw. King G four, Rook takes C three, and. Yeah, did you see that look that Gary Ashkina gave? To yeah, the she's like, Ugh. Oh, she, looked, no. she was like, Yeah, this this is not this is good. Draw, guys. This is gross. Just this a draw. draw. And disappointment. But, right? first because... but you know, okay, you know what's funny though? She always has this face. <laughs> so like she always has the same like she looks like, oh, you don't want to play her, bro. She gonna work you on the board. She always has that face. All the way up until she was hitting 2600 you could all her pictures was like oh yeah she was mean looking like uh uh what's the other one abimanyu mr mishra if you look at some of his older photos when he was a, you know a much younger kid he would look very angry you're like yo this kid why is he mad you know <laughs> 
it would look like that all the time. So I think it's kind of funny though, but it's good. Yeah. It's also intimidating, you know. You're like, oh man, you strong and you you don't look happy, like a Gary, you know, in a way. Scary. Yep. Yeah, but uh, do remember though that this is a, a fourteen round event. Winner takes it all in the sense that only the winner can challenge for the world championship title. And Gary Ashkana. She's she not looked in any trouble whatsoever. She played an impressive game here against Anna Muzicic, but yeah. she's not getting the victories. She's only got two victories. Yeah, yeah. I think as, she uh, needs she to might, win. Yeah, she she may she's not taking as many risks. She's she's doing it more of like the the Jan type, you know, like Jan was playing like this a lot, you know, playing Petrov's cool with draw down a pawn. You know what I mean? Like easy prep. I'm like, that's prep? That was gross. Like, what you mean I was prep? Like I'm down a pawn and I draw in the game. Like, yeah, it's prep. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is disgusting. But, you know, he's won two candidates back to back, you know, as well. Why playing super solid, not very aggressive yeah. type thing. Rick takes Rick. Is. Rick takes C3. Played. Knight takes Rick. And uh, Rick. Well, Gnar, so is resigned to the result, which is it will be a draw after F5. She looks so bored. Bro. The last remaining <laughs> board will disappear off the board for Black. Well, and with it, any hopes of a win her emotions is like oh this is gross yeah and i wonder whether they'll offer a draw right now or whether yeah because you can just offer a draw here it's after move 40. yeah or, or whether anna will be the one trying for a win h4 <laughs> <laughs> you know what this, there she goes h4 exactly. guys watch out Knight of six is what I'm for the win. Okay, the, the players, they did make eye contact. I did see the agreement. And a draw has been agreed between Anna Muzicic and Alexander Grashkina, which means that Grashkina moves to five and a half points out of nine, just half a point behind Tan Zhong Yi. Well, that was a game that was filled with excitement. Some excellent opening preparation from Anna Muzicic. But in the end, some accurate defense from Garashkina and was enough to secure the draw. So let's go back to the bird's eye view. We have two games remaining. Where should we go to? We just came from the game Leighton J against Salimova. So maybe we can revisit the game Humpy against uh, Katarina. Oh boy, this is looking sharp. I can smell Tactinos here from a mile away. Okay. Um, yeah, there is a lot going on. Whose move is it? It is Katarina. It is Black to play. Okay. Hmm. Okay. F6 is tempting. Very tempting move, but we got to be very careful here. Also, move 24. Oh, this is. Yeah, we got to stick here for a little bit. This is a detrimental time. I mean, look at the time. This is going to be a blitz game for them, and they're not close to time control. It's going to yes. this is going to get spicy. And uh, reminder that the players are playing the classical standard time control, which is forty moves with ninety minutes on the clock, and then once they pass move forty, there you can see it. They do get an additional thirty minutes. And they also have a 30 second increment, a bonus per move. So it is quite a serious time deficit. The position is very, very complicated, could turn. And oh, because absolutely. of the presence of opposite color bishops, again, it depends on who's able to make use of them. So if, for instance, black plays a horrendous move like g6, well, you've literally handed all the dark squares too white on a plate so you don't want to be doing that there is a threat right of uh maybe h4 attacking this knight yeah, on g5 four. and then oh, coming in happen. queen takes pawn we have a move where'd she go f6, f6. Oh, yeah i knew it was, it was coming I, mean, I think that was kind of forced to be honest that knight was too too strong on e5 yeah <sighs> way too strong what do we do hmm. But then the question is, like, what is this knight doing? Is it jumping into c6 and then finding a home on d4? Yeah. Yeah, or knight g4. These are the only... Uh, you can consider knight g4. Knight g4 with the idea of bishop c3 and sacrificing something on f6. I, I'm obsessed with the sacrifice. 
Oh, yes, absolutely. Of course, we always say sack first, think later, like Grandfather Tao says. But it is, uh, we're looking at knight g4. I'm definitely considering knight g4, and I'm looking at knight e6, and like a queen g3. Maybe king mm -hmm. h8 there. And then, okay, so where do you want to go? Do you want to go knight g4? I want to, I want to try knight g4. It's knight c6. Knight g4, it's, okay, let's try it. I want to keep some pieces on. I want to keep some pieces on. Okay, and not an easy position for Lagno whatsoever. So correct. Okay, can Lagno go? Now this might be playing with fire. That's definitely. I'm gonna so. go d4. Okay. There's wow, a point. Not even pawn moved. takes pawn. Bishop takes f3. Oh, I told you. Cheap oh, oh. tricks. Like her they are my calling card. And then pawn takes a knight h3. Ugh. Yes. Knight h3, and I think you'll find that is a check that attacks both the king and the queen. And that was something I saw that you can go d4. Yobi with the tax, he knows, guys. Okay. No, no, no. Cheap, so, cheap, <laughs> cheap, cheap. 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 Mm -hmm. says, damn, 96 doesn't work. Takes, you could take with the king, check king g8. And so if you go work. e4. Yeah, e4. e4, just to. Mm -hmm. Keep it solid. There's, again, not much disconnection of the rooks. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But then, on the other hand, you can't make moves like rook to c seven because I you and you know I was trying to make it work too. Like with rook c seven, there's a sack. There's some sacks available. Like yeah, there's some sacks on e. There's also knight e six as well, taking a step back. But it's black to play yeah. here. Maybe black can mm -hmm. just start to do the beat back. But knight to f two. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy game. Maybe also you can go D3, trying to get some squares. But again, the computer says, nope, not a fan of that. Yeah, I like white steel. I mean, we just have some things you got to watch out for. And also time is getting low. Rook C7 is, is coming later. Like I want a queen G3 and queen and a rook C7 yeah. eventually. And that is going to be some scary scary tactics coming after i get knight g4 queen g3 give me three moves knight g4 queen g3 rook c7 and we are okay. cooking that's true okay so you want to go so knight g4 and yeah. if black goes la 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 um what what kind of move would be okay so let's just put the rook back to a8 just for fun queen, g3. queen to g3 I was wondering whether, hang on, almost, it's it's almost with rook c7, isn't it? Yeah, it's, and it's difficult because like, you can't even throw away a move for black. Like, it's so hard to even throw away a move. Yeah, yeah but it, it's, almost, it's almost there. Oh, it like, works. Look, like 96, 96. And it works. I knew this would work. Okay, but I don't know how. So look, rook g7. I saw this tactic. I think you go check. Oh, I'm pretty shoot. sure you go you check on h6. Nasty. And then you okay. go queen to g3. And then and you over. grab that port bishop on b7. Oh, you got the bishop. That's the idea. Wow. And show him okay. king f8 too with the little oh eight. Well, no, we couldn't go there. Bishop but four. okay, we do have a response to f6, and Humpy has decided to go in with the knight. Oh, yeah. That's also, Humpy's very, type. very tempting as well. 100%. She loves the uh, position of spots, you know. Rook is going to be very annoying on c6. It is captured. It takes. is. Rook takes. Instead. Rook takes. Insta. Rook takes. Yeah, okay. Not an easy position for Lagno whatsoever. And now let's see what happens. He plays Queen A8. Ooh, that was nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. Queen A8. So where do we go, guys? <laughs> That's a great move. Dang. That's a great move. Can you just ignore? Well, A4 is hanging. So maybe Queen D6. Yeah, but can you just, can you just let it be? Oh, you're just chilling? No, no, no. There's also knight e6, but yeah, I, I, I was thinking not quite let it be. d6, there's rook d8. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, we just probably move. Maybe rook d6, but no, a4. Yeah, you got to be. It's 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 weird. It's you weird. Go like you have to be rook right. C, rook c1. And then rook a4. Rook a4. You got to let that one go. And, and rook d6, maybe. Maybe. Where? You can at least take the pawn back if you like on b6. Maybe. Maybe you could just take back. 
Rook B6. Yeah, yeah. I was just Possible. wondering whether there was anything more. H4 like, then. H4, I, I just... I kind I of like feel it. like this pawn on B6 is a not fit for right. purpose, is irrelevant. Right. <laughs> this is the goal right. on G7. Right. right. Yeah, you have knight of seven and then knight rook of six, seven. What about yeah, knight e6? Knight e6 is six, six, too unstable, right? Yeah, correct. Queen g4 next. Queen yeah, G4. yeah. And didn't like that. Queen g4. Oh, knight c5, I guess. Wow. You got to be watching everything. Queen g4, knight c5, rook f6. Woo, heat. Knight d3. Rook c7, a mating. That's crazy. Okay. But I guess you can also go queen f4. Wow threatened to take on d5 and this yeah. one is sharp okay, oh, like, yeah, you, yeah. like if you go rook takes b4 whoops rook, rook takes knight. oh no hang on hang on no 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 rook c8 rook oh c8. my goodness Woo! that is crazy rook c8 and then queen I, I was trying six. to get it to work in a different move order Dang. and now queen you're just takes. throwing queen takes knight the king moves wherever it goes and the rook matter. takes rook and thanks Great to this pawn being on h4 and this pawn on f3 no back rank possibilities whatsoever so okay still so very piece. very sharp queen a8 and yeah. i feel like humpy has to just ignore the attack against the a pawn focus on what matters which is king safety Exactly. Focus on this king. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have a move. I'd like to see double the rooks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm keeping an eye on the game between Leitin J and Salimova, and it does appear like it's completely level. Oh, definitely. I just I looked at that too as well. I mean, I, I'm I'm thinking that that game will probably fizzle out quite quickly yeah. into a draw and mm -hmm. if that happens that means there will be a sole leader tan zhong yi with her victory over a luckless veshali she will move to clear fast with six points out of nine that's a hefty score boy six out of nine yeah one ale and there, there we see rook ac1 indeed played by humpy she doesn't care about the a4 pawn so katarina 11 minutes on the clock. Two, There's two, uh, no wait, is, easy way out. She yes. has to embrace the Seven. complications. She does it. Rotates A4. It's Rotate on the board. A4. Let's go. Yes. And now, what was it? We were looking at H4, right? Yeah, H4. H4 is just H4. like bounce the, you know, kick the knight back in your move. Find a move. Yeah. Because you, you just, do the whole h4 but if the knight okay knight e6 we were looking at uh queen, uh, queen stepping up to f5 yeah, yeah. and there were some lovely tactical ideas absolutely but if the knight comes to f7 you know let's follow the idea that a knight is a king's best friend except when you got double so i'm going rook c7 yeah rook c7 i'm about to sack i'm about to sack ivanka i'm about to take this knight as fast I as humanly it. possible. I, I feel it. I, I am stressing about it too. But I have a feeling that I will have good reason to. Okay, that's a good move. Takes, takes, rook there, queen, check, king h2. I mean, I'm on you, but it's so, like, close. It's just, oh, even queen e5, a stupid trade. Ugh. Yeah, but even then, I think that this pawn on b6 is not going to be worth anything. A lot, yeah. This knight isn't the best place piece either. It's sharp. And it is sharp. Humpy Kanaru, just over five and a half minutes on the clock. It's move 27, so a fair few moves to be played. Rook takes a4. I don't know. She might How take a pawn. There's some pressure. I mean, okay, maybe she will go rook c7, but when time gets lower then you start second guessing your stuff and you start thinking fast and you actually do get nerves like your heart rate starts to raise which you do actually have, you know start to make mistakes when does, your heart rate raises does she have any tricky moves like queen to f5 immediately um yeah. that is very tricky oh and if goodness. you go rook takes bishop you go rook, rook c8. c8 same idea Yikes. absolutely Ooh. yes that's some heat i would love to play that queen f5 
immediately. That would be and, a cool move. Okay, so if, if you go queen f5, getting out of this pin, then, okay, clearly you have to defend d5. So this rook, this, sorry, this queen comes to, not really queen, kind of come to d8 because rook c8 is coming. Okay, maybe knight f7. Rook rook C8. Oh, yeah, anyway. Oh, my goodness. So is it Rook A1 then <laughs> instead of all of this? Instead of just trade yeah, a pair of rooks? It could be, it could be Rook A1. Trade a pair of yes. things. Yes, that is the move. you yeah, got to allow right. Queen takes D5 with check. Oh, that's going to suck. How do you King allow moves that? out of the way, and I guess okay. you can and just drop fine. the Queen back. Yeah, you wow. can drop it back to D1. Again, not an easy position actually for black to play. Unsafe king, Outrageous. white has a better minor piece and white will probably be winning the b6 pawn. So queen to f5. Let me just check with the engine to see what is the best move. Queen f5. Yeah, queen f5 best move. Queen she f5, also has three rook a1. Too. As we're talking about again, this, give you, an, uh, give you another virtual high five because rook a1, the best yeah. response. Yes. There it is, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, it's going to get tighter and harder for Humpy here. If, you know, three minutes, like, hey, you know, we are not close to time control. You do not get the extra time until you get to move 41. So it's critical. And she's using this time here. And she usually does not make the best decisions in time trouble. I mean, not just her, that's like everyone basically. But mm -hmm. at the same time here, you know, the lower it gets, the more I kind of worry about she wouldn't be losing, so I don't think she's going to make a blunder to lose the game, but she definitely needs to move. She definitely needs to move. She's only got less than three minutes on the clock. Rook takes b6, by the way. Your move that you suggested, also fine. Yeah. It's, but queen it's, it's, f5, fine. the most trickiest one by far. Black has to walk that cliff edge in order to survive that one and find rook to a1. Come on, Humpy. Queen F5. You got to do something. Maybe not. You don't have to move. Right? You don't have to move, technically. Mm -hmm. Probably should, though. Okay. Humpy. Just, Just to yeah. recap the moves, <laughs> she's considering stepping up with the queen to f5 setting some tactical issues with a rook coming to c8 she's attacking the pawn on d5 but she has to see it's not possible for black to take the poor bishop on b4 humpy can also play it safe she has plenty of moves she can go rook takes b6 as well she can even go h4 but that's actually driving the knight closer to the king where it wants to be right it's gonna help out. Here she here she goes. And the problem sometimes when you get mm -hmm. lower on time is you're you know you start calculating faster and like mushing ideas together fast because you're just thinking, oh wait, wow, here, 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 okay, here, wait, what what about this? And then it just gets faster. Minute and a half for Humpy. We are not close to time control. She has to make a move. Yeah. Okay. Oh, silence. It's like dead silent everywhere. It is. <laughs> I like, am on tender hooks. Okay, she's yo. about to move. What? She's reaching for the queen. She is. She's reaching for the queen. Under a minute. Queen F5 on a board. Oh my goodness. Swinging. Now, of course, you have like 10 minutes here to figure this out at least. But Queen F5. Rick to C8. Massive, Jeez. massive threat. So is the only move Rook A1? Because we found Rook A1 after looking at a few moves. But. Is the only move Rook A1, or does Black have another resource? Okay, right. You know, Black is walking a tightrope. Black wow. has two moves. Okay, and so Rook A1 is Rook one, A1, and let's see if we can find the Rook other one. A1 is natural, right? Yeah, correct. Next straight. move is not natural at all. Mm, okay, Queen to D8. What? Queen to D8. How does this like work? You'll be, Rook like, why? Exactly. You'll be looking at this and going Rook to Doesn't C8. And the sense. whole point, now you go Rook A1. Rook A1. Oh, you get two you for the Queen. You have to see that. Woo! And then after ah. Rook takes Queen, Ooh. Rook takes C1 is Man, checked. Man, that's he. That's he. King F2 and Rook takes. But to go three. Queen to D8, and then to yeah, understand right. that once the Rook comes to C8, that you go Rook to A1, mm -hmm. that's unnatural. Yeah, that's very unnatural. I think unnatural. it's way more logical for 
Why would I go with the queen if I don't have to? Go rook a1. But yeah, remember, queen f5 does have the point that is attacking the pawn on d5. And Katarina has to be prepared to let that go with check. She's going to use her time. She's going to use five, five, six minutes here, maybe. Because, you know, it'd be, uh, you don't want to move too hasty, especially in a position like this. You do not want to move too hasty. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. And just to kind of stress. Rick, she finds it. She, well, she finds, finds it. it. What did she Queen d5, play Rick, quick. Rick Dang, a1. With check. Queen yeah, takes d5 again. with check. And now King h8 H is fine. Knight to f7 is also fine. Man, this, this might just fizzle out now. But, I mean, it was just sharp. It was very sharp, but it seems to be uh, fizzling out, I mm. assume. I, still, White has those chances to just keep pressing. And she does go knight to f7. Because White has the better pawn structure. White has more activity. White just has less time. Guess it. You just got a lot less time here, and mm -hmm. you got to move quickly within a minute. Here. And I'm actually uh, curious, like, like, where do I go? I was looking at queen d7, but then I saw rook takes, rook takes, rook d8, queen g4, and I was like, oh, okay, that don't work. So, well, I mean, man, I said it doesn't work, but it's just black gets some quick initiative, and I need to deal with rook c1 right now. I didn't want to take because then I have to run king f2. Yeah, you have king to like. Yeah, you have to deal. So if, if like white plays like this move, then just simply rook takes rook, just to point out, rook takes rook, and this right. queen on d5 is going to be loose. Instant ale. Yeah. So you, that's why you have to deal with this pin. So that's why maybe moving, you suggested queen to, queen to d7 doesn't work, right? Because of knight to e5. Uh, yeah, and then we have to check. And then, and then you get yourself into this type of situation again, where you have to drop your queen back Bro, to d1 to cover a1. a crazy one. line. Look, look at all yeah. these things in there. Man. But that only proves black position. So no queen to d7. Uh, okay, we have a move. Queen to b3. This is good. Yeah. Queen b3. Covers the e-pawn. Yep. Yeah, I think this is just fizzle out. You know, everything seems um, quite level. Black has a pass B pawn, though. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's much to do with that. Yeah. I think one of the best scenario for Humpy is if she wins the B pawn, she gets a rook and four on the king side versus rook and three. And those end games are not that easy to hold. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially with this time too as well. He just reached move 30. Oh, there's a move, by the mm -hmm. way. Let's see what happened is she take the rook with the queen. She does. She does. Did. And takes and takes. And here we are. Yeah. And and the question is how how is this going to be neutralized? Because this rook is also coming down to a7. Pressure against f7. The rook no, ambition that, that coordinate annoying. better than rook and knight. the rook and knight. So it, rook, queen to e6. I, oh, oh, queen to e6. Yikes. Oh, we have to show this. The rook will come to a. Oh, well, you take that's queen not the first. move. You take, take the queen first. first. Then rook check. And you just drop a piece. <laughs> yes. For no reason. Piece dropage. Dang. Yep. That sucks. So uh, do I not? So I'm just not stopping this rook? Maybe I go rook d8 and then rook a7, rook d7. Yeah, maybe rook okay, d8. Eight. Rook a7. And rook d7. And we just, you want to try? You want to draw? You know, but no, of course, no draw. The shuffle. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 sorry. But, but uh, we can use that extra move maybe to kind of clear some space definitely for the king h4 like it and then h5 gain some space maybe yeah and then now i can now i can uh 
I was going to say Rook A7, but it doesn't make you still quit your same yeah, it's idea. Just doesn't, it's the same thing. Yeah, that's just yeah. always going to be there, which is kind of hard to make progress. It's always mm -hmm. going to be there. Yeah, it's an in game, in game. Like, we just might, I mean, trade them off. Yeah, the bishop doesn't have any targets. So, going back to the game position, Rick takes a1. I like your move. Rook to d8. Make sure that the seventh rank is under control. It's very, it's very active. It's a very active move from black. But it doesn't, you can't use it, use the default too much besides Rook d7. But. Mm hmm. Well, all right there. That is so, something. Yeah. So whilst Lagno is thinking, shall we peek over at the other game that we have between Leiting J and uh, Salimova? Let's do it. So let's have a peek into this game. Oh, look at they time too as well. Man, they are all in time trouble. When it comes to, uh, I think Katarina has the most time out of everyone, but they are not, you know, okay, they're close to time control, but you know, not really that close. It does take some mm -hmm. time, and time is getting lower, but okay. But do you think Salimova can force the draw with Rook to F4? Oh, I have to go Rook to Rook to Rook C4. <laughs> Otherwise yeah, known as the King of Rook Shuffle. Yeah, yeah, she can. But okay. Maybe Lei doesn't want this. Do you think she'll be feeling ambitious? It the the problem is how is the question for me. I'm also I have less time. I think if I have more time, because you know I love playing blitz and bullets. So if I have if I'm the the player with more time in this situation, then I'm impressing. But time is getting closer, so if we get in within range. I may play a few moves out to see what happens. But it's just mm -hmm. hard to make anything happen. Because those knights are anchored. One knight defends g7. One knight defends the other knight. I can't really get anything to happen. The king is close enough to be in range to defend the knight on e6. Gosh, this is difficult. I can't. Even, I mean, I'm not even pressing forward. The c pawn's on the original square. Knight doesn't have many good squares. Like, <laughs> what do I do? Knight e2. Okay, knight e2. Great move, right? Yeah. There's also black to play though. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Maybe just forget also. also which is nice. Oh, Rick H4 too. And Rick D4 check. Rick D4 check. Are we going to see the players? No. no it's probably just going to be Rick King E3. Wait a second. You've been in Rick C4. Like no, she couldn't. No, she couldn't have gone Knight King to E2. Very important to note that she couldn't have gone King to E2 because check. now Knight to F4. Check. King E3. King E3. Knight takes Bishop and the Knight attacks the Rook. Wait, there's still rook g7 check there. Oh, rook d7. We block. I was like, why is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Rook c4? Rook c4? Yeah, this is actually a draw. There's nothing I can really do to get out of this. Wow, King what a draw configuration. There it rook is. Rook d4 check. King e3, probably. Well, maybe she might go king c1. Mm, that's, that's what I'm thinking. She she might not accept the draw. I mean, king c1 is a quite, quite risky, I think. Because you know you have to you have to have be around the f two pawn to defend it at some point. No, king e three. King e three. Okay. Yeah. Rook c four, and and the players have made eye contact, and we're going to see a repetition. <laughs> a little hesitation. Like, yeah, draw. You want to draw? And draw agreed between Letting J and Nurgil Salimova. But oh, they're, they're just uh, going into the formalities with the arbiter. Yes. Oh, did I repeat three times? I think I repeated. Did I repeat? We're going to repeat. Okay, it's a draw. You're good. All right. it, it, is, it is a draw. And that means that Letting J, her winning streak is halted and she is now on five and a half points out of nine. Half point behind Tan Zhong Yi, whose victory today over Vaishali ensures that she is now leading the tournament again. So that means one game remaining. So let's go back to it 
and see what developments have happened between Humpy Canaru and Katerina Lagno. Katerina Lagno on four and a half points. So victory will put her up there with the crowd on five and a half points in second place. Very nice. Very nice. Five and a half, you know, three and a half out of the last four games. She's on fire. Mm -hmm. Very good shot. And just going to look at how many moves have been played. They're on move 33. Yeah, still just, got time. That well, look how much time Humpy has. Yeah, under Humpy has just under a minute. Yeah, that's tough. We got to move. Check Queen, yeah. Queen C one, and now we're in for some fireworks because if the King comes up to F two, Humpy has to calculate check. what's happening after Rook to C two. So you might have to go Rook D one, and then she might have to go. Yeah, Rook D one. She might be very cool about it and be able to put the king on g3 because really this queen on b3 it. is lined up against the black king. And Humpy is not without threats of her own, putting the rook on d7 or putting the rook on d8. So it is crunch time now. Step up with the king or drop the rook back to d1. She's got 11 seconds. King f2, she's going for it brave decision she is going for it she might trade queens though queen c2 like all right cool let's just get these off the board yeah but once the queens come off the pawn on b5 is going to fall off and it's going to be four versus three on the king side i can create that past pawn in the center exactly something to play for it's a whole load of suffering Something to play for. Okay. Maybe Humpy this queen will come back to C7. Mm -hmm. Like those move. Yeah, you could just bring a queen back. But again, you you step backwards. I go forward. You will come queen to C. E6. Very solid. Not She's easy move, for Lagno. Lagno five, five minutes, minutes on the clock. Players on move 34. And I'm kind of curious. Okay, Canty, you're right. Queen C2, according to the engine, is going to be a draw. I'm definitely thinking draw as well. Uh, yeah. Queen, draw C6. By Queen C6, if you're going to retreat, is the, the most accurate retreat. Because if you go oh, Queen really? C2... It's queen c7. Then, yes, the queen is able. Oh, whoa, five. Whoa. This is getting dynamic. Boy, this is getting dynamic right now. Wow. They probably didn't move either. They're like, yeah, you're right. Rook d7. Yeah, right. Oh, Rook d7. Damn, I might go king g3, believe it or not. No, that might not work. But the idea here is I just don't want to actually draw. She's <laughs> reaching for the rook. She's only got 14 seconds, can't he? I should play rook d2. Rook to d2. Hold everything. Yeah. Hold it and then come in with the queen to e6. Hit the rook. And, well, it may not even attack the rook, but rook d7 is now a big threat there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, yeah. There's, there's tricks. Like if queen e6 and then you try to come back and trade with queen c6 there's a rook d8 rook c4. Check, like winning oh that was nice cut the queen off that was really strong yeah. that was really strong bishop a5 maybe sheesh that was really good yeah yeah and who's king yeah who's it's king safer. right i mean this Hold king on. on f2 <laughs> And look at Humpy got a move. Wait, 16 oh. seconds you for Humpy. Move, Humpy. She's a move 35. Move. You got to do something. Don't panic. Where'd she go? What'd she do? I don't know. I can see I it. I think she, she dropped her rook back rook to D1. D1. Oh, Eval Bar Isn't shipping. that rook takes bishop? Rook takes bishop. Oh, my goodness. Wait, but it doesn't work as queen f7 check. And there's also uh, rook to D8. Oh, correct. And there's, there's also rook here. c2. I saw rook c2 and I was like, how did we defend against that? Wait, what is the move after rook c2? I am so curious. Rook c2. 
She has to go Rook C2. And what do we do here? Queen to B2. Wow. King E1, Queen B2. Whew. Man, this is scary. The pawn on G2 scary is comedy. hanging. This bishop is hanging. Takes, takes, and okay, black. Yeah, and up. there's been a big yeah. shakeup when it comes to the activity of the rooks. Humpy just panicked. No time on the clock, and she went yeah. for a very safe move. But here, rook c2. Yeah, rook c2, king e1 only move. By the way, Three rook minutes. takes b4 is possible. It is possible to play like this. And you're right, queen takes f7 will take you into a completely drawn rook and pawn ending. And if this rook comes over to d8, then the king goes to h7 and knight takes rook and white will be the one that is losing in this one. So Katerina Lagno, she's spoilt for choice. She can go rook takes b4, but rook c2 will give her a small advantage. Rook c2, king e1, queen b2, trade everything out. Then go bishop d2, and white's kind of passive. Rook c2 is uh, terrifying. And it is a move that she's already looking at. She's calculating it to the end, though. That's yeah. why she's still doing it, because it's very easy to see rook c2. She sees it. Now she's calculating the rest. But it's also very easy to see rook takes b4. You have to make that mental switch. That Which after am I going to do? Rook c2 that you in fact black is probably a little bit better mm -hmm. whereas rook takes before is just going to be completely even two minutes now two and a half not an easy adjustment to make when lagno has been defending the whole game okay here and we now, go moment of truth yeah the moment of big truth. decision rook c2 Rick, let's put it up on the board. Rook c2, the king will come to e1. Queen comes to b2. And then this is, there's a deadly threat of rook to e2, attacking the queen. So after queen takes queen, rook takes queen, bishop comes to d2. This is the position that will give black a small advantage. This rook on b2 is wonderful. This one on d1 leaves a lot to be desired. So that is the way for Lagno to get a small advantage. Possible now. Time's getting much closer now. And she's probably going to go with Rook C2. Here we go. Look like she's about to make a move. And she, she makes Rook C2. It. King E1 instantly. Mm -hmm. Queen B2 instantly. Queen B2. All played out real fast. She calculated all that out. 50 seconds. 30, move 37. Mm -hmm. And Humpy has to take a decision. Okay. Let's see what she to play. She's probably going to take the queen. She, yeah, she can, she can also go um, rook to d8. Wow. Like, you can play that move? You that can play crazy. that move. But yes. only, this time only okay, the engine is helping me out big time, but only, no, she goes for the most natural move, which the is queen route. takes b2, rook takes b2, and now this bishop must come back to d2. Yeah, bishop d2 is the best. And then, okay, black has some activity, maybe more b4, 95, nice c4, b3, stuff like that. Yep, humpy lost control bishop to d2 and now for La katarina maybe she can go h4 maybe she can activate the knight to e5 it doesn't really matter what she's doing she just has to mobilize all of her pieces knight to e5 and this is the problem humpy doesn't have too many active moves yeah exactly she has to go like king i was thinking king e2 I remember looking at this king e2, and then I wonder if that in-game should be okay. I saw knight c4, and I was just losing. Dang. Is it knight c4 that's winning? Um, no, it's not. Wow. No. Apparently, something else is winning. Like, maybe okay, it's okay, I'll help. It just Okay, king f7, apparently. <laughs> you can't do anything. Oh, okay, bro. This, this is the, the craziest thing problem. I've ever seen in my life. 
Yeah, because yeah, if you move the rook, you, then now you go nice e4, and yeah. back you go. And, okay, oh, Humpy, 17 seconds. Okay, and there's only one move for her to survive this. She has to go bishop c3, and she does Ooh, it. She is on fire, boy. She, she said, I'm about to go passive. Rook takes g2, bishop e5. Rook g1, king up takes six. How am I drawing this? Hold on. She has oh, to, after rook takes g2, she has to throw in rook to d8 check. Ah, uh, rook d8, king f7, bishop takes e5, takes rook e4, rook takes, rook takes, and yeah, sweet job. And, and the players have made time control. Katarina Lagno has left the board, and Humpy, she is pondering over what to do after rook takes g2. We are going to take a short break, catch our breaths, because more excitement to come in just a few minutes. Guess these women and minorities to be just as included and welcomed. I think that's the only way forward. We're going to play a huge role in making the community a more welcoming place and making it a place where we really are just focusing on the chess and nothing else. I really do believe that women are the future of chess. Women play an important role in shaping chess's future by mentally and supporting young female players to come out and play chess with confidence. I do feel that women will be very important in the future. I can see this is already happening. We have a lot of young girls coming up and uh, hopefully we will have many more juries. And also, we will have a lot more girl participation in the future. I hope that as more and more women start to play chess, it will become more balanced and it will change the culture of chess in general. I think in 20, 30 years, we're going to be seeing so many more women that are grandmasters, so many more women that are at the top, and so many more women at chess tournaments. And that is really my, my dream. That's what I want to see. I think that the future of chess, the role women will play in it, will be pretty much the same role that men play in it. I'm hoping that we'll get a better ratio of men to women in chess and to just see it be an even bigger sport and more people can enjoy it. Chess is an ancient game. It's been around for longer than 2,000 years. And if we want to thrive and stick around for longer, um, we need women. We need to, as women, stay in this game so that girls and women in the future can see us, see that we were here and feel like they should be there too. I really love watching games by top female players and studying their games from the past. And I think that's like one really cool thing that the chess community could do more of. I know my friend Luciana is publishing a chessable course on some of the great games by the early world champions, Vera Benchik, Rudenko. And you can learn just as much from these games as you can learn from any game. And yet it does provide inspiration and like adds like depth to our chess culture. So. I, about 10 years ago, I published a book called Play Like a Girl with like tactics by female chess players and I'm actually redoing that book. And it's so much fun to just like kind of like dig in and see some of the most important tactical themes in chess, decoy, in between move, pins, uh, double attacks, um, and to look for like some of the, the best examples by top female players. So when, you hear all these discussions about women in jazz. It's great. But sometimes I'm just like, wow, you should just like go study some Muzuchu games.
Welcome back. And we have one game remaining and the players, they are in the think tank. 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 <laughs> it has been a go. long day. <laughs> but, <laughs> earlier on, we did see Tan Zhong Yi defeat Veishali with the black pieces. And our very own Mike Klein managed to get her for an interview. So let's take a listen everyone first game to finish today Sorry. tan zhong yi wins with the black pieces <laughs> against yeah, vaishali it seemed like vaishali <laughs> wanted to attack your king today like, was there any moment where you thought that your king was in danger uh, uh, I don't think so because she put her pieces on both sides. On the queen side, her bishop was on a3, and then her she never developed her knight on b1 and rook on a1. Were you surprised at all that she chose the Alapin variation? Uh, 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 yes, I was uh, very surprised, but I immediately realized that I need to avoid all the uh, previous variants that I have played before, uh, no matter what move. Like we have this saying in chess that when you lose a game, especially if you're black the next day, you just try to make a draw and move on. Is that an old way of thinking? Is that something that you still, uh, that players still think about doing? Uh, because this tournament there will only be one winner, so uh, I don't think anyone can have this passive uh, approach, so I need to play well every game. Got it. And actually, just one question, because we did not talk with you yesterday. Yesterday, you were in the lead by yourself, and it looked like you had a repetition, which everyone expected you would do, but you chose not to. Can you explain why? Uh, uh, 确实在这个节点上我处理的不好最大程度的去降低昨天输棋的内盘棋的这个心的压力 uh, Yes, I think yesterday I can choose to repeat and I can also choose to not repeat but I think I made the most mistake that is by spending a lot of time and then decide to not repeat uh, but that was in the past so I think in the Right now, I will just uh, try to lower the impact of yesterday's result and focus on present. You definitely lowered the impact. At the moment, Tan Zhang Yi retakes the lead. At this moment, she is one point clear of the field. So fantastic job translating, by the way. That was a lot and a fantastic game by Tan Zhang Yi. Now back to you. And there we saw an interview with Tan Zhong Yi and what a competitor she is. She's been a women's world champion. She won the women's world championship knockout championships back in 2017 before she lost out to Ju Wenjun in 2018 in their world championship title match. But she is a very, very formidable opponent. Look at her there. She's got six 
points out of nine. And think back to yesterday, because yesterday she started off with five points out of eight in the clear lead. She lost her game, but she managed to make that comeback. And here you see in second place, Leiting J and, and Alexandra Gashkina there on five and a half points. But if Katerina Lagno wins her game against Humpy Canary, she will be joining the crowd there on equal second. It's very, very close at the top, Canty. Anything can happen in these closing rounds. 100%. Anything can happen. That's why every round matters. Of course, it already does. But especially when you get closer towards the end and you see the standings here, of course, is uh, so anything, every point matters. That half point gets you right closer. 10 at the top, though, with that six piece is looking very beefy there. That's a very impressive score. Especially when he went black, now she get white now, too? Come on. She's uh, <laughs> playing great, bro. She's playing great. She is playing fantastic chess. And what I like most about uh, Tan Zhong Yi is that she's very unassuming. And so somehow she kind of went through, went under everyone's radar. So no one actually expected her to win the event. Right. They're not expecting her to lead it. And yet she is proving them wrong. She just blazed into the lead with two points out of two. And now she finds herself six points out of nine with a massive win against Vaishali today with the black pieces, as you mentioned. And in this game, Katarina Lagno, she needs to win if she wants to join the chasing pack on five and a half points. And there we see Humpy Canary. She just plays Rook to B5, just chasing down this pawn on B4. What do we think? Any winning chances? And winning chances seem very, very far because of me being able to take and be behind one of the past pawns, I think. So I am mm -hmm. going to probably be fighting down a pawn here. It's pretty obvious, but uh, I am going to be able to defend them all, I think. Okay. Yeah, it depends on how much time to as well. Like it is Katarina's move. I'm curious to see what she does here. If she defends, plays B3 or just takes on H2, which is the natural move. Just taking on yeah, H2. so let's have a look at what happened. Oops, nope, not okay. Rook to G3. That was a mouse drop. So hmm. let's sure. let's have a look at Rook takes H2 just to okay. clarify what happens, whether this is a draw. So first up, you can't take this pawn on E5 because then you go B3. Once the rook gets behind, you go b2, and then this pawn is completely unstoppable. You're going to go rook to h1 check, and yeah, it is hello queen, and it's goodbye white. So that's why you can't go rook takes e5, but you have to, as Kanti indicated, play rook takes b4, and this end game. What do we what do we think if the king steps up to f6? I was thinking that too. It's going to take some precision, but I think I walked the king over first. Yeah, walk the, walk king, the over, king over, and then and it's, it's difficult for the king to kind of cross the the fourth rank. Yeah, we almost have what we call it almost a philidor position in a way of a strange way. Like we have the blocking with the f3 and e3 pawns, which mm -hmm. are kind of you know guarding the the fourth rank. But if the king approaches, we can go to the back rank uh, with rook b8 and, and really kind of check in a philidor type position. And if the king steps away from the e pawn, then we go rook over to uh, e8 back and forth, or even the g pawn if the king yeah. happens to run to like d6 or something. So I think this so, is just an easy draw. Yeah, I, th I think this is also an easy draw just for the reasons that you mentioned. You know, the king keeps this pawn on h5 under lock and key. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, and as you mentioned, that uh, if this king tries to hide away, I mean, it's never going to cross, right? It's just right. never going to get into its desirable square, which is there on g3. Right. It's not going to get in there. And as you mentioned, that if the king steps away, well, then these pawns can get hunted down. So the pawns, having pawns all on the same side of the board, even though the white king is cut off, I think it is just an easy draw. But then after rook to b5, if you hold on to the b2 pawn this rook is going to take on e5 and we're behind the pawns and then we get we go here yeah, one, one of those. One. you go behind this one it's like a kind of windmill thing <laughs> with the rook pawn <laughs> as the rook comes to v2 we just go behind and take this one and that'd be it and we have a queen that, and, and then the rook comes back here and if the rook comes to h2 
Yeah, we should be getting actually. This here. this is a uh, this one's a little bit tricky, and no, actually, actually, there's not very cheeky. <laughs> you just take off. Yeah, take them on. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm pushing for a win now. Now I'm like, oh, hold on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is not tricky draw, at all. We not? Right. No, yeah. Okay, so it's a G five or something, and then you yeah, get, get king to D one. Yeah, this is just a just a draw. Right, as we just uh, see, yeah. what Katarina wants to do. She's probably looking okay, for so some type of resource of oh, like sorry, maybe like sorry, a king yeah. f six, which I think she might be looking at that king f six. Is she still thinking? She wants to try to keep it yeah, some chance. But is, isn't this the same? It's definitely the same. And then rook takes h2, and we have this yeah, issue one. where the white king just marches over. That's it. And this rook sits there, just as you indicated, and like a Philidor like, just sits there on the fourth rank. Very nice. And doesn't allow this king to penetrate to g3. Right. And we also, you know, if you run the king too far, then you have e and g pawns that are weak. So yep. You really just got to be careful. You got to know what you're doing. And holding on, unfortunately, rook to b2. Again, rook takes, sorry, rook takes e5. It's important to take the pawns when they're offered. Of course. And is there anything with, I don't know, h4 or something? Um, that's a good one. Okay, that's kind of tricky. Is if you get rook to b5, ha, ha, ha. This, oh, if you get this, yeah, that's a trick. this is a win. Okay, this is that's a win. A trick. Okay, so wow. shall we show why it's a win? So if yeah, the king absolutely. comes to f1, you go b3. And then uh, I'm lost. I did, according to the engine, which I've got, I've got it helping me. And so if you just go rook to b4. I mean, shuffle, exactly. Shuffle. Yeah, you just, but then the king comes in. Oh, and I don't have enough. Wow, the king gets to d3. You the, take the e3, king is you take just f3. March in. Okay, Dang. so if, and if the king comes up, because okay, so hang F3, on a second, that's, that's going to explain to me. So if you go e4. King e6 or f6? Yeah, king e6 is fine. And then you go f4. Mm, mm, that's a good one. Oh, but you're in Zug maybe. So maybe like, I don't know, king d6? Yeah, king d6. And then I go e5. King e6. And yeah, King and the reason that you're in Zugzwang is because if you just try to wait with your king, hang on, like, let's let's get like this type of position. If you try to wait with the king to e1. So first up, the easy one is if you try to wait with your king to g1, you got rook to g2 check. Wherever the king goes, you got b2. And then the rook swings back and rook to c1, and this pawn is going to be promoting. So the king must go to e1 to wait, but then you just walk your king. And you walk it up and down, and it, it harasses the rook. Up and, and then the king is there in the middle, so rook to b1. No, 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 rook to b1. Yeah, I think you just move the king up. Right. Just king, king up, okay, e5. And then you king can. Ah, you go king d4. Oh, with king. You e3. threaten checkmate. Wow. Okay, e6. let's see the top. King, king e3. e3. King d1. Oh, that's mate. Oh my goodness! Look at that. The that's pawns mate. on b3 that's and mate. h3. Oh my goodness! I've never seen that. That's so yes. cool. Wow. You won. Unstoppable. <laughs> okay, so that's <laughs> something. That, that's something that could reasonably, like, it could happen, right? That's, that's really cool with b3 and h3 pawn. Uh, you go rook to b2, mm -hmm. rook takes e5, and not rook takes h2, but you just go h4. And then white has to go h3. But if white's like, yeah, 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 it's all the same, rook to b5, it's not. Here, it's going to be a loss. h3, and the black king is going to wander over to harass the rook, and this king can't move. Okay. And you got this I whole idea going B3 and H3 and getting that king all the way over to harass this rook. So that's an important end, well, it's an important end game for this position and a lovely pattern to know. Yes. Very nice. Very nice that pawns of B3 and H3 mate like that. 
It's kind of, kind of funny. Kind of funny. But she's in the think tank. She is calculating. She is calculating everything. But it's hard yes. because there's this so is many the game moves. Position, yeah. There's just literally so many moves that you, you may sometimes even need more time than this to try to calculate <laughs> everything. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Which is why ideas help, you know, so you have less calculation there. And you calculate when you really kind of need to, but having ideas helps too. Yes. Like, which pawn do I want to keep? I agree. Also, it really helps when you have the end game is um, to memorize certain key positions. So you mentioned one, the Philidor's position, which is when the rook just cuts off the advance of a king on a horizontal line. And like, like is exactly what we saw. So for instance, rook takes h2, rook takes b4. This king can never can never kind of cross this line without kind of using this pawn for cover. But once it does that, then the, the whole point of the Philidor is that the rook can go around the back and start checking. So you know this position and you can actually use that as a signpost to guiding you towards that. So you can make decisions that help you. And if you kind of have all these like basic positions memorized, you can use them as signposts. You're gonna like, okay, if I get mm -hmm. here, it'll be a draw, easy draw. So it could just cut the right. decision making over the board. Yeah, that definitely help, helps to know the positions you're looking for or what you're trying to reach overall as an idea or a plan. And that can help you because a lot of times memorizing the moves uh, you can forget, but memorizing the plans help you can can help you find the moves that you may have been looking for before. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah. It's Good very enough. nice. Yes. So do you have any chessable endgame courses that you recommend? Oh, definitely. I have all of them. The first one to start, I always have it in order. The first one to start is basic in games. That's a free one you don't have to buy. You can just kind of test your in-game knowledge. And then once you're done with basic in games, once you I've learned like a few things in there, just one or two. But after you finish that one, then you should go straight into Jeremy Silman's in-game course, which is now on Chessable. I also recommend the hard copy as well. I read the hard copy before I even knew about a Chessable back. So the Chessable was uh was good to have. You know, I didn't do it, but I because I already went through it, but I recommend basic in games first. Jeremy Suma in game course. Then you can go through 100 in games you must know because that's fun. Mm -hmm. It's good to have, obviously. And then after you're done, you get obviously the best one of all, which is Devoreski in game manual. And that is the one where it, that one is deep. It's everything about in games. There's now a newer one with uh, Sam Shanklin now. but And also some, Sam Shanklin and uh, who just dropped one? Jacob Agar. Shout out to him, but Jacob Agar just dropped one too. But Devoreski in game manual, I mean, that's. That one is for very, very serious players. But I think it's a gradual process. Like once you go through these on Chessable, then you get Devoreski. Don't get Devoreski first because there's a lot of stuff in there that you need to know beforehand before you reach Devoreski. Yeah. And one thing that I would say when it comes to end games, um, I would definitely say buy the video. I know it's expensive, but buy the video because there you can actually hear the thought process of the pair of the players. Right. right. And uh, and the end game course, which I really want to actually listen to, I want to hear the thoughts of uh, David Howell and Magnus Carlsen, the grind like a grandmaster. Ah, uh, yeah, I probably need to go yeah. back and buy that. Let me pull that up right yeah. now. Yeah, and another screen. one that another one that I've, I've read the book, which is excellent, and I think the Chesterfield course with the video is going to be even better. Is Arkle's endings? Keith Arkle is uh, an English grandmaster who absolutely adores the end game you actually feel him getting i played him a few times and you feel him getting stronger and stronger as the game processes you know you mm. just feel that he's you know calculating everything and it is just a is impressive and for someone who loves the end game that's such an important thing because the whole passion for the subject is infectious and you begin to understand the way that the mind works and for instance, in Arkle's endings, he talks about his hierarchy of pawns. Like he says that uh, a, a B pawn is more important than the A pawn because it has more control over the center. The C pawn, therefore, is more important than the B pawn. And he keeps on going on like this. And this kind of like influences the way he thinks, even in the middle game. Mm, that's really nice. It's out the key. That makes you see if that's on chessable. It's on chessable. Oh, it's I don't have that one yet. Hold on, let me see. No. Be uh, and I, I definitely recommend the video version because there you get like a one-to-one -one 
Coach ah, our coach. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Ginger. Oh, they got with Ginger GM as well. Look yeah, yeah. That. Nice. Keith, look at him, big Keith. Yeah, grind grinding out end games is just fantastic because you've got to have patience, you've got to have concentration, you've got to have that understanding what is going to trouble your opponent the most. So like yeah. here in this type of position, like Katarina is spending so much time thinking because she's thinking on a practical level, which is the one that's going to cause the most problems. Right. Is it rook case h2, in which case is going to be rook case b4? And white has that easy defensive setup that we mentioned, the white rook cuts off the king. This king will just scurry on over to the king side. And that's kind of very much natural play. Or is it actually going to be rook to b2, give up the e5 pawn, and then try to cause some kind of trickery later on? Is the answer going to be king to f6 and try to cross over to the king side? And remember, I, I like king f6. Wins, what about king yeah. e6 though? We didn't look at king, king e6. King e6, but I guess the same same situation. Rook takes b4, and you're going to have to. Are you going to be take? I guess you have to take on h2, and we're in that same situation again. Yeah. That's true, because I was trying to try to get around with like King D5, but yeah, I'm just not getting anywhere. <laughs> I'm just not getting anything, which is why she's taking so much time, because uh, I'm just not getting anything. Maybe there's a scenario with after taking this pawn, we go Rook G2 and then G5, G4. Oh, my goodness. There actually is something kind okay, of. Okay, so, but this is the thing. This is where the king comes to F1 and says, oh, I'm not going to yeah. go for that. But yeah. you're right. If this isn't in the, then you can kind of see a scenario where the, like if, if white just kind of goes like messes around and you go, you go G5 just for fun, you get like this, white's just throwing in some checks. And then here you can kind of see that, yeah, G4. Okay, you know what? Go back, go back then. Go back some, yeah. you know what? How about uh, after you say uh, go back, right? So rook takes, what happens after rook takes? We're doing king F1. King F1. G5, king G5, G1, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, and then king G1. And rook h4. Yeah, if you go king gg1, I wasn't sure because of what's the rook e2. Oh, but maybe you can go maybe a rook e4. e4. Yeah, or even or rook to b3. E4. But rook to b3, I don't like because Pass. I feel like the king comes in and then your idea of g5, g4. Yeah. Okay, maybe. Hmm. Well, we're going to see actually. She's spending all of her time. Here figuring out. So what we don't want is well, she can't lose. So yeah, <laughs> I mean yeah, because it's really <laughs> you have to blunder your rook to lose this game. So she can't lose. So she's spending all her time now to figure out the right sequence, and then let's see if Humpy is able to uh, do the same. Yeah, but let's have a look at your your plan. Like for instance, if there's no rookie, I don't know, just move the rook to here, and then this plan of King F5. So probably at this precise moment, maybe this rook can come to b8 mm -hmm. to give that kind of like Philidor check from behind. So the king comes to f5, well, rook f8. And what happens if this pawn comes to g4? We take, we take. No, this is not so easy. And then you have to go e4. Oh, wow. E4. Okay. That was a hard spot. I was not able to spot that. I was just kind of looking. Yeah, because for otherwise, otherwise the king kind of snakes its way down to mm -hmm. F3. Yeah, yeah. And if that happens, it's game over for white. Definitely. And I don't yeah, know. I don't yeah. even know whether this is, okay, the rook can come to G8. And it's goodbye, the pawn. Okay. So maybe, maybe black can be like, he's, we've got all these ideas on the board. What, what do you think she's going to go for first up? Do you think she's going to preserve the B-pawn? Oh, that's a great question. I do not know. In fact, do we want to preserve this B-pawn or not? Yeah, you I, know I what? I, know. I, I probably would because what she, maybe that's what she's calculating because of that whole trick with like the B3, H3 thing. That is like, I never even saw that. But that is a scenario where like I actually learned something there playing around with the engine here. Where like in these type of situations, you can actually do rook b2, b3, h4, h3, and actually go for this plan that I didn't even know was there, which is a really cool plan um, involving keeping the b pawn. Uh, in fact, Hikaru calls it the white pebbles. In fact, 
of like the B pawn and the H pawn there are both, you know, very wide. There's just so much room in between those pawns that it is very possible for you to go wrong and you end up queening one of them. So I think that's a plan that can happen if she's able to find it, but she's spending a lot of time here, which is understandable. She's trying to find that plan. The yeah. one that she thinks has the best chances to win. Interesting. Do you know, I, I heard these pawns being described as trouser legs. What? Oh, tr oh trouser. Okay. Yeah. Trouser what? Trouser legs. What is the other word you're saying? Like trouser. It means pants. Trouser. You know what? Yeah, we're just going to call it pants. I don't even know how you said it. Trouser legs is what you said, right? Trouser legs. Trouser legs. Trouser yeah. legs. Okay. Yeah, we never heard that one. That's a new one as well. We learned a lot really? about the Brits today. Nice. <laughs> We're getting it all from your banker. Trousers. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Trousers. I, I forget. But it's, yeah, the thing is, though, we have different words for different items. Right. Okay. And your pants mean something else in the UK. Well, yeah, you know what? Y'all call it chips over there, too. Can I have some chips? A side of chips. I'm like, bro, fries? You want fries? Is that what you want, sir? Fries. Ah, uh, okay. No, no, chips. Nah, nah. Chips, chips is different. I got chips. some no, no, no. Chips, in chips my Chips are nice right and now. chunky, and uh, fries are really thin. Chip shop. We go to chippy. Oh, we have a decision. So what do you call A2. regular chips? Okay. Perfect. Rotate A2 on the board. <laughs> Cheapest chips. So what do you call regular like potato chips? Like what are those chips as well? Oh, or? you mean you mean crisps? <laughs> Crisp. <laughs> <laughs> Crisp. Oh my goodness. Because they're crisp. They're it's crispy. different over there. It's there. It's definitely different over there. Yeah, you need to have you been to the UK? I have not, in fact, and I have not. So it's going to be fun to go over there and just be like, oh, can I have some fries? Chips? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get some chips. Yeah, I'll take some chips. Yeah, if you get, take if care. you ask for chips, you're going to get, a, you know, and you want potato chips, you're going to get chips. I'm going right? to get. Yeah. <laughs> and we do great chips in the UK. You, uh, you nice. will not be disappointed. Very King nice. King F6. Very nice. Yeah. That is funny. That is funny. Okay, so King F6 plays. I like I like King F6 better than King E6 because you have to kind of threaten to weave your way into G3. And at the same yes. time, we came up with the idea of going G5. G5 and G4. And G4 right. at the Correct. right time. Correct. And at the right time. Yeah. So Humpy now's got 20, just over 25 minutes. So she's probably she's going to go into the tank as well because she has to play very accurately to defend this and king f1 king g1 king, king f1, f1 g5 king f1 makes sense okay so g5 right now right just to get some space like what are the moments that can go wrong like is e4 a step in the wrong direction i think it is isn't it it just because this rook, this rook right needs to be on g8 to cut off all the entry points for the king. So therefore, you can go g4, right? Fg4, hg4, right? And then you you have to put your rook. And I like this for black because, like, we can you know one mistake, king g5 can get four. Are we in the game. Like, if you go king b5, can I go king g5 anyway? I was thinking that, okay, rook takes you five, king you goes to four. four. You have to be so accurate here as white. You have to be so accurate. You you got the wrong, you got the wrong pawn though. So yeah, I can I even do this. Lot. I can even do this. This is where signposts really help. Damn. Because this pawn on G, the H pawns and G pawns are not very good in, in rook and pawn endings. And this means that only with these two pawns can you do something which called the back rank defense, which is when they come round to King F3, you literally, first up, you can just check them. Yeah, but uh, you can also park your king on G1. Mm -hmm. So let me just put it my king on G1. And you can go here. And if I wanted to, I can come rook A1. And you have the back. And this rank. is gonna be a draw. This is gonna be a draw. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And this I'll is the own you can only do it with a G pawn and well, not the G pawn, the, the G or B pawn and a rook pawn. But we do have a move from Humpy, King F1 played. So now where do we go? We looked at the G5 line, which I think that's probably maybe some of the best practical chances. Yeah, 
I don't know what else to do. Like, what else would we actually do? Maybe King F5 to try to like make some. I, yeah, stuff. King F5 makes a lot of sense, right? King F5. And then the rook. You, no, we need a shuffle. So like Rook A4. Okay, Rook F4. Yeah, just pass. And let's go G5. But then the problem with is then you you come and check. There's no cover for the king. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Unless you go, what about G four? Oh, that's a. Oh, but I check you. Wait, Rick, check. Yeah, and then I come here. So G five. Okay, this is actually still hard. I'm not even gonna lie. This isn't that easy. What do I play? I don't know. Oh, I actually. Don't then if know. you take here, and yeah, then you can see. Look! 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 Like, it went that's down. Why I was because you go king like, takes G four. And it's somehow winning. So what about, so I, I assume it's rook checked in and then king h4 or something? Okay, so in this particular, yeah, you have to get rook e8. That's difficult. Oh, yeah. See, that's difficult. That is one that I'm like, oh, no, buddy. And I don't know. How Nobody's going to see. I mean, I mean, you think g3, ah, you get away with it because of is it rook takes e5. Right. I was going to say rook, rook here, but that, that would lose. That would lose after king h4. So rook takes e5, king to g6. I don't know. Why is this a draw? Yeah, I just uh, shuffle and the f4, yep, and I just shuffle back and forth. If you get h3 in at the right moment. And then you, maybe you five. go rook here. Exactly. Yeah, you go two, here and, I, and you cannot advance. Well, that was instructive, right? So we have a winning position. Let's get that, let's like memorize that as a signpost. So this particular one, if white goes there, if you get this, is a win. Yeah, that's so crazy. That's so crazy. Okay, like that's important to know. Age. Have, yeah, that's important to know, actually, for future mm -hmm. reference, in fact. <laughs> yeah, it was also important for the game because there we've got like, like that one signpost. So when yeah. we get G4 in, king takes G4. Okay, so let's bear that in mind when we see this. King F1, G5 played. Yeah, yeah, G5 makes a lot of sense. I mean, just... Yeah, well, um, maybe Rook to B8. Humpy. Yeah, and this is like a long Philidor position. But then again, we go through that G4 thing. Mm -hmm. What else is going to be? And um, something else that she perhaps will be stressed about. I was just thinking, if the Rook comes to B8, just to give a check, isn't this kind of move quite dangerous? Oh, uh, e4. Okay, take. Yeah, I could think I just take because it, if right? you take, if oh, you take, you that is. You got the doubles there. Huh? I got the double, and I'm. But what if I, I don't? The engine is not saying is a win, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. feels like a win to me. It's On a practical level, though. at least. With a double <laughs> exactly, over practical. here. Practical, yes. Okay, I see that. 100%. And okay, okay, so so she, so Katerina, Katerina, sorry, Humpy won't be wanting to go rook to b8. She'll have to calculate very accurately to see that after e4. It is fine. But will she play e4 herself again? <sighs> e4 I like, though, because now how are you? Oh, yeah, g5. Then how, but how, what about g4? No, you're right. You're definitely right. G4, I mean. Um, G4, we, you have to take. And it takes you back. Take. Right? Dang, this is actually and now hard. Hold on. Whoa. Hold on, bro. Can, can you do this? I don't know. This? Rook, rook, what about Rook? Oh, Rook there. Yeah, yeah. That's rook B5, yeah. we know. That's the we one. know that uh, this one, the Rook can just come to F5. If the King comes here. Actually, let's not let, let's not let that. Let's, that's would have to know some other things. We can go rook a5 and check the king from the side. It is, it's going to be difficult, but it is possible. She also has enough time to figure it out. Like Humpy has 22 minutes here versus uh, Lagno with the eight. So, yeah. yeah well, I, I think this is the moment to, to go to a break. Mm -hmm. 
with this is the internal question will katarina lagner will be able to press hard against humpy canaru and manage to grind out a win well we'll find out in a few minutes when we return with more coverage on this game so don't get anywhere do you wish playing a chess game with a friend was as easy as sending them a text well good news now it is with chess.com's new iMessage app, you can start and play a game directly in iMessage. Your friend doesn't even need a chess.com account. It's just tap and play. Head over to go.chess.com slash iMessage or use the command iMessage in chat to learn more. So d4, d5, c4. This is the Queen's Gambit and this is the starting position for this course. My name is Kamil Plichta, I am a FIDE master from Poland. This course is going to be suitable for people of all levels, especially since I'm going to teach you attacking play, aggression in chess, gambits, compensation, all kinds of dynamism imbalances, and in general we have one target this guy here on e8. You might be like, yeah, this has to be some marketing stuff, it's impossible, come on, you just can't attack with d4. Think about it. Aliehin, Kasparov, Botfinnik, Mamediarov. They played d4, this was their main opening, so I suggest queen e2. This is a better way of playing. We are hitting the knight, the knight goes to f6, and now we are not slowing down. We sacrifice the second guy with d5. d is a big threat, so takes, and rook d1. And just see this, for the cost of two pawns, we already have huge pressure on black's position, and after bishop e7, knight c3, black really has to walk a tightrope to survive this. There are 9 games featuring this position, a white score is 7 out of 9. It's been 13 years since Humpy Koneru challenged for the world championship. Now she's trying to return there. When she fought for the World Championship all the way back in 2011, she came up a little short. Now, at 37, she is the oldest player at the candidates. With age comes experience. 2019 Rapid Champion, 2020 Karen's Cup Champion. In fact, general strength, rating in other words, is how Humpy qualified for the candidates. Only two women ever have had a higher peak FIDE rating than her. Humpy still has one of the highest ratings in this candidates field and is hoping that leads her to many victories. Ultimately, age and rating are both just numbers. Which one will win out for Humpy Koneru? Will that be enough to lead her to victory?
We are back. One game remaining for round nine of the women's candidates. And it's between Humpy Canero and Katarina Lagno. Katarina Lagno with the black pieces is pushing hard for a win. But what kind of a player is she? What achievements does she have under her belt? Well, it turns out, Candy, quite a bit. She qualified for this event via the Women's Grand Prix. She's also mm -hmm. been a three-time Women's World Blitz champion in 2010, 2018, 2019. She's a fearsome opponent. Very strong, of course. Absolutely a beast. I've been a GM a very long time and also a veteran. We all know who she is. And we know that Alexander Grisha course is her husband and they are very strong together in fact as a very very strong couple as i'm sure they were on chess together that's pretty awesome met her in person very strong player of course and she's doing the same thing here uh through the field of course uh showing that she is capable and trying to win as well where is she in the standing she has four and a half yeah if she wins this if she manages to eke out a win against humpy she will join the pack on uh in second place on five mm -hmm. and a half points very nice. And that's half a point away from Tan Zhong Yi on six. With so yeah. Lisa, we're gonna be in an unusual situation where we'll have like half of the field like chasing for that first place and the other half as the win probability probability graphic showed us this uh, afternoon. Zero chance. <laughs> so that yeah. was like harsh. <laughs> yeah. You have to have the rest of the field. I guess so crazy. It's like not even considering how many points they have. Like insane. Yeah. No. No chance whatsoever. That's but funny. it's it's kind of interesting because after this uh, round, we'll have five games remaining. Yeah. A lot can happen in five games if someone manages to put five wins together. Yeah. Well, imagine that. Which is a pretty big ask, but uh. It can happen, but G5 and Humpy now considering how to defend this. I, I'm very impressed by Humpy because she went into this middle game where she was the one pressing. She was the only one pushing for the advantage. She initiated some complications that were just mm -hmm. magnificent. But at some point she misstepped. She played too cautiously in time trouble and she finds herself suffering in this particular end game. And yet still she's not, you can see her, she's stoic. She's not allowing herself to be tilted. She's just focusing on the job in hand. Yeah, she's definitely uh, locked in. Of course, as she, the time is starting to equalize here just a little bit, a few minutes uh, as a time edge for Humpy here, but she has to figure this out and be accurate. I'm sure there's more than one way of doing it. You can even start with the check first, then bring the rook down to be a sort of a Philidor fashion, especially figuring out what the king does next. Yeah, I think probably the easiest route might be actually just checking and then going to the back rank and releasing more checks as well. Rook so B6, like this. F5, and maybe like rook B8, G4, mm -hmm. and then you just check, 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 check. Yeah. But, but, but we remember, ran into this, right? yeah, we gotta, remember, remember, right. remember, there is a big critical position that we've kind of now put in our memory banks. Right. If you get this position, F takes G4, King takes G4, that you is lose. a win. Yeah. That is a win for black. So that's a very, very important position to know because I'm good. A lot of you will be like, well, hang on a second. Why not just go rook to E8? And you go, well, King F3, the King to G1. And now this is the kind of maneuver that you force the king into the corner and now rook to g5. King mm. is cut off. E3 pawn right for the picking. So that's a really important end game to be aware of. Yes, have to be very and, careful here. Uh, what is another and, route? What do you have? Well, the way I see it is that oh. uh, Humpy has a choice. She can either just right. maintain the equi equilibrium by going rook to a4, nice. not not doing anything, you know, king mm -hmm. comes up to f5. Like She's like, yeah, if she goes, if she rocks backwards and forwards, well, hang on a second. Ah, g4. This is a win. Take, take. Yeah, yeah, so you take. So let's have a look at all these winning positions. So this particular one, let's put the second position in our memory bank. Why is this a win? Well, it's a win because if white just goes rook a4, I guess I was thinking that the king might like snake its way over here. 
But first you improve the rook. That's kind of rook hard, before. Hard. And okay, you can improve the rook a little bit more. So you wow. get maximum checking distance. King, rook, I don't know, I don't know. Just, just trying to keep keep waiting. The, the pawn comes Can't to g3. Uh, and then you go e4. How does this work again? How, how is this winning? Oh, yeah, it does work. It does. Because once you take on e4, winning? there's king f3 check. Wait, no, okay, no. King, king to g1. Four. Right. So e4. I was thinking, rook, yeah, e4. Yeah, e4. And then, okay, so and I go rook, I'm waiting. Exactly, exactly. And then you exactly. go king g4. Oh, you go king ah. h3. Oh, my king goodness. King h3. And it's winning. That is nasty. Boy, that's a theoretical. All thanks to the pawn on that's E3. Crazy. You know, if rooks could jump over. So let's let's work through that. That's if like Humpy just does nothing. She just sits there and waits. So that's a very important rook and pawn endgame game to know. That this particular position, just waiting, doing nothing. You're gonna go G4, FG4, HG4, and this is going to be a win but you need to do it in a few steps you need to transfer your rook over to the queen side to give yourself maximum checking distance when the time comes and then you're going to go g3 followed by e4 and the king will come over to h3 or f3 if allowed yeah that's, yeah. that's, that's so that's we're kind of getting to the core of the position so humpy can't just sit there and wait it's not but, a fortress. You know, okay, so you know what? I'm going to actually say if Humpy thinks like another five minutes here, she could lose the game. I say that because she does spend a lot of time, obviously. You know, it's good to use her time, but definitely in these type of positions, you got to be so accurate in this type of in game. I mean, one move, it's game over. It's so hard yeah. to be able to do this. It's easy to play around with the moves here as uh, we can. She's doing commentary. But she has to be 100% accurate on these moves. Obviously, uh, Katarina still, too, does have to do that. She has to prove this extra pawn. It should be a draw, but should be is the key The key words. Yes. There. So this is kind of also, again, another interesting moment. So we've seen holding the balance, and this is not going to be good enough. So you have this other technique, which is checking from behind. And here it was, again, Humphrey G4. will be thinking about, like, is it e4 g4 we know g4 we know that you can't go f takes g4 but you do have rook to f8 check nice. king g5 and then here i'm just again just the computer is helping me out massively that this is going to be the win again so therefore you have to hunt this e5 pawn and that's difficult to see it is that's, that's not so that's not difficult to see that's one of the last things you're thinking is rook to d1 uh, rook to e rook to e i'm sorry rookie a trying to take this pawn is like the last move you're thinking of right right you, you're just like allowing double pawns and also you know g takes f3 rook takes e5 king to g4 okay, we, oh, we have a move we have a move and she's gone for rook to from the hand movement, I guessed. I thought it was rook b8. Rook to b8. Oh, rook rook to b8. on b8, but we don't have a rook b8. We don't have. Ah, uh, no, it's, it's coming now. Yeah. Rook to okay. b8. So this is, a, I think, this is a most practical try just to stop g4. And, then, and then the question is, like, what happens after g4? Yeah, what we can play it anyway. That's what we said anyway, right? Play g4. Yeah. So let's. So which one do you want? E4, g4. Uh, e4, oh no! So g4, g4, yeah, you g4 can't do. The... You can't do because you go e4, oh, and you wow. stop the king coming to f5. King and if they come f5, here, right. you can cut the king. Whoops! Up, 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 up. You've got to cut the king off. You got to stop it getting to f4. How do I mean, this is so crazy to me? Because it feels like I still have edge with king h4 after that. Yes, but there. If you go king h4, oh, sorry, rook f8, h4, yeah. stopping king f4. Mm -hmm. If the king comes to h4, why not just go rook f5? And then king g3. If you go king g3, this rook takes e5. Winning. What? And rook then, check, king e2. But well, maybe maybe there, I guess. Maybe we get this type of scenario. and Rook check, king g2. I guess I'm not winning g so You have a pawn as well. Yeah, king e2. And then King and if G2, you go, maybe you push. King G2. 
uh, e5 is what i was thinking i could kind of never get a scenario where i can check the king away while queening the pawn also blocking it's just too many things i have to do yeah and then now you can just wait wait king eight, run and help oh, your pawn pop. on e5 because if this pawn were not in existence this would be a win for black you know this i think as the time is lower pushed. it's going to be a result i think someone not someone i think humpy because it's hard for uh, katarina to lose this game but it's it, humpy has to walk a very tight rope here very Definitely. very very tight rope very tight and rope. i'm kind of curious about e4 and f4 that's too much too wide of people is there as he says yeah maybe then then g4 yeah, it didn't work okay so maybe we just do fe then hmm? so we do a, a f takes e yeah so f takes e4 and then let's let's come right we G4 now rolling check rolling huh? first, check right rick f8 check first yeah this is interesting isn't it because what about rook g8 oh it gets rook g8 you go completely. king king e5 but then you go rook e8 rook check yeah rook e8 exactly king f6 okay, you can so. drop over. but where, where's how, how to advance this i do I not don't know i can rook h3 is a try to try to play g3 and h4 yeah, I'm thinking F2. F2, rook F3, king E2. Dang, it is a draw. Nothing. King E2. No H4, can't play G3. I go rook H3, you go king F2. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah. Rook G3, yes. king F2, and back again. H4, wait, 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 wait. H4 here now. Oh, we finally got some ground. We found some yeah. ground. So rook G3 was clever. We found some ground, h4 defense, and now yeah, okay. I, don't think I, I don't think this is this is I kind of like let's let's put you to the task, Rook H8. Rook F3. Everything. Hmm? Rook F3. King G2. Whoa, I got went through. Ah, right. ah, there it is. Okay. Went, 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 because you get Rook takes No, no, no. No, it's A3, H3 first, didn't you? H3 first, and then you take on E2. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, King E2. So you're gonna King E2, A3. H3, yeah. Getting close. It's getting close, I admit. I know, but then, no, 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 no. I'm uh, saying. You're I'm saved. saved by the bell. By the Rick takes F3. Darn it, and we have a, a draw. Okay, so I have to go back. So instead of pushing King E, dang, there's nothing. There's This is a draw, guys. This is 100% draw. I don't know. We, we had some adventures uh, along the way. So, yeah, yeah, we definitely did, though. We, yeah, had some, so we learned a few things. Really if the king manages to come over to g4, we win. That's a win. Certain win. If, if uh, we have a situation where the king is on f5, this rook is over here, and you get g4, it's a win. Oh, we got to move. And we got to move. G4. G4. Yeah, very practical. 100%. Very, very practical. Very practical. Yeah. And the move we're supposed to play is. F takes, F takes, H takes, F takes, and now we have to go E4. Oh, yeah, the oh, E4 move. move. That one's e hard, man. I, I don't know e how I would move it. Is. Okay, it's not the only move. It's not the only move okay. because you can okay, go rook to F8. Okay, that's good. And then if they go here, you go E4. Okay, we have some trades. Exchange of pawns. Yep. And now, Humpy has to stop the king getting to f5 and she does it rick f8 right. humpy in 2010 knocked me out of the women's world championship oh Cup. man knockout yeah and a rick and porn in game she, she <laughs> knew exactly what to do uh -huh. i was like mm. <laughs> I go back to my devoretsky yes 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 okay king to g5 yeah, King G5, right? King G5 and go to H4, G3. It's a good yeah, because if Because if you kind of go anywhere else, I mean, can there be some trickery with King to E6? That is correct. It is some type of trickery. The question is, how I do guess you roll? E4. E4, this is the, okay. Stop the king coming to D5. No Andrew squares for you. I can't win the pawn. Let me see. We'll go over. You win the one too, huh? Hmm. Crafty, crafty. Okay, rook maybe, maybe. Unfortunately, it's a check because I somehow want to zoom the rook over to a2. Right. Yeah. E4, rook h4. What happens on e4, rook h4? I'm just curious. How do we draw that? Okay, so here. King e6, e4. Yep. 
and then rook h4. My idea is to push and rook takes. Okay, I go g3. I guess, oh, yeah. You I ever go rook to g8? G3, but I mean, you just get the classic draw anyway. G2 takes, yeah, yeah. and then you have a Philidor position through this. This is very easy, Philidor. Yeah. Very easy, Philidor. Yes, yeah, so the Philidor gone. just means basically cutting off Third the right. advance of the king from from a horizontal line. And uh, once the pawn pushes forward, that's the moment that you go to the back, back of the rank. board with the back rank, and then you start checking from behind. You always got to be thinking about where's the king's shelter. Mm -hmm. Rook f8 check, and Lagno down to two minutes. We have a move. king on e6. e6, yeah. A4 um, is really strong. I, I'm expecting e4. I'm expecting the the king from well. advancing to f5, d5. She also has time and she's going to use it. She knows how to use it as well. Mm -hmm. She just certainly does know how to use it. And uh, Humpy's got eight and, eight and a half minutes, plenty of time. She gets that 30 second increment per move. Okay. It's a great game though excellent game i think uh humpy had chances but then katarina defended like an absolute beast humpy got in time trouble and lost a pawn should be a draw yeah no i i was really impressed by the way humpy played it and i i thought that when she found queen f5 here back on move 28 in this particular position with the threat oh, of eight queen takes d5 check I thought that uh, she was well on her way to nurturing a very promising advantage. But Katarina Lagno, she just kept on fighting. She was tenacious. And in the end, she provoked Humpy to make a big mistake, which came here when Humpy just went rook to d1. And this allowed Katarina to go rook to c2 check and then get into a favorable endgame. But Humpy, this is where like <laughs> both sides just kept playing so well because she just went bishop to d2 and Good then side. bishop c3. That's it. Bishop c3, I had to give it up, take the pawn. She, had, she recognized that she had to give up this yeah, that was pawn. Wrong. That was break impressive. Out. Very, very impressive. impressive. And now Humpy is thinking it's move 49, king e6, and she must remember that she's got to be preventing the king from arriving to d5 or f5. Stop the advance of these on these two squares. But when yeah. it comes to having pawns on the board, it's actually the trickiest is to have the e-pawn. So, for instance, if uh, Humpy manages to trade the g pawn for the e pawn the e pawn the black e pawn still remains that's a that's a hard one yeah that's a hard one it's definitely a difficult one to fight but also that philidor position is just so easy it's oh yeah. hold on we have and what she play let's see it she played e4 e4 okay she found it she rook played e4 rook h6 she's trying to get the rook behind the pawn okay but uh isn't rook to g8 yeah, rook behind the pawn. Rook to G8. Same defense. <laughs> Offense, same defense. Okay, I'll do it. You do what I do. It. Same thing. Rook yeah. to 6 Yeah, and I have to go rook H4 if I want to defend the pawn. King, and then it's just easy draw. King G2. Yeah. You may have to be careful of some trebuchet. Uh, something that could really happen. Actually, after rook G8, rook H4, king G2, king D6, king G3. Hang on, rook. Right. Uh, but no, there's but no situation that, that could happen. Oh. No, I was actually looking at a situation where we would trade the pawn, like, but it, it's no way. It's, it just would never happen. Because we have to, when king g3 happens, we have to move the rook. Oh, there is a situation. Okay, so let's do this. King d6, king g3, rook h1. Now, obviously, you know, rook takes. Is the like, thing. Are you trying to go rook takes? Lose. And then rook g1, and then king over. King rook takes. King uh, c5. And then here you have to be very careful, right? You have to be very careful here, right? King c5. King actually king c5. Lose, no, it doesn't. Okay. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is a standoff. You this is this kind of standoff, right? Where if king one goes one. like this, the other one goes, way. Yeah, right, right. Sure. <laughs> right. Oh, man. That's the pawn funny. was going to fall off. But well, it's like the vultures and they're circling. 
yeah, okay yeah. we do we have a move we have a move rook to g8 played right. and humpy is playing this perfectly accurate defense there rick f6 check check oh she might try the other way king g2 rick f4 yeah. king g3 king d but now king to e2 takes, takes, this king is c5. important rick f4 king e3 you gotta hold on to your pawn on e4 yeah this is, this is nothing great game mm -hmm. great game yeah nothing easy hold easy hold after king e3 and then there's just checks everywhere you can't avoid the checks you are checked into oblivion or you give up the pawn on g5 or g4 or, and or e. yeah and the king is so beautifully placed there on e3 and even rook f3 you just go back king two. yeah you just go back and you say the pawn on g4 is hanging Unless she's threatening to go rook to g3 and yeah, no, that's nothing. Rook g6, and then like I can go back and forth. Yeah, rook to g6. G6, yeah. Okay. King e3 played. Nice. Very nice. And Lagno. She's trying. But unfortunately, it's not enough. It's just nothing there, even up a pawn. And she plays king f6. Uh huh. Oh, oh that's a crafty move. Dang, she's swinging. Boy, she's swinging. Oh, but no, you have rook check, rook e8. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was trying, yeah. though. You can write king e8. Okay. Yeah, she was, she was trying to set up this type of right. idea, like rook yeah, f8. And the king will Look come that, to g5. Oh, oh. Look at that king go. Look at that. Rook Dang, king h4. Bro. And now the crafty. king will snake its way like yeah, the cunning yeah. fox that it is up to g3 and it will be a win for black but of course humpy says i'm not going to go for that one and instead puts the king on d3 king king's route to g5 denied yeah she tried like one last effort here see if you're paying attention and of course she of course she was yeah very good and with the draw, that means that uh, Katarina Lagno will move to five points. So still one point away from the leader, Tan Zhongyi, mm -hmm. but half a point away from the pack on the same second. So Leiting Jay with five and a half and Alexandra Garyashkina, they're on five and a half. Still very close. And very great chess as well. Mm -hmm. There we go. Two minutes, two and a half. She's got to make a move. Pretty easy, though. Uh, she's trying to figure out how can I win this, but it's just it's very difficult. Or check, you can push. Or check king e2. Let me go back. Yeah, this might be a repetition literally right here. Mm -hmm. Can't make any progress, guys. No. Yes. No, no progress and okay king f7 yeah five king f6 this is probably a repetition right here yeah oh, it is but what an end game yeah and incredible Fantastic defensive play from Humpy. Probably, right. I would say that Katarina, if she perhaps wanted to make life a little bit more tricky for Humpy, it was maybe knight to e5 was the was the move that slightly rushed things. And there we do see king e6. Yeah, you just keep the rook literally on the g file. Yeah. The also, rest of the game. You have enough squares and enough space to be able to maneuver from G8 all the way up to G5 and back and forth. Great defense from Bobby. Totally. What an exciting round it's been, hasn't it? You know, we've seen 
Tan Zhong Yi win an incredible game against Vaishali. Vaishali, ah, her bad luck continues. I oh. feel like it's bad luck because it just happens. You know, it was just one of those things that, you know, she mm -hmm. took an active decision when she wasn't quite developed. And Tan Zhong Yi, in the interview that we saw earlier, really pinpointed the fact that it was to do with her night on B1, G6. just didn't get yeah. into the game. Yeah. And Rick comes to G6. We also saw aggression from Lei Ting Jay in the opening, the way she just went for it against uh, Nergil Salimova. Yeah. And it, almost, almost, you know, it, it looked almost like she got something very, very convincing out of the opening, but it wasn't to be. And the king is going back to e7, rook to g5. g5 is a tempo. Or maybe she's just going to move her king. Even check, even king e3, yeah. Yeah. Nice defensive hold from home B here. Great yeah, game. Yeah, very nice. King, e3. king moves to e3. King e3, 100%. No progress to be made in this one. Great job, boys. Good job, yeah. boys and girls today, right? And of course, uh, I think Fidip Hikaru today, crazy shakeup there. I think the rest of the games may have been drawn. On that end, we have uh, Tan winning today. Clear first, six out of nine. Insane from Tan, losing only to Lei Tang Chi, who's right yeah. behind her, half a point. Putting the pressure on Lei Ting Jie and Alexandra Garachkina. And are they going to go onto a new score sheet? Yeah, he's like, here you go. Y'all gonna be there on move while. fifty-seven. Yeah, not too long. <laughs> I, I normally don't can get to this stage. I'm like, no, no, no. Let's not waste paper. <laughs> it's no, just you can, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. King to d seven. Just check again. She can do many things, right? She can put the rook on g five. She oh she just moves her king over to d three. That's good enough. Yeah, I'm not moving anything. You move. Yeah. The black king just cannot make progress. Whilst this rook stands there on g six, cutting it, and it is a draw oh, between Humpy Canaru and Katerina Lagno. Katerina moves into fourth place with five points, half a point behind. Leitin J and Alexandra Grashkina, who are on five and a half points. But at the top of the table, it is Tan Zhong Yi. And there you can see today's results. Leitin J drew against Nergil Salimova. It was a draw between Humpy Canary, Katerina Lagno, as we just saw. Anna Muzichuk and Alexandra Grashkina, they finished in a draw. But the fire and the action happened between Vaishali and Tan Zhong Yi. So let's take a look at today's standings. And we see Kanti at the top, Tan Zhong Yi, six points out of nine. That is a phenomenal score, half a point ahead of Lei Ting Jie and Alexandra Grashkina. And there we see Katerina Lagno. So those players in the top four, they have a chance to win the women's candidates. What can you expect, Kanti? Uh, you know, I can expect more of the same here from all of them. In fact, especially at the top of the leaderboard, there is still games to go, Yobi. So we don't know really what's going to happen. Of course, oh, yeah, you're at the top of the leaderboard. But then what happens if someone catches fire like late TJ did and you win three games in a row or something that could shake up the standings immensely, right? People could fear that. Definitely could affect uh, decisions yeah. that you make OTB. So and, uh, lots of out of these pairings. Which one are you most looking forward to? We do see some big ones. Alexandra Grashkina facing off against Lei Ting Jie. These two are in second place. And we also have Tan Zhong Yi against Humpy Canary. What do you expect? Oh, you know, we got to see. I, I'm definitely interested more in a tan game uh, overall because, hey, she got the white pieces now. She won with black. So now you get the white pieces now? That's just gravy. You win with black, get the white pieces next. I get to try to push with white and see what we can do and maybe try to get seven. And then, I mean, that's going to be beefy there. So lots of chess left, of course. I'm excited to see what happens. Though. 
I'm excited too. Today was such a monumental day. We did see Tan Zhong Yi with her victory over Vaishali take the sole lead. But of course, there are three people within snapping distance. Kanti, it's been an absolute pleasure to be commentating all the action alongside for you for three days. I've absolutely loved every second of it. And as you might well know, this is our last day together on the women's coverage. But there are a lot of familiar faces that will be covering all the action from the women's candidates. They include Ben Feinkold, Daniel Naradisky, Judith Polga, Robert Hess, David Howell, and Jennifer Shahade. That is an awesome crew, awesome lineup for you in store. That's it from us. Thank you everyone for watching and well, enjoy tomorrow.